Hey everyone, welcome back to the Keep Watching Podcast, where we decide what to watch so you don't have to. I'm Sarah. And I'm James. And today we're going to be talking about Heart Signal 4, Episode 7. Uh, this is a spicy episode, James. A little spicy. Yeah. How, are you, how are you after <laughs> this spicy episode? I watched this once without taking notes. I was watching with mm-hmm. my wife. And I was just like so confused about like what the timing of everything was. <laughs> okay. I think I think I get it now that I've watched it again and taken notes, but I'm gonna need some help. Okay. I'm here for you. I mean I may just make up what the timeline is, but you know, it's fine. I'll speak with confidence and we'll just believe me. You could just take it at face value and be like, okay, yeah, it's like the next day, so it's like Wednesday or whatever on the show. And then just go mm-hmm. from there. But it, it's like the way everything is kind of like put together, it feels like, you know, this could be just a bunch of different stuff that happened on different days. Like, I have no idea, really. Yeah, yeah, it really could. But yeah, I'm ready. So this is a little bit of a origin story of uh-huh. us even talking about the shows. But my friend Kevin mm-hmm. commented for the first time. He's the person that recommended Heart Signal and Transit Love to me originally. Right. But apparently Kevin has some, like, inside knowledge. I have no way of confirming this. <laughs> so <laughs> We also didn't try to confirm it. We probably could have Googled it. I briefly but tried, and I was like, I don't even know where to start. So <laughs> Kevin has some inside knowledge about some of the contestants' exes somehow on this show. Mm. So this is what it is. Okay. Decide to believe it or not believe it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, so apparently GN's ex is a doctor. So she okay. could be feeling a certain way about Jiwon because of that. Not just his age, also just like mm, not into doctors. Okay. Yeah, that could have been the reason she said like, "Wow, why are you on the show if you're a doctor? Like you're, <laughs> you have to be busy." I I I have experience with this. <laughs> and then apparently Mingyu's ex is a flight attendant, which Ooh. could make him feel a certain way about Ji Young, even true. though she's not a flight attendant anymore. <laughs> And he refuses to speak about his past. So. Yeah, Mingyu, Mingyu seems to have like some dark history that he doesn't want to talk about. <laughs> it's probably really boring and he just doesn't feel comfortable talking on TV about it. But yeah, maybe. <laughs> it's fun to pretend he's got deep, dark secrets. But yeah, any comment you wanted to mention? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, things got a little... Uh, we got some activity on Twitter this week. Interregnum came over to Twitter and uh, followed my prompt for telling us about their Tuesday. And they did it in a fun roundabout way that made me giggle where they didn't actually answer any questions, you know, just like Mingyu. Just who knows? Uh, okay. Who knows that's what they're what doing was. on Tuesday? That's what that was. Okay. <laughs> but uh, they also brought up an interesting point where uh, they just released like the new, I guess, final poster for the show that has everybody in it because now we've seen all the people who are going to be in the house. And it is funny. Like all the girls are on one side of this couch situation with Mingyu and then like all the guys are on the other side and it is very I feel representative of how things are in the house in our current episode. Yeah. Which it, is it's interesting really like, silly. It's interesting like when they would have taken that photo. Like would they have taken it once everybody first got to in the house or is it like an end of season photo? Well it couldn't be when they first got in the house because the two people who came in later are in it. I mean like when like... the when the later people first got in the house. Oh that's true. You know I, mean? I guess. Sure. Because when the later people first get in the house, like, that's the state of the show. It's like <laughs> four girls yeah. and Mingyu. <laughs> <basically>. <laughs> Pretty much. So maybe that's why they took the picture like that at that time. Or this is going to continue. I don't know. I don't know what the strategy is when you take these pictures. So it definitely seems like there had to be some purposeful layout to it because it's so random. That it would be laid out like that, right? Yeah, or, yeah, it, yeah. or it doesn't seem random. That it would be well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it seems yeah. like significant that people are placed where they are. Yeah, yeah. But it could just be like they knew when it was going to drop and wanted to reflect that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it doesn't necessarily have to mean anything. But it is fun to speculate about. Oh, uh, we did also have some folks who, because the uh, the tweet. Is we do the preview every week, and this week it's uh when we were arguing, and I was saying that you know, I mean, you should just say some words. We got some folks who called me out on on uh that being a very western attitude, <laughs> you know, not necessarily what it's like in the house, and I acknowledge that, but I feel like some amount of words is still warranted, but still, yeah, I get it, yeah, different life experiences, yeah, I really want you to go watch. <laughs> 
<laughs> heart signal two now and tell me what <laughs> tell me what you think about one of the participants on that season. <laughs> Never says any words. I mean, frustrating. He does, but I mean, yeah, you you got frustrated by this. <laughs> <laughs> that man's uh maybe a walking ball of non responsiveness. Well, here's the question though: <laughs> Does it make anybody sad? I think so. I I, I okay. don't remember the specifics of. There's this like moment that is like was like frustrating based on the storyline that was being told at the time, where like they both think they're talking about like somebody else, but they we're supposed to think that they're talking about each other, and then they just like kind of like sit awkwardly and don't really talk to uh. them about it. It's, I don't know. I'm I'm trying to remember, but overall. <laughs> I think you'd be very frustrated with the participant in season yeah. two of the show if you're upset with Minky. I just, I'm episode. surprised it doesn't annoy you more considering the thing you hate about romantic comedies is that, it, or not romantic comedies, but like drama, unnecessary drama in shows, like yeah. scripted stuff, is that people just won't fucking communicate. <laughs> yeah, but this is real life. Okay. <laughs> I mean, if it's, if it's real, it's happening, you know, that's interesting. All right, all right, fair. When it's on a scripted show, it's like, okay, this is just like, like, the conflict is just a choice by the writer to like, <laughs> yeah, have these two characters be illogical. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but it, it bothers me more when it's scripted. But when it's unscripted, it's like, oh, okay, this is a real thing. It's happening. <laughs> Fair enough. And I'll say one more comment. We got a comment from Jacob on YouTube who mm -hmm. pointed out that the argument about Ji Young being passive in episode six didn't age well at, at all after just one episode. <laughs> Which I yeah. read I read this comment before watching the episode and I got excited about watching episode seven. <laughs> I was like, Gion's not gonna be passive. Let's go. <laughs> I was so excited. Yeah. So yeah. This episode definitely delivered. Let's get let's into it. Let's get into it. So the very beginning of our spicy episode is Lucian is watching well, his snail in <laughs> the on. sink. <laughs> where, where did we leave off at episode six, Sarah? Um I don't remember. I was yelling a lot, I think. Yeah, I wanted to ask you, like <laughs> Mingyu really struck a nerve with you. Is this like, uh, did. is this like Mingyu not wanting to talk about his his past? Like, was I mean, honestly, I had to, to think about it. I I had to think about it, and there is somebody in my past who was definitely just like, yeah, I'm just not going to tell you about things, and it turned out bad. So that might have been part of it. Oh, okay. Did you ask them what they were doing on Tuesday, and then it didn't work out for you? Was it that specific? Uh, I don't think it was specifically Tuesday, but there are definitely some weekends where I'm like, what you doing? Oh, well, shit. Okay, okay. I understand now. Okay. I, <laughs> I understand. Some people be shady. You that know? makes a lot it's more just, sense, though. I don't know. I didn't realize it at the time, but I did some thinking about it. I'm like, yep, that's, that's probably where that response came from. <laughs> yeah. People remember what happened in episode six. <laughs> <laughs> The main thing is dates that looked like they were end game dates, or just one date that looked like Mingyu and Jimin were going to be together forever. And then she texted Hushin anyway. So who knows what the fuck? It was the <laughs> final text. We have to remember that. It was the final yeah. text uh, mm -hmm. where you actually get a text. Yeah, they're still going to pick people, but like nobody's going to know anything anymore going yeah. forward. I have some feelings weird. about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I will say this time, I did officially skip. <laughs> the guessing segment of the show okay <laughs> for the first time i just straight didn't watch it <laughs> i mean but you like saw the who picked who right you just skipped yeah who i, I got to who. that yeah and then okay. let's i i mean i don't even, to me it's not even a spoiler because i didn't really watch it but i did i catch the drift that they actually got three wrong and that made me very happy. oh yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it, i enjoyed that segment of the show so much more without watching it <laughs> I, I watched through it and it was fun because I could tell um, as soon as they switched, they did two of the guys picks like they revealed what they were. And then they went to the girls. I'm like, oh, you got the rest of the guys wrong. OK, that's the only reason you would skip over to the girls. Oh, right that's now. how they like, revealed it. Okay. They strategically only did the wrong ones at the end. So I guess that's happening in the moment. Like the the producers are like, oh, those are your guesses. How we'll reveal those last <laughs> to you. <laughs> yeah, OK, exactly. <laughs> All right. Let's get started. Episode seven. Yes. You actually wrote down the snail thing. <laughs> I, I I kind of love this snail. I don't know. I don't think <laughs> I would want to hold the snail, but I enjoy that the snail continues to be on the show. And I like that our very spicy episode began with Hushin washing his snail in the kitchen sink. <laughs> it was silly yeah, and cute. Okay. And we're we're just guess we're just gonna roll with this is Wednesday. You, you just want to roll with that? Yeah, sure. Okay. Wednesday. All right. 
eventually, though, I wrote down the <laughs> when something <laughs> matters. Actually... matters. <laughs> I wrote down the first thing that actually matters. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ji Young's gonna join Hushin on the couch while he's like drinking coffee in the morning, and she's like super casual, like she's still brushing mm-hmm. her teeth. Yeah, she has doesn't have any makeup on, and she's like, "I'm not gonna put any on." <laughs> I did not notice that until Hushin said anything, but her hair was mm-hmm. like a little disheveled, I guess. Yeah, I, I knew she like just woke up, but I did. I I didn't wasn't thinking about it. Hushin is nothing but jokes in this episode, Sarah. So. Oh yeah, I think he's nothing but jokes all the time, and I'm here for it. Hushin's great. He can't be not. I mean, he's definitely not nothing but jokes all the time. Like, well, not nothing he's... but. Jo- but I think like he is a consistently funny dude, and I enjoy. Yeah, it. We'll put I. It that way. I don't. I. I kind of soured it on him a little bit in this episode, just because I. I feel like he was going like a little bit too far with these jokes at times. Oh yeah, there are some tense, weird times in the back half of the episode that's fair yeah where there was a thing or two where i'm like i don't know you need to say that but yeah (laughs) but here he's funny because she's like you seem dressed already are you where are you going and then he just says these are my pajamas (laughs) (laughs) they could be pajamas they'd just be fancy pajamas (laughs) (laughs) maybe a little uncomfortable but fine then here we go here's the jiang i'm familiar with right here you tell me what's going on here Uh jiang says she really I really want to get a, some coffee, and I kind of want to go for a walk today. <laughs> yeah, she's opening it right up so he can be like, hey, shall I go for a walk with you? Is she asking who should on a date right now? No, but she's allowing him to ask her on a date. Oh, okay. She's like, just Excuse setting me. it up for him. It's an easy, an easy win. The way who should agrees to this is like almost as if like, not not 100%, but like it's, there's a possibility that he just feels like, she wants him to go with him, and he's just like, uh, I'll do it. Like, kind of like peer, oh, peer pressure. No, 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 he's totally into her. He, if anything, like, I may overstate that she's like setting it up for him to ask her out on a date. It's more like she's setting it up for him to spend some time with her because she does not seem to actually view him as a as an option lately. Like, even though they seem to be having a good time together, she's like, she's convinced he's into somebody else. So yeah. I don't know that she's taking him seriously as an option right now, but. She's at least, like, creating an opportunity that he can pick up on, you know? Yeah. I'm actually super confused where Hushin's at in the show. Um, maybe you can help me. Cause... Oh, from this this episode, what I got is that he is into Ji Young. I don't know what what's the deal with his texting game. It's been ridiculous. It doesn't match any of his actions that we see. Maybe we don't see a lot of things. So you're, you're, you're in the camp of just, just ignore what he, he's texting and go with what the vibes that that you actually see on the show yeah or or we're gonna have an episode that is just all flashbacks of him just like wooing jimin or something like the whole way through like it's either they're hiding a bunch of shit or he makes weird ass choices when he decides to text about people i don't know okay i'm actually with you on that opinion like Mm -hmm. (laughs) i'm at the point where i almost don't care who they like te- quote unquote <laughs> quote unquote text at the end of the episode like right because the the criteria especially now that the person isn't even getting a text when you mm-hmm. like you're just telling production like hey the, here's a name i don't know what right. criteria each and in, uh, each individual is using to decide this so for some people we know what it is like g one's always gonna pick g young for the rest of the show unless maybe he has like mm-hmm. a really good date with somebody else and feels like switching for one day right so for like some people we kind of know what it means other people like maybe we get why they switch but we don't really know why they switched to the person they did and like stuff like stuff like that i don't know i i'm more of just like i'm i'm more invested in just reading what i see in the tv show and not worrying about (laughs) these texts at the end of the show i feel like they they're more confusing than helpful yeah i'm not sure (laughs) if like the prompt is worded in a way that is not been made clear to us or something like maybe it's just who made you feel away today or something or and not necessarily exactly. like who are you trying to be with long term or is it like who made your heart flutter the most since the last time you texted or is it hey if the show ended right now who would you pick yeah and i don't feel like it should be oh if the show ended right now who would you pick because i feel like that's too spoilery but they're not telling us what the mm. actual prompt is so and I don't regardless know what of what the actual prompt is, everyone could interpret it a little bit differently. Even. Exactly, yeah. And it's it's really impossible to tell. Yeah, not putting much stock in the text. I'm glad we're on the same page on that one. <laughs> I mean, I'm still going to like be annoyed 
but yeah i don't know that it means that much who shouldn't it's like i'll go with you and then they go out on a nice walk to go get coffee so this is the first time though out of two times that he's gonna point out that she's not wearing makeup right i don't think he points it out here i think she's just like no he does does he i thought she goes yeah i'm not gonna put any makeup on before we go like Um, i thought she brought it up this time and later he brings it up uh i'd have to check i think she says like i'm gonna go out like this and then he's like his sentiment is like aren't you worried gal ray might see you without makeup on oh yeah yeah that's right and she's just like he already has on go fuck (laughs) yeah she doesn't (laughs) see i can respect (laughs) but also it's funny because does who shouldn't think ji young's into gal ray that's like the person she's talking about i guess that must be what who shouldn't thinks yeah okay yeah i guess that's like the most recent person she or they well when they had the one-on-ones it was with him um they have gone on a couple unofficial dates like grocery shopping and that one cafe where yeah Hushin wasn't he wasn't around but he may have heard about it yeah and maybe he's just getting the vibe from from gallery i don't know i know he doesn't he says he doesn't want to talk to the other boys about who they're into so yeah till later (laughs) till later when they're like (laughs) we must discuss (laughs) all right all right all right they leave for for, uh go on their walk Hushin says uh let me know if you're cold, but I won't give you my jacket. Just yeah, then I just, I'll just know. I just, I just want to know if you're cold or not. This and she is like kind of laughs funny. big time. Like at all of his jokes, she she is into this sense of humor. Like she responds well. Yeah, maybe I guess it's it's so different than the normal people we see on the, in the shows that it, that's why it's like kind of funny. I think this one's fine. We haven't gotten to one that I'll I have to point anything out yet. About, okay. But. okay. She brings up that she wants to see his paintings again. And um, he's like, I think he's starting to get a little anxious about it because he's like, I was going to show you my iPad drawings, but I don't want to ruin your like fantasy about it. So I'm not going to show you. And then, uh, Sarah, let me tell you why you <laughs> like, <laughs> like K-pop. Do you want me to tell you why you like K-pop? Go, go ahead. Tell me why I like K-pop. Well, you see, you see, stress keeps building Uh within you yeah 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 and when you're listening to k-pop you're like release releasing that stress as you you listen okay thank you for mansplaining my feelings and you you become happier (laughs) when you relieve your stress yeah 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 so therefore (laughs) you end up liking the k-pop Right, right. Of course, it's not you, that I like it. Do you get it? it. Do you get it now? The, oh, do you understand? Oh yeah, yeah. I totally thank you <laughs> for explaining my feelings to me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that. This was obviously this was this was him explaining why she likes drawing. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know the tone that I just read that as. I don't know if it actually comes across that way in Korean, but that's. When, it, when the text is just on my screen, that is exactly yeah, how I, yeah. it is going to be read by me. I mean, at least it is an area that is his expertise rather than hers, you know? Like, he's not like, let me tell you why you liked being a flight attendant, you know? Yeah. He's going, let me tell you why you like to do the thing that is my job. I guess. Which is not the best, but it is better. When he was like, oh, let me tell you I like, like drawing. I was like, oh, this will be interesting. But then he just like said some stuff that you could literally apply to anything. So yeah, then I yeah, was like, much. Also, yeah. hmm, okay. I thought he was going to be funny and say a funny thing. And then he really was. Well, I thought he had some so. inside knowledge on drawing. Like <laughs> like if yeah. he was going to get into like something about the brain. It triggers something <laughs> yeah. in the brain. That, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it also, I also felt like this like kind of like played into his like it seems like he has this like worldview that like everybody has like the same oh experiences with everything Uh it's like everybody falls in love at first sight (laughs) this is why everybody likes to draw Mm -hmm. yeah and then like what What what's the other one i think it was just this draw like before it was also like she told him she liked to draw before. Oh, yeah, she's yeah. like, yeah, everybody likes that, of course. If I feel this way about something, everybody feels that way. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> but despite that, it looks like they're having a cute fun time. And then Ji Young saves Hushin from being hit by a car. <laughs> 
Uh, sure, okay. She gently directs him away from the car, but the point is she grabs his arm at, like, the elbow. Yeah, but only because there was a car coming. Yeah, I mean, she didn't need to, though. It was not a high-speed event. She could have just, like, walked further in one direction and he would have just followed her. Okay. And she, there was a little physical contact. That's what we're looking for on these shows. Yeah, I didn't I didn't read too much into this one, but yeah, the host popped off. <laughs> <laughs> Then the next thing I have is Gian says, I could take you somewhere incredible if I get the chance, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> well, this was when they went to the mall or where, wherever they were eating that one time. She was saying she had an idea for a date, right? Is 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 this her incredible date is, is what she's referencing? I thought G-Men was the one that was talking about that. Well, first it was ji Young was like, I have somewhere in mind that's going to be so good. Oh, And then okay. G-Men followed up on that where she specifically wanted to take Oh, I have no Island. idea. She doesn't say what it is, so. Yeah, she doesn't say what it is. She didn't say what it was at the mall. So, but does this mean she wants to use her incredible date on Hushin? Like, this feels like maybe she is viewing him in a dateable sense. Yeah. But again, the timing of this is, like, she hasn't talked to Mingyu yet. So she's in that, like, gray area right now. That's true. So, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Are, is, are these incredible dates that the girls have been thinking of? Is this what's going to happen next episode? Or is that like end of I, season? I hope so. I mean, Jeju Island is definitely not happening next <laughs> week. But maybe this incredible date will. Okay. All right. But then Hushin says, I will go with you depending on how you do. I didn't say I would go yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, is this a joke though? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's anymore. definitely He's definitely joking. And then, um, like, she says, you know, if I get a chance to take you, I will. And he either mishears her uh, as you have to be cute in order for me to take you, or he just, like, does some wordplay to joke about it. And he's just like, oh, I almost acted cute, so you take me with you. <laughs> like, he is kind of showing that he wants to go. I don't know, though. Like, I, it, unless he just thinks it's so obvious that, like, he wants her to pick him. I don't know if I'd be, like, messing around with joking about being, like, <laughs> I'll go with you depending on how you do, but <laughs> I don't know. But I think the, the the joke part, like, that I'll go with you depending on how you do came after this joke part. So I feel like he was recovering from mishearing her and trying to be cool instead of being, like, oh, no, I almost did some cute shit just to make you take me, you know, like. Mm, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think Hushin is into Ji Young. Like, I'm ignoring yeah, the G-Men, whatever's going on with the G-Men text. Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah. Plus, the guys specifically, we're going to find out, have some weird shit going on. Where I don't know if that would affect the text more or the in-person stuff more, but... Yeah. 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 I, I think Hushin's into ji I do not think ji is into Hushin, though. <laughs> or she's at least, no. like, not even giving him a chance right now. Because they're going to talk more. Oh, yeah, there's a lot to this date. He starts talking about how he's, like been kind of put off because everybody's super focused on one person and he wants people to keep their minds open to everyone you know he's definitely definitely not specifically talking about ji young here right now yes this is literally something you only say when like the person you want to be focused on you isn't (laughs) isn't focused on you right that's it right okay exactly but then she says that he's the worst one. Like, I don't know what we're not seeing, but she thinks he is hyper-focused on somebody else, which I assume is Jimin. And we just don't see any of that. I feel like he's openly talked about, like, what happened on his date with Jimin. And, like, I don't know, we just got that one scene where he openly said, like, oh, yeah, I told Jimin she's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. And, like That's all, that's all we've seen. That's like, all we've seen, yeah. So... Maybe that really stuck with her. I don't know. But then there was like at the women's summit, like Jimin was like, oh, yeah, Hushin's been super aggressive about um, saying nice things to me or whatever. I don't even know what he's doing because we didn't get to see it. But yeah, I I think it's partially that where like the women are seeing something that Hushin is doing with respect to Jimin and like all the women are on the same page about it. But I don't even know if Hushin realizes that it's happening. Which is funny. Well, except now, Ji Young has told him about it twice, basically. Just like, you're hyper-focused on somebody else. But she never names a name, does she? That's that's true. She never names a so, name. So, if you're Hushin, like, if you're being optimistic, you might be thinking, like, oh, she's playing around because she knows I'm talking about her, right? Yeah. I, I think that he doesn't think she's talking about her, though. Or, 
yeah she, I, I don't think she, he thinks she knows the right person that he's into yeah i don't know it's it's weird i <laughs> that that would make sense why maybe like he's picking up that she's not feeling anything so he's not texting her uh, that could, mm, that could be yeah. a thing but yeah he like they're having this conversation and she like agrees that everybody should keep an open mind and this man literally says yes give me a chance ji young and she has no reaction to it and i don't understand it i think it i think it's because he jokes too much but he said it so sincerely i know i would have but... swooned in the street over this man at this moment oh really <laughs> yes i feel like he's like it's like it's like he's messed up the meta where like he's he's joking too much and then now Gian just thinks everything he says is funny and can't tell when he's being serious <laughs> maybe <laughs> but she didn't laugh about it yeah she did have a reaction and my my take on her facial expression was like i heard what you just said and i am not feeling the same way <laughs> like that's <laughs> that's kind of how i took it yeah and then she starts talking about Gian, and i'm like okay i guess you're really not into this guy you know Wait, who started talking about G1? G Young starts talking about G1 because she's like, she thought that G1 had closed himself off to only one option, but then it turns out that wasn't the case because they went on a date and he was really going after her. I guess she thought that G1 was into Jumi. Confused by that comment, actually. I was yeah. like, either G1 said something in that date that made her think differently, but it, we know that G1 has just been going for G Young the whole time, basically. Well, he did. Well, after Jumi. First, he, yeah. He, after Jumi shut him down, he's like, okay, redirect to the only other Nuna. And now he's really focused in. So I, I don't, yeah, I don't think Jiyoung was swayed by this date. No, it's a bummer because I like them together. I think they have a good time and they have stuff in common. And they they talked a bit about like actual emotional shit, you know? Yeah. I liked, I liked this cute little date. I could see, I, after this episode especially though, like I could see maybe not being into Hushin's uh jokiness like like okay he's a fun person but like maybe mm -hmm. it's not maybe it's not a uh not always attractive appropriate. romantic vibe that yeah. you're looking for for certain people okay but yeah overall hushin makes jiang laugh a lot they have good conversations mm -hmm. but for whatever reason i don't think jiang's feeling it so nope it's a bummer oh and i wrote down she, she's really pushing this like hey you don't like me you like someone else narrative which is like yeah. the big tell i think that she's not into this yeah as absolutely. romantically like she's mm -hmm. like oh you don't be silly even like maybe she's not even that confident that she that he really likes someone else but she's just like yeah i'm sure you like someone else more than me <laughs> like yeah yeah let me tell you how you feel about something yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay we never talk about host segments on the show but this show is so funny yeah i didn't write it down you didn't i don't write it remember down. Oh. nope there i don't know exactly how what led into this but their segment is was trying to talk about how like oh like if a girl doesn't notice you and then like you try to change yourself to make them notice you oh then yeah. it doesn't actually work so he they're not paying attention to you yeah. yes <laughs> So Segment gave this example where apparently for the last like four weeks, four plus weeks, <laughs> after uh Aina, what the the older woman host, said she mm -hmm. doesn't like when people <laughs> she doesn't like when people wear glasses with no lenses. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. And he I guess on that day he was wearing glasses with no lenses. <laughs> no lenses. <laughs> so he switched for like four weeks or something to wearing glasses with lenses. <laughs> And then I think he switched to not even wearing glasses, and she never said anything about any of it. <laughs> yeah. So he's like, fuck it, I'm wearing them without lenses today. <laughs> but I feel like he said it in a way where, like, he genuinely, like, kind of wanted her to notice. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> so we got a little uh, <laughs> heart signal action from the host here. <laughs> From the hosts. <laughs> and she was, like, super embarrassed when he started talking about this. <laughs> Yeah. Yep, yep. No, these hosts are on fire. I I I, <laughs> I have to say again, I love the host. I hate the end of the show segment. I just can't watch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. It's not the host's <laughs> fault. <laughs> Here we go. Flashback. Two days ago, Yisu asked Mingyu on a date. No, no. She asked if he was free on Thursday, and he just said, "Yep." He just said, "Yep." It's he said a word. It was so fucking easy. Yeah. Well, <laughs> this then this means something, right? So. Okay, let's say let's say the show is, is it's Wednesday. Two days ago okay. is Monday, which is okay. before Tuesday. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. 
So how do we feel about what Min Yu is thinking about Ji Young? Wait. So Ji like, Young on Monday? So like on Monday, he's only thinking about Ji Min. Yeah, but Yi this is this flashback is from two days ago and today is oh, Wednesday. Oh, Su is asking Yisu him out. asking him oh, out on Monday and he hasn't gone on a date with Ji Min yet. She says, Are you free on Thursday? And he says, I'm free. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, yeah. That uh, I I have no excuses for this man. Sometimes he knows how to talk, sometimes he doesn't. I'm trying to get at okay, what is he feeling about Ji Young if he's not Yeah, it should mean that he's not into her. Key differences are this Yisu and Min Yu conversation is a one on one conversation. Yes. Another key difference is he wasn't free on Tuesday. <laughs> Yeah, so maybe that was what hung him up. What I, I this I, this kind of made me feel more confident that he was just like didn't know how to deal with the like what to say when he wasn't mm-hmm. sure if he actually had plans or not, basically, and he fumbled that. Uh, yeah, for sure. But it does mean he could have easily said, "How about Thursday?" <laughs> I understand you're triggered by it, sir. I'm not <laughs> just Thursday was not, free. Is all I'm saying. I'm he not, could have said, "I'm not debating that." He could have said, "How about Thursday?" To, I'm trying to understand <laughs> Mingyu's mind right now. Yeah, all of these things put together makes it seem like he is not into Ji Young, and that maybe he is potentially into Jisu. 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 Um. Yeah, that was my instinct. Was to be like, mm, maybe he actually just isn't that into Ji Young, but. Because he did have plans that day. I don't know. If Jian had said, well, sh- I mean, <laughs> she couldn't ask him about Thursday. He had plans. Well, I don't, I don't know when Jian asked him first. So this is yeah, kind of weird. All the time. I mean, this is wonky. Like, Ji Young's going to go on a date on this episode. So, like, is that he's she's going on a date with Gyal Rae on Wednesday. So, like, she was busy on Wednesday. Mm. I don't know. It sounds like there was potential where, like, Tuesday was the only day that was going to work for those two. I don't know. It's either, it's either he's not that into Ji Young or he just couldn't deal with the situation in that moment and he just like fumbled it. Yeah. So I, I don't know how to read it. If I don't know if this really means anything or, or I'm reading too much into it, but instantly made me think was, wow, that was not hard for him. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I think I think you're right. The context of it just being a one on one situation and he doesn't already have a plan with the woman he's obsessed with makes it a lot easier for him here. Also, I want to ask you, Sarah, is this an official date? I mean... Because there's a lot of talk in this episode about people having gone on dates, but they're not official ones, so they don't know if they really mean anything. It blah, 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 is blah, blah, utter blah, blah. date chaos out here. I don't know. I don't know anymore. I'm. If it wasn't for the preview for the next episode at the end of this episode, I would just assume that production wasn't even setting up dates anymore. And they're just like, live your lives. Ask out whoever you want. Do what you want. I don't think they are. There's a potential that this Yisu thing was like oh she got to pick a guy for a date because she just got in the house and then they just like except that we also it. get a ji young gallery date situation too right well, like, they showed us when that one was planned like it was like that was i think it's they they talked about that on their one-on-one yeah yeah but this one is like just yisu basically asking him out right yeah, I mean, maybe production went, go ask some book, somebody out, go do it. Or, do it could it. also be that, like, Mingyu was just obligated to say yes to this. <laughs> and, like, also, the, yeah. Poss- that, that, that possibility as well. That's possibly true, yeah. Because e- even in this episode, Mingyu and Jimin say they haven't gone on an official date. What? <laughs> what? What yeah, are we that, talking uh, about, Sarah? <laughs> yeah, that... All right. They've gone on... They, they, they don't... Not even, like, an official date, just, like, even a date, like... They like, like call they them even... dates, at least in the translation, they... but like they're not in the past, yeah. But like in the conversation they have in this episode, they're like, Yeah, we just we just hang out. We haven't gone on a date at all yet. And it's weird because they've definitely gone on dates. If you make plans to hang out with somebody and then you're both worried that the other person forgot about it. <laughs> it's probably a date. It's probably a date. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like they're not the only ones that are gonna talk about this. Like I feel like that's some sort of like optimistic thinking where like you're like like uh we went on a date and maybe it wasn't it didn't turn out as well as it was so maybe like when it's an official date by the show like things will be different kind of oh it's you got to get to three locations right that's what the official dates were <laughs> oh, is that what it is? It, it's the number of locations once you hit three then you know it's a real date that can't mm. be true it's it's i don't 
I think being on the show has like messed with people's heads and they're just like, don't know what to think about anything. If anymore. that's the case, then the Yisu Mingyu date that we're about to have is an official date. It's definitely structured more like a show official date, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They have like lunch and then they go to an activity place and then they go to drink. Yeah. Maybe Mingyu was operated to say yes. I don't know. Maybe. But then he's going to text her at the end, which I can't tell if it's an obligation date text or not because it shouldn't be because she's not actually getting exactly it because yeah, i don't know the rules are different now i don't understand uh, what anyone on this show is thinking honestly i don't i don't know anymore i have bold predictions okay maybe maybe they're not All so right. bold <laughs> <laughs> they're okay. not what my wife thinks is gonna happen so that's why i think they're bold. All right okay, it's date okay. time it's date time yes they go to a korean restaurant she thinks he looks like a vampire, and that's basically why she <laughs> to date him. And... This restaurant was so cool, though. It had like water features and plants. And oh yeah, were, yeah. Like, sitting on the floor, it was nice. I I thought this place was actually pretty cool. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Okay, here's a moment though. They mentioned they start talking about spicy food, and mm -hmm. then the show just flashbacks <laughs> to him eating spicy food with Jimin on their date. <laughs> like he can't help but think about her. What at every little detail or something is what the show is trying to tell us this seems so unnecessary for the show it, to, to show this flashback yes especially because this is in fact after tuesday when yeah. in theory <laughs> his mind is changed because she still didn't text him probably after tuesday but yeah. well i mean we should know this is thursday right like oh yeah okay this is thursday now. Yeah. yeah you're right this is thursday okay yeah you seem like a vampire you're you're really pale it's a compliment <laughs> the compliment. Didn't we talk about him being a vampire in the first episode of this i feel like i think we did but what was the context uh oh i think it was jumi was showing her carotid arm uh, artery or something oh yeah right? yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah 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 oh i haven't been looking out for the carotid artery <laughs> love <sake. laughs> would you take this as a compliment though um somebody said you look like a vampire <laughs> you're very pale i mean i, I like pale skin but I don't know if I'd want to be a vampire. A lot of people do. I think th that seems to be a popular vibe. People like pale people for whatever reason. But I think like specifically being called a vampire would make me feel bad. Be like, oh, make you, feel bad. you look like a <laughs> like you look like a dead person. It's kind of what you're, like you're, <laughs> you're so pale. You're the undead. Uh, it feels a little too far for me. Hmm, okay. I don't know. Unless they like specifically because she follows it up with pale. If she was like, you look like a vampire because of your sweet style or whatever, that's a different kind of compliment, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I don't think I would feel any way about this. I would just think it was a weird comment. <laughs> Definitely kind of weird. I don't think yeah. I'd be offended or flattered by this. <laughs> yeah. Like you said, uh, Isu asked Mingyu on a date first because uh, she's most attracted to his looks. Yeah. She's like, I'm going to be honest with you. You're the hot one. So that's why we're here. <laughs> There's a vibe I like. You're very close to that vibe. <laughs> Not exactly the vibe that she likes. Just, just close. Just close. The closest as anybody close. else, maybe. Also, there's a question I want to ask you, but I'll refrain. <laughs> and then this guy just says, okay. <laughs> but he says, okay. Like, how do you not go, just fucking ask, what, what, what is this question? Like, it would bother me. I'd want to know what it is. This man was recently asked a bunch of questions he didn't want to answer. He gets it. <laughs> <laughs> there and you gotta assume it's probably like so who do you like in the house or is there somebody that you're into in the house like it's it's probably that question she's just right? gonna ask him later right yeah, like, yeah. okay <laughs> hmm. so she decides to then go with do you like tall women and i wrote down how tall is she i want to know how tall she is. <laughs> we don't find out i'm sorry ah, i want to know but how tall she... everybody is <laughs> That's it. It's a requirement for all dating shows going yeah, forward. Like a... When we first meet a person, we need their exact height next to their name. Yeah. That's what. Easily. That would definitely enhance the show. <laughs> <laughs> but she also asked him to list everything that is his ideal type. Yeah. And he's just like, tall women? I would not do good with this question. <laughs> like, uh, I would be like, you... it, it's especially awkward because she like just asked him specifically something that could be his yeah. ideal type also i just like don't have an answer to this question i 
Yeah, it comes up I'm all like, the time, but I'm just like somebody who doesn't suck. I don't know. Like, <laughs> what do you want from me? <laughs> you should have just been like, you know, G-Man, right? <laughs> have you met G-Min? <laughs> but imagine like G-Min and she liked me back. That's my ideal. Type. Ooh, yep, hundred yep. percent accurate. <laughs> but instead, he says he also likes bright women, which I think is more bubbly instead of like marked. Is how I would think of. Bright. Oh yeah, I, I, and then I wrote down: Is any of the girls on this season not bright? Um, in the bubbly sense. I don't know that we know that Yisu is bubbly. He might be cool. Well, she then asks him, "Do you think I'm bright?" And he says, "Yes." Like, well, yeah. He, what else he are you thinks she's say? bubbly. But yeah, I, I guess you're right. Like, we don't know that. I, yeah, so far, I don't think I've seen her feel comfortable enough to be bubbly. You know, like yeah. she feels like she's still just adjusting. But also, like ninety percent of the girls they cast on these shows, like at some point in the oh, season, yeah. somebody calls them bubbly. <laughs> Or bright exactly. or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not super helpful to y- <laughs> to Yisu <laughs> to hear this. Is G Min tall? I don't know. Nobody's ever said what height her her height is, so Okay. And and what who knows what he considers tall. You know? That's true too. That could be a whole different range. Yeah. Jian looked pretty small next to Hushin on that when they were walking that one time. But Well that's because he is very but it's tall. Hushin, so yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I want to say Jimin's the tallest out of the three in my head, but is she? I'm I think not I feel sure. like Jumi's the tallest, but really? it might just be because she's the oldest and co- is more. In my mind, Jumi might be the, <laughs> the shortest, but oh, I don't know. If only the show could help Gia us out with this. Was the shortest. <laughs> this is our podcast now, speculating on heights about people with no real. Facts. <laughs> I could talk I about this it. all day. <laughs> <laughs> we could do a frame by frame breakdown and scaling them based on listeners of the show. who do you think is the tallest power rank all these I'm people sure by height for us please i'm sure somebody knows the answer to this well then tell us the answers to <laughs> this james answer, is super yeah. interested in the heights of everyone <laughs> it's super well, it's super relevant it and important now that mingyu has said he likes tall women that's true but he also may have just said it because she specifically asked him if he likes tall women that's true too. who knows what this man yeah, exactly <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, as you said before, his ideal type is just a G-man who likes him. That's it. (laughs) But she might be tall, so he's not lying. He's not lying. And she's definitely bright and bubbly, right? That's true. He has not told a lie. All right, they leave. Mm -hmm. And then tell me how Mingyu feels about Yisu's driving, because I... I know what the show. I know what the show wants me to think, but I don't know for sure what. what... Well, he definitely like grabs the like top handhold in the car a couple times like you would do when you're like why are you going so fast i am nervous okay yeah that's what i kind of thought okay (laughs) and then there's a part where she has to back up an entire street or something (laughs) yeah and the host seemed to think that he's super impressed with this and everyone is very impressed with this and i'm like yeah you just shouldn't be in this situation where you have to back up an entire street but sure um and i don't know that he was super impressed by it it was more like she was closer to him so he was sneaking a peek occasionally like i think that's it (laughs) she didn't have a uh i guess her car didn't have a like a backup camera or she doesn't use the backup camera so she was doing or you know she had to back up so far that she fully committed to basically turning around in her seat yeah i guess but she did like the you know you have to put your shoulder over the seat and then now she so basically she's like you know turning her front area as close to thank you as possible yes, basically yeah so he had a moment of just like maybe i should back up <laughs> yeah i feel <laughs> like his reaction was entirely about the proximity <laughs> and not about the driving and her being yeah. so cool and then she says herself hmm, that was dangerous at the end of <laughs> after well, she, like, i thought she meant car. because because she backed up a whole fucking street like really oh yeah yeah that is what dangerous. she was saying yeah that's yeah. but that yeah that's that to me that was like an indication of like no, I mean, she seemed to back up the car pretty well. Like, some yeah. people can't do that. But overall, it seemed like maybe Yusu isn't the person you want to be driving the car all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of the vibe I got. More, than, yeah, more yeah. than being impressed. Okay. Yeah. But the hosts seemed to think that the backing up very far was impressive. Yeah. They always like to talk about, like, whoever's driving seems impressive. <laughs> yeah. Basically. I guess. It's weird. Yeah. So they go to this cool, like, interactive art exhibit where like you are the art this is actually pretty cool yeah like everything responds to how you move through the space yeah yeah 
it was pretty cool, but I don't think anything special happened. Yeah, nothing happened, them. but I would have just like, if somebody told me like, hey, we're going to go with an art thing, I'd be like, uh, I'm not that excited. But then I'd be like, oh, this was actually nice, you know, mm-hmm. fun to play around with. Yeah, so that was cool. And then they go drinking, which happens later, but I prefer to talk about it now. <laughs> Okay. Is okay. that okay with you? Okay. I just got a, I got scroll ahead in my notes. It's, okay, we're It's here. not even, but I don't know why yeah. they didn't show this in order, but they're going to go drinking. Mm-hmm. And then Yusu's going to say, I don't know if I can ask you this. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. But I'm going to anyway. Even Mingyu, is, after, after she asks, is going to be like, are you, am I allowed to answer this? <laughs> and I don't know if this is a... Production level, or a, are you prepared to hear yeah, the like, answer? Are to you this? actually prepared to hear my answer to this question, or did you check with production before I answer this <laughs> question? She says, Whom are you attracted to the most so far? And then it seemed like there was only a short pause. Not his signature long pause. Yeah, not yeah, yeah not his signature long pause. And he says, G Min. Yep. All right. No explanation, no extra, just G Min. And then they drink. And this is Thursday. After he's been disappointed, theoretically, right? After Tuesday, yeah. Yeah, this is definitely later than that, than Tuesday, yeah. So, that, explain to me how <laughs> Mingyu ends how... up texting <laughs> Yisu at the end of this episode. Not just that. Explain to me the scene we get with him and her in a car, or him and, and uh, Jimin in a car, and how he seems to be like, enough of this. And yeah, just the everything. How he seems to like completely shift over to Ji Young during the the night of drinking or telling the truth, and just I there's no consistency with him in this episode. I don't understand any of it. That's what my wife thinks too. My wife thinks he's basically like has fully switched over to Ji Young by the end of this episode. That's what I feel like the episode is trying to tell me. And then my my best guess is that. He gets so scared and intimidated by literally everybody else going, I want Ji Young, that he go he switches real fast. Hmm. I I still think he's on G Min. Okay. Just because I feel like until G Min is like for sure this isn't gonna work, which she definitely is not. She's definitely leaving the door open. Yeah. I just don't think it just, with the way that these shows go and even how like my own brain might work if I was on the show, if Mingyu is like my doppelganger or whatever he is on the show. Mm-hmm. I just think he's going to he's gonna stick with her all the way to the end unless there's a moment where she's like, for sure, this isn't working. Now, I don't know why he doesn't text her. I don't know what the prompt was for why he ended up picking Yisu on this. Mm-hmm. But we, we, can, we kind of can get why he doesn't message Jimin again, maybe because, you know, he's not succeeding or whatever. So... I don't know how he's feeling in this moment that he had to text, but it is, it feels like it means something to me that he's not messaging Ji Young, but it could be, I guess it could be what you said where it's like, oh, all the guys said Ji Young in some capacity by the mm-hmm. end of the show. So maybe he's doing the little bro thing and getting out of the way. I guess. I guess. But the thing is the text, they're not even real text. So like. Exactly. I don't get I it. Don't, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it at all. all maybe right. they're all still in the same old text mindset where like, even though it's not going through the, to the person yeah they're, they're like still just in thinking case about it like it is <laughs> just in case production lets them know i can't i can't But even still <laughs> if it goes to the person you text it's not like the other guys are gonna know who you texted it's yeah don't exactly understand any of these people <laughs> yeah yeah it okay yeah like we said texts are <laughs> minimal I, I need to spend yep, less yep. time thinking about the text <laughs> all right well for right now though it's time for Jumi to talk with some yes. friends. Yes. Two of her guy friends show up. I just want to point out Jumi only talks about Gyare and Mingyu in this whole segment. Yes. A hundred percent. Okay. I think she says like she likes that Gyare respects her as a person. That's a good thing. He said stuff to her like he likes that she's diligent about her job. So she kind of feels like he gets her kind of mm-hmm. is the yeah. message that she or is how she interpreted all that. And you don't want to be with somebody who's like, why are you working all the time if you're a person who wants to dedicate most of your time to working, you know, or whatever, you know, you need to be aligned on that level. Yeah. I mean, I would think most people would just respect her job by default, but is is there an element of like future kids and being a mom or like, I don't, I don't know what's in play. Yeah. Here. There's probably that. There's also like, just like some people expect to spend a certain, like maybe more or less time together. 
when you're in a relationship, right? Like some people mm. are very independent and spend their time alone and then come together sometimes. And other people are like, oh, we're in a relationship. We are together all the time. So just lining up on that spectrum is also important. Gary's 35. I think he's past the not having a job and we spend all our time together phase of his life. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe people don't grow out of it. Who knows? Okay. I don't I don't know all the people. So, yeah. you know. All right. Then she says, I'm going on a date this weekend. What? Let's go? Yes. Okay. Is this mm-hmm. thir- is this happening on Thursday? I don't know when this is happening. <laughs> Theoretically, this is Thursday. <laughs> sure. We'll see. I need Thursday. to know what the rules of this date are. I need to know. <laughs> we don't get to find out this episode, but the whole episode, I was like, oh, what's the rules of this date? Like- I'm assuming it's. <laughs> Girl gets to pick guy and gets to decide all the date thing. I think that's what it is in heart. What it was in heart single too. Like they, they did the gifts. The guys didn't get to choose. They just got to pick gifts. And then when the girls, the girls go through the step of like, they have to ask a guy out and that's kind of, they can't really say no. Right. Like, right. It's one of those things where you're kind of obligated to say yes. Yeah, maybe that's possible. And then here we go. Here's a sentiment that a lot of people have that I don't identify with. But maybe you okay. can help me understand. She says okay. she's afraid of dating Galray again before dating Mingyu because her feelings feelings might solidify. Like this is this is like literally dating FOMO mentality, right? Like Yeah, like, yeah, I guess. She it fears is. that like even though she really likes Galray, like maybe she'll like Mingyu more and she's like gonna somehow by going on two dates with Galray, she'll then lock it miss in and out. they'll just be together forever. <laughs> she'll she'll <laughs> She'll be so overcome with feelings that she won't explore the possibility with Mingyu. Like, this is such yeah, like a weird fear to me. <laughs> very silly to me because it's like, if you think you could have the big feelings for a person, what, why why is that not what you want? I, I, I mean, I, maybe she's not looking for something serious out of this fun dating show. Hmm. But, like, in theory, the end goal of, like go dating is to like find your person or whatever right and if you think like oh i might get the big feelings for this person why would you not want to go like in that direction i don't know yeah because she's not the first person to articulate this feeling i'm trying to think yeah. did like we well we've had it we've seen it on transit love a couple times with some people who were like i don't want to go on the second date with this person until i pick you know get a chance to go out on a date with this person yeah, because then it'll like be too significant or whatever. I feel like somebody said that on this show. Like, I want to, I want to say it's Ji Young, but maybe I can't I recall. recall. I can't recall. It is a common sentiment on these kinds of shows. Because I don't really identify with this mentality. Uh-huh. This is how I think okay. is going on. I feel like she thinks she likes Mingyu more, and that's why mm-hmm. she's wants to date him. And then my thought is, would she want to date Gyal Ray? If she had already had a successful date with Mingyu. Ooh, like if it was swapped, yeah. would she be worried about solidifying the Mingyu feelings? Yeah, I don't think um, she would be. Yeah, I don't think she would be either. Because she does say in here, like, she is strongly attracted to Mingyu, even though she doesn't know anything about him at all. Yeah. So this, I think this FOMO is just, like, it's only because of, her, like, some instinctive feelings about Mingyu. It's not that, like, yeah. she, I don't think she would necessarily have this approach, no matter who the guys were. Yeah, like if, if Mingyu wasn't around and it was just like Hushin and Jiwon, she wouldn't be like, gotta go on another date with Jiwon before I lock this in with yeah. Gyalrae. <laughs> yeah, like, no, no. <laughs> Maybe Hushin. Didn't she put Hushin? I think she did put Hushin as her instinctual attraction. Yeah, but we find out later that Ji Young and Jumi talked about the number one and two, and they kind of agreed that number one wasn't important. Yeah. Or as important or whatever, so... They, right. didn't, they said they didn't put much thought into who they p- picked for number one. So maybe the Hushin thing didn't really mean anything. Yeah. And that was that text was like right after he joined the show. So it was like mm, he was okay. new and shiny. And she's at least interacted with him in the house now. And has probably got the vibe whether or not she's into him by now, you'd think. Yeah. Okay. Jimmy says she's still really attracted to Mingyu, even though she knows nothing about him. Uh, and I want to go on a date with him the most. All right. I think we see yep. where she's at here. I think she's prepared to settle for Gyal Ray, but she, <laughs> she she's still aiming for Mingyu. She wants to for try Mingyu. and give yeah, that a, the, exactly. I thought the most interesting thing she talked about is that she was talking to Mingyu and like he was telling her about how the guys are like strategically talking about dates so that way they're oh, not yeah. stepping on 
on each other's toes. Like they have a freaking alliance. Yeah. And I'm like, that's some bullshit. Just like let girls have a say on like like if if all the guys like Ji Young, Ji Young gets to make that decision. Not all the guys going, oh well, wait, let's defer to our oldest boy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I don't like I, this idea of this weird alliance. That's one way to interpret it. I I definitely think it's weird. I don't think it's as significant as like kind of like the way you're putting it. I think it's more yeah, of probably a, not. Like, I think it was more of like uh like hey let's make sure we're all getting to go on dates like equally kind mm. of thing. The weirdest part to me is like I still think it's weirder that like uh Jiwon and Mingi were talking about how like they were worried about uh Gyalray's feeling cuz he was like older than yeah. them. <laughs> it was mm-hmm. the it was yep. the idea it seemed like. But we can let's we can break down this conversation a little bit. So they flash back to it's Jumi, Mingyu, and then Jimin in the back seat. And they say this is when they were going grocery shopping, which maybe was like after they got back from going to that mall. I'd, I feel like I don't remember them going grocery shopping, but like I'm yeah, not, I'm not sure how far back this date is, but it right. seems like it should be when they went to the went mall. To that, that mall. Time. Yeah. 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 Mingyu says the guys have been talking. He says, when we need a dating partner, we date strategically and talk about it for each other's benefit. Weird. <laughs> now, I mean, this could be reasonable, like, if they're if they're just being openly honest with each other about who they want to date, and, like, maybe they're just trying to make sure, like, hey, if we like the same people, let's at least, like, go on an even amount of dates with each other. Like, like they're not trying to, like, do each other dirty, I guess, is the idea. Uh, yeah. I don't I think guess. it's, like, a... You could interpret it as like they're like calling dibs on women and then they're <laughs> they're ignoring them. Like you could you could have the thought like, oh, maybe G one's been ignoring G Min the whole season because he thinks some other guys like her or something. Mm, like yeah, you could yeah, have yeah. that thought, but I don't think that's a case because I don't think that's what's happening. Like yeah. everybody likes G Young and G one doesn't give a shit. He's been texting her the whole time. So <laughs> like Yeah. I, and there's also a like, okay, maybe these guys talked like they were gonna be in an alliance but then they're not actually sticking to the alliance either so <laughs> i don't think this is like super significant but it, it yeah, is interesting yeah. that they are doing it like because the women definitely aren't okay but it but okay so g-man's in the car here too though but mm-hmm. i think if anything like th- i feel like this could actually not being affecting like what the guys are doing on the show even though like they're talking about it it could actually be affecting the women more than the guys i think because okay. Like Jimin's in the car while while they're having this conversation, and is is it like possible that like Jimin like stuck with Jiwon for so long because she thought like oh maybe Jiwon is just being like boxed out by the other guys and then oh. eventually she'll get her chance with him maybe like so like she didn't properly interpret that like oh mm-hmm. he actually is just like not interested it's not that he's like doing it because of the other guys or anything like I, yeah it's yeah. possible that. The women are like read too much into this and yeah, it was maybe. affecting them in some way. Yeah, that's definitely possible. And then the last thing I have is Jimmy says something like she thinks she would still fall for Mingyu even if she met him outside of the show. That's a that's a pretty powerful thing to say, I think. Yeah. And it's I guess. She doesn't say it about Gyalre, so she's like you know, she's aware of the situation she's in and she's thinking about it, not just like going all in with her <laughs> she's she's being yeah, lo- she's yeah. being logical about the situation she's in and then she yeah. but then she still is saying sense. this about mingyu so i i think we're safe to say she has significantly more feelings for mingyu than anybody else is that fair yeah yeah okay. i think that's fair okay that was a good check-in on jumi i think they did a good job on that we yeah. haven't seen a lot of jumi recently it's true all right and now ji young and gyal Ray are going on a date which yes. I was like, when did this happen? Why is this happening? And then my wife was like, I think they agreed on this on the one on one. I was like, oh, okay. So yeah. I didn't quite remember <laughs> that that happened. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. This must Same. be what it is. And is this a Thursday? <laughs> Maybe. I uh, sure. Yeah. Thursday okay. is the day of unofficial dates, we'll say. Sure. <laughs> is this an unofficial day? Sure. Yes. We'll say yes. How many locations do they go to? <laughs> Um, one. They just go the no, one. It's two. Uh, Is it two. It's it. It's a tea cafe, and then yeah. they go for a walk, and then they go to dinner. So oh, I guess that's I forgot a, about I think it's like only okay. two. I guess it's only two. Yeah. If you don't count the walk. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't count the walk. Yeah, so they go to this tea cafe, and it's also like a tea class, right? Yes, although I don't see them learning a lot. It mostly just seems to be this woman is making things in front of them, which is still fun. Yeah, but... I don't feel like they're <laughs> learning how to like serve tea, but like maybe it's just like how to make it is the idea because they're going to like make their own tea, right? Yeah, at the end they do kind okay. of, but it does seem like a here are all the things, dump them in the glass. You have made the tea. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know that they, they're they learning a lot, but it does seem like a fun time. Yeah. I wrote, they don't get to talk about anything meaningful here. They're just spending time together. Because there's like literally yeah. two pe other people in the room, like interacting with them the whole time. So yeah, they're yeah. Like, it's, it's... They're not going to talk about these like deep emotional feelings. While exactly. Is... So not an ideal date dating uh, situation for. But that's, you know, you get the second half to talk about things, you know. Okay. So, you know, there's just warm up to the rest of the date i guess yeah. they go on a walk but i wrote mm -hmm. also just basic conversation on this walk not like yeah, not getting yeah. into much here okay i mean i think there is a funny part where i don't know he says some stuff like he doesn't normally have time like this kind of leisure time in his normal life and he doesn't really go anywhere and i'm like it's good to be honest my dude but like way to make yourself seem not cool <laughs> like <just laughs> it's like i have no time and i don't go anywhere not the most appealing on a date, I would think. Doesn't she try to like be like, I'm sure you're charismatic or something at work? Or, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Something? She's like, yeah, you're probably more charismatic at work. And he's like, I have a bad personality. I'm <laughs> like, that, that's that got to be a weird translation because you, you can't say that to somebody on a date you're trying to impress. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I took that as like, he's like, nah, I'm actually just like an asshole to everybody at work. <laughs> <laughs> oh i hope not <laughs> but i think the hardest thing for us is like to to know if like they're being like ton in, tongue in cheek with yeah, these comments yeah. sometimes uh yeah <laughs> so especially he, he is doing. a very he is a very reserved delivery like no matter what he's talking about so i don't <laughs> i don't know that i'd pick it up if he was joking about things all right well then they go to dinner what do you got from this dinner sarah he talks a lot about they saw a couple who was holding hands and he was just like, yeah, I really, the first thing I noticed about them is how they were holding hands. And I think uh, <laughs> there's a, like, public displays of affection are less, like, I guess, acceptable or common in Korea. I think that's mm -hmm. fair to say. Um, I don't know where holding hands is on that spectrum, but we definitely don't see it in any of these dating shows ever. I have seen it. I think it's in Heart Signal, too, but it's like, you know, the couple that was just like, yeah. We're not changing the whole season, basically. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. They like eventually got the hand holding by the end. After yeah, a like month. if you're holding hands, it like <laughs> it is means something, yeah. you know. Yeah. And then <laughs> Jian tells him that she likes to hold her boyfriend's arms like a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and she says she is the type of person who falls head over heels for somebody, and that she's good at expressing herself and doesn't know how to hold back her feelings. If I'm on a date. With Ji Young and she has said this to me and I'm Gao Rei, I go, oh no, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> she definitely does not feel that way about me. If Hushin was here, he'd be like, everybody feels that way. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then to me, Sarah, Gao Rei starts to say some weird things here. I don't know about Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. He's going to say, uh, I I'm probably completely removing the context of him saying this, but. I have, mm -hmm. I think I'd want to live my life like your mother and father did. <laughs> Knowing nothing about them. <laughs> there was like some context for him leading into this, but I still think it was random and weird, even with the context. <laughs> yeah, the context was just that she seems like she grew up well loved. Yeah. What's it? What are these people making assumptions about <laughs> Ji Young? Yeah, like, <laughs> what are weird. these guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> I All right. Don't know. <laughs> But it does seem like maybe he does not have, like, he grew up in a not that close family unit, and he seems to think that she grew up with a close family, and he would prefer that over what he grew up with, I guess, is what he's trying to get at. Yeah, is it is it just, like, a weird way of, like, trying to casually bring up that he had a tough past? Yeah, and also to be like, family is important to me, even though, like, I didn't have the best, like, I want to work towards that. Mm. Okay. He brought this up like before she's gonna like talk about because like she's definitely wants like to get married and have kids and all this stuff. Yeah, I was like, my name is like maybe Jiwon mentioned something about this to him and that he's like actively trying to like cater to this 
Oh, yeah, because she does, like, tell him, like, that's why she got out of the flight attendant business. Yeah. She says something about, like, her goal is to have a normal life or something, right? Like, that's yeah, kind yeah. of her sentiment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. And then Gallery asks if there's someone she's been drawn to since coming here. <laughs> she cannot dodge this question wherever she goes. <laughs> well, literally everyone is interested in her, so, <laughs> yeah. She says yes. She says she started having feelings. And it's definitely Mingyu, right? I'm not crazy. Yeah. Okay. okay. She is at least consistent in her behavior through this episode. Yeah. Gary says he has too. Well, I think she even like asks him and I'm like, why are you asking him? Like he already told you he has feelings for you. <laughs> like it's almost a little mean to even ask him at this point. Yeah. There are actually a couple of times where I'm. I'm curious what Gian was, what, what, what she expected the person to say when she asked questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's definitely referring to her, right? Yes. Well, and then he like brings up Mingyu and he's like, you know, Mingyu and I are roommates and I like him, but I felt, you know, kind of jealous when you went on a date with him. Yeah. If she didn't get it before, she has to get it now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was like, specifically when you went on a date with somebody, I mm -hmm. got jealous. Also, remember the other day when we hung out and I told you I liked you? Still, still the same. Yep. <laughs> I didn't text you, but I, I, I said something before. <laughs> but then he, he decides to say something else that came into his brain. Mm -hmm. He's like, I, I had, did have this thought that, like, what if Mingyu and I like the same woman? You mean the woman he just went on a date with and who you've already confessed to? Yes, yes. What but if this that is happens? like, this, this happened with Hushin, too, where he just, like... <laughs> thought about this situation where his roommate what if his him and his roommate and him like right like the same person like it'll be awkward yeah. and what what is with these guys who keep going on dates with Gian and telling her they're worried about hurting the other guy's feelings i don't know if they should they should just focus on the hey i like you let's have a good time what what's what's your deal you know like Does she just like seemed like somebody who would like appreciate the sentiment like what it might be another, like, roundabout way to, like, <laughs> tell her that they're into her I guess, without yeah. saying it. I don't know. I'd be worried that they'd be like, oh, you must not like me that much if you're worried more about how the guys feel. Exactly, <laughs> kind of, yeah, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Gary does end sort of strong on this where he's like, well, if, if that's true, there's nothing I can do, but it's not like I'm going to back down. So he does, like, yeah. reinforce that at the end. I, I appreciate that he's being more clear now well i felt like he was really clear on their one-on-one -on -one where he was like hey i like you you know that yeah i also appreciate it. followed up with a text to jimmy but <laughs> that's true yeah i that could, was I could see where gian's still maybe like not like I, I think i get it but there's it's still weird gal ray like let me ask you <laughs> gal ray makes a statement though before the state's uh -huh. over he says i've said this before but it's so easy for me to say how i feel I don't mind talking about that at all. <laughs> what? Yeah, uh, that's not the vibe I've gotten from him ever. Honestly. Is that your personality that we've the whole season? You've been like that? The opposite of of that. Yeah. <laughs> at least for like a long stretch of the early if part of the I, show. Like, no way. If I was the editor on this, we would have gone to a flashback of him just <laughs> sitting there silently after she asked his fit, what his type was for just like a solid minute of him just being like, Words can't come out of my mouth. Like, is it possible that the edit just did him so dirty and he actually expressed so have. many feelings <laughs> in, that, in that moment? <laughs> it's possible. G they they show Gian's face after he says this. And I wrote down, she does not seem impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. All right. 0 for 2 with the guys on the Gian date so far, it seems. She's just like going on the same date. Over yeah. And over it's again, like the right? Ocean Gallery date is like, <laughs> she had to do nope. the same thing, stay the same stuff twice. <laughs> But on this date, she does get a gift. He he gave he bought her lotion ahead of time. So Is that what it go. was? Oh god, I didn't even write yeah. that down. <laughs> a lot. What's weird about this episode, like I, the we got to see a lot of the listener comments, like before we actually watch this episode. Yeah, and like mm -hmm. there was a lot of hype about this episode. I felt like yeah, um, coming definitely. into it, my like feeling watching this the first time around, especially was just like these all these dates kind of seem like. Maybe not red herrings, but, like, they're almost, like, a lot of dates of, like, people that actually aren't going to work out. Yeah. Which mm -hmm. is still, like, 
maybe has some spicy moments where they have to like confront their feelings or whatever, but it's not, there's a lot of like not progressing for me. Yeah. I, I still like this it's episode, but I think back I... half of this episode that is the good part. Yeah. I, <laughs> where all I, the spicy stuff happens. I think I liked episode six better. Like I feel like more dramatic stuff okay. happened in that, but. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah. Well, the, the drinking game is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Also confusing, but pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Everyone is, is pretty confusing still, but I don't know. Episode six frustrated me, at least editing wise. <laughs> Got you. Struck a nerve. Struck a nerve. They, they just decided that they were going to make this seem like the date that ended all dates for the season. And that's <laughs> not how it went. And I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> all right. Um, I have my notes. Okay. Now it's Thursday. Except it's been Thursday. It's already been Thursday. I think I, I think I messed that up. So maybe it's Friday now. It might be Friday. Okay. Yes. And uh, Mingyu and Hushin are hanging out on the couch. After they've hung towels off of every railing in the house. Because <laughs> yeah. I guess they did laundry and needed to air dry everything. <laughs> and they're all multicolored towels and it looks ridiculous. And it's very silly. And then uh, Jian comes out of the girl's bedroom. And Hushin covers his eyes and says, She's shining too brightly. <laughs> <laughs> No, that was you know, good. If there was any sort of doubt about if he's into her that, or not. That was a good one. I think that was yeah. his best joke all episode. <laughs> She's starting to break <laughs> And then he says to her, do you want coffee, ji Young?" And she's like, yeah. And then he says, you can make it downstairs. <laughs> now this, okay, now this is funny. I will say that. Yes. It is funny. But I think the amount of funny it is, is based on whether or not you then get up and get her coffee. Oh, yeah. You 100% have to get up after that and get her coffee. Yeah. And I don't think he does. No, he does not. <laughs> so that just makes the joke kind of mean, right? Like, <laughs> It is a little bit like his joke of, tell me if you're cold. I mean, I'm not going to do anything about it, but then yeah. I'll know, you know? Like, I think he's going to this well too much. I, I, <laughs> I th Like, if I was young, I'd be like... This is kind of getting a little annoying. <laughs> like, I feel like she yeah, made yeah. like a little bit of a face to this too. Be like, yeah, I don't want this to be my life where you suggest <laughs> yeah. something nice and then deny me it. So yeah, yeah no thanks. <laughs> yeah, so I, I I can't believe Hushin didn't get her coffee after saying that. that yeah, crazy. yeah. You pull that joke, you hundred percent have to go get the coffee. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but then there's just a lot of awkward time of the three of them sitting in this room and she is looking at Mingyu and Mingyu is looking at his phone and who is looking back and forth between the two of them <laughs> and it is it is awkward yeah they're gonna do like a bunch of like flashbacks slash scenes we didn't see of Mingyu avoiding Ji Young yes and her trying to ask about Tuesday and all the stuff yeah, yeah. I'll show again who is surprised Ji Young isn't wearing makeup <laughs> Yes. Even though he already saw her without it in the same exact situation two days ago. What? I think he's trying to be like, oh my God, you're so pretty. I didn't even realize you weren't wearing is makeup. That, is that what it is? Like, I, I think. I, I would hope. It's hard to be like, I, I'm noticing you're not wearing makeup. <laughs> and Well, this time and, he's and, like, because they're sitting like there for a while. And then he's it, like. If you're noticing well, it, then you're not. <laughs> Yeah, 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 but he like they're sitting there for a while, and then he's like, "Oh my god, I just now noticed you're not wearing makeup." Hmm. Like he has looked at her long enough now to be like, "Oh yeah, you're not wearing." Like I just you just look so good that I didn't. Yeah, I assumed you were wearing. It. I guess you're right because I think doesn't she say like thank you or something? Yeah. Okay. I would have just literally not known and never said anything. <laughs> I because I wrote down like, "Oh, is he bothered that she doesn't always have makeup on around him?" Like. No, I don't Is think it, he cares. You're, I like, think he's he's just saying she's pretty. I actually don't know. Like, like would there be a guy that'd be like, oh, like she must not care about how I feel about her because she's not wearing makeup around me. I mean, like, that's that a that's thing? a way to look at it. Or you could look at it like, oh, she is comfortable to be around me with her bare face. Like that's nice. You could take anything in any direction you want to feel good or insecure about. <laughs> yeah, I would take it as positive, but then I would never mention that she wasn't wearing yeah. makeup. But. Because he's mentioned it twice, that's why I wasn't sure. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I think at least the first time, like, she sort of brought it up because she was indicating mm. that she wasn't going to bother about it. Mm. Okay. I don't know. I can't tell what, what, how Hushin feels about this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So they they divide up. I guess they're, like, the only ones home. Or awake May or maybe whatever. Maybe the only yeah. ones we see. 
Here we go, Sarah. Gion catches Mingyu alone in his room and jumps into bed with him. <laughs> and then quickly jumps to the other bed. You didn't like have to say that. You didn't have to say bed. that part. <laughs> Just let me... Let I, me... I know. You like to insinuate a lot in the show. <laughs> I like to be clear about who is in bed with who. <laughs> we don't know how long they were in the same bed for. Well, not long enough for any of the important talk to happen while they're in there. So take that how you will. I think Hushin notices them, though, while she is in his bed. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. He, like, walks by and peeks in and then goes to his room. And we do see a lot of shots of him just being in bed in his own room, bad, and maybe he can or cannot hear what they're talking about. That's what about. I was wondering. It like, is not clear. He doesn't interfere, but, like, the door is wide open when they're talking. And mm -hmm. I couldn't tell. I feel like he had to have heard some aspects of this conversation. Yeah. Given how upset we're supposed to think he is given the edit yeah uh, but here we go jiang says to mingyu opa are you intentionally avoiding me let's go jiang oh, yes this yes. is exactly what i wanted let's go <laughs> <laughs> jiang is so cool and he's like no and she's like well it felt that way am i wrong <laughs> so you know she doesn't like immediately go oh well okay that's enough I, I wrote that in my, mo in my notes, like, oh, Mingyu tries to act cool, but then eventually admits he was avoiding her. But yeah, then I was yeah. thinking about it, like, did he actually actually admit it? I'm not sure. Like, at the end, he's going to be like, uh, oh, I'll stop avoiding you now, or something like that. But yeah, like, if yeah. he said that with ton in cheek, I'm not sure if, like, maybe he was, like, yeah. teasing the fact that she thought that he was avoiding her. I, I can't tell if Mingyu for sure is saying in this conversation, like, Yes, I was doing it intentionally. I, I, I'm not sure about that. I think he, he does say that he didn't mean to do it, but I think he acknowledges that it happens, you know, or that like... He acknowledges that her feeling, like, yeah, he doesn't say like, oh, you're are crazy valid for feeling... Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he validates that her feelings are reasonable or whatever, yeah. But I don't know if that's an admission that he was doing it intentionally. Yeah, that's fair. My, my gut right away was to be like, oh, wow, he's admitting to doing this. But then I was like, I don't know, actually. After I, I mean, he's at time. least being direct about his mental state at the time and what he was worried about. And so, you know, like, I'll take that. Yeah. Which you could. I was I thought you might look at this as like, oh, this is just an excuse kind of that he gives. I mean, it is what I thought was happening. So, like, it lines up with. Yeah. Jiang's going to be cool about this. She thinks it's reasonable what he what he's going to say here. So he basically yeah. says, like, oh, he just wanted to focus on one girl at the time. And that made him be weird around her. Yeah. Except, you know, I agreed to a date with Yisu, but we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, hmm, okay. And at some point, at I think it's at this point, Hushin just, like, leaves his room real fast and walks past and, like, out to another room, theoretically, where he cannot hear them anymore. Oh, I thought he could hear them maybe better. <laughs> oh. Because it was, like, direct, I don't know. <laughs> direct uh, Across from audio the door, from the door, maybe. Yeah. I got guess i don't know he makes a move he goes somewhere else for unknown reason yeah and then i, I wrote down in my notes like i don't believe this but is it possible that mingyu just doesn't really like ji young and it's just like awkward for him to deal with like i don't i don't think that could be true but if this yeah, thing about think... like his ex being a flight attendant is true and maybe he's just like triggered she's by... not a flight attendant anymore she's not but like maybe he's triggered by her vibes because she has those but i don't know mm, i don't know maybe yeah because so, so all i have to go off of is like the edit for heart signal 2 for the show uh -huh. okay and like mingyu is in the spot right now of the guy that's gonna make a decision at the end of the show right and so i'm, I'm trying to like compare his edit to the guy with the decision at the end of the show <laughs> in heart signal 2 okay and i feel like when they had a moment like an awkward moment like this and then they tried to like make up and they like succeeded in some way like they ended mm -hmm. up understanding each other yeah that that guy did not end up picking this girl the girl at the end uh, you yeah. know so uh -huh. and i don't know if they were necessarily like is Mingyu just getting through the conversation here and he's saying whatever it takes to not upset her and like he like because we're gonna find out like oh he's already he's saying he's already decided like if he's he's prepared to his answer if the show ended today, we're gonna find yes, out later. Which seems ridiculous. So I don't know this this I, I I'm highlighting this just because I 
I feel like he's still on Jimin. But I, I don't necessarily think that means like, oh, he doesn't like Ji Young, but Yeah. I don't know. I can't it really is... explain the weirdness of his behavior exactly, but Yeah. The, the this episode does seem to be putting an effort into making us think he has switched to Ji Young. But I, yeah. I'm like not buying it. I'm not mm. I'm not sold on it. Okay. I want to believe it okay. because like Jimin is so clearly not picking him <laughs> like every at every turn. Jimin is an enigma. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I, I, I can understand you saying. I can understand saying like, "Oh, it doesn't seem like he's gonna pick her." But to be like for sure, Jimin is not picking her. I, I'm not there yet. Okay. I, I, I think there's still a chance. Yeah, I definitely think that like if she turns around and picks him, he he's he's going with her, right? But I mean, they're gonna but they're gonna pick they're gonna pick anonymously. So like, they have to have. I okay. You I know. mean, not texting, but I mean, like, if she turned around and went, "Opa, you're the only one for me," he'd be like, "Okay, let's go," you know. Oh, okay. um, like, he like, would like, abandon like whatever right other, other yeah, yeah, like anything. Mm, okay, yeah. If he she gave him uh, any indication that this was on, he would abandon all other plans, no matter how far down the track he is. I don't think she's giving an indication that it's over, and that's I think that's enough to keep any guy like. Mm. Except, like, we haven't gotten there yet, but they have this car ride that almost feels like, to me, has, like, breakup vibes. Right? From from Mingyu's side. Yeah, where he's like, we should see other people. Right? <laughs> like, that's what he says, more well, or less. That's how I would kind of take it, but there's this weird vibe on the show where, like, and maybe this is, like, a culture thing or, like, not a great translation tra translatable sediment or something but like mm -hmm. feeling comfortable with somebody is like bad romantically and then feeling uncomfortable with somebody is good romantically and this is like yes. a common sentiment and like the that's like he's kind of gonna talk through that lens about how he's feeling about her yeah but i i understand that point of view that it like it it feels like he's breaking up with her kind of and that's well he does specifically say at first like he tells her the same thing where he's like i thought i should focus on one person but now i think i need to talk to a bunch of people yeah like but he's that's where it... i get the most like breakup vibes yes but he says it through this lens of like we it feels like we've got we are too comfortable with each other and i wish there was more yeah. tension so maybe if we date other people <laughs> we could create more attention <laughs> Like, I don't know. I, I, I took it as, like, it was, like, him doing some, like, mental gymnastics in order to, like, make it still possible that they could end up together. It's like a couple who's been married for 20 years and they're going, things aren't really spicy anymore. Maybe we should have a threesome. Like, that's the vibe, you know? And, like, if if your relationship is on threesome life support already, like, no. No, it's not going to work out. <laughs> Well, I don't get this, like, all right, we're getting really far ahead of ourselves. Do we want to pause? <laughs> yeah, okay. Wait, I don't even know what we're talking about right now. Oh, we're talking about, we, we were just talking about Ji Young and Min Q's talk conversation. Yes, yes. Poor Ji Young gets overshadowed by Ji and <laughs> stuff again. Um, Yeah, okay. Ji Young asks Min Q, they're still in their, their the bedroom, Min mm -hmm. bedroom. Jun asked if his focus on another girl is over now. And then Mingyu says, I think Jimin found out about how she feels, but I don't know. I'm still not sure how I feel. To me, that's a little bit of if if like if he was over, uh, not over, but like if he was really like, I'm prepared to move past Jimin and I am interested in Jiang, like I don't know if he would have phrased it like this. Yeah, I interpreted that as like him acknowledging that Jimin doesn't like him enough to pick him, but he's not ready to like, let go of that feeling yet. Yeah. And it's significant to me that he's saying it to Ji Young, who is the person that we're supposed to think that he's switching to. Yeah. So yeah, that it's, I don't know. These are just like the little things that are making me not super invested in what the show is trying to tell me. I, I'm That's not, fair. I'm not letting yeah. it fool me. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, after this segment, I still wrote, Mingyu is still picking Jimin, in my opinion. <laughs> I don't think he'll move on unless he's 100% rejected by her. Yeah. Yeah. She's got to be, like, making out with someone in front of him before he's like, okay, I guess no, I No, no, no. That dude's like... going to like her even more. <laughs> <laughs> he'll be like, man, I wish I was 
making out with her right now. This will create tension between <laughs> us later. I can't wait. <laughs> no, like it, it, she, she would just have to be like, essentially say like, I really have feelings for somebody else that I'm not picking you. <laughs> like that's essentially yeah. what would have to happen. Yeah, yeah. Which could Which happen, is, but. I, I feel like nobody ever does that. Based on the edit so far, I don't think it's going to happen. And I yeah. think Mingyu will still pick Jimin in the end. But uh, I do like Ji Young, like, reinforce. She's like, I, you know, I understand that. You just got to be honest with me. Just saying words is better. Yeah. Because if not, I'm going to overthink things. And so she is very direct about, like, yeah. this is how I need to be treated. Just, like, say some fucking words. Jian is awesome in this scene. So <laughs> yes, understanding. Absolutely. So kind. So cool. And direct about how she's feeling and what she needs. Super right? attractive, Ji Young, yeah. right now. <laughs> Definitely. And this is when he says he won't avoid her anymore and that he'll, you know, yeah. Which be I, honest with her. I originally took as him admitting he was doing it, but now I'm a little, I don't know. So <laughs> I'm not sure. But then we get these like quick scenes that are super cute of them like playing around together. Like, I don't know, he comes into their makeup room and guesses something is hers and then runs away and she chases him. And then like, they're eating and she's just like really like playing with his hair, fixing his hair like intensely. And just like there's a level of contact there that I would not expect them to be comfortable with at this stage. And poor Hushin is just sitting there at the table watching this. It feels <laughs> bad. Yeah. I mean, Gian's already touched his ear when she thought he had a um, a piercing, remember? They've, oh, that's right. They've already gone this far. This is But that fun. was just a little boop. This is like <laughs> she's boop. full on in his hair. <laughs> like, you know? Yeah. I mean, he says something like, oh, like, he's like, well, if there's something in there, get it out. <laughs> like that, that, <laughs> It wasn't like, yeah, I don't know. It wasn't like too much, but yeah, they, they're they doing this. Like, I don't know exactly when these moments happened. Because, like, it seems like it's just Mingyu, Jiang, and Hushin in the house. Maybe. I guess right. we don't know for sure. But then they cut to, like, all three girls are in the makeup room. And then he goes in and is like, oh, are those Jiang's headphones? And then they're like, yeah. And he like snags him and runs away <laughs> or like whatever. Like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not sure the order of these events. Like, it's even possible that these like playful moments happened when supposedly they were like in a rift yeah. between each other. That's true. And they're just showing them in this order. So, yeah. But this is this is like the beginning of the show making us be like, oh, they just made up. They're on the same page. And now they're like, they're really into each other. Look at this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is amazing. The show is full of lies, though, so. <laughs> I'm not buying it. <laughs> I'm prepared to be wrong, Sarah. I'd rather fool myself than be fooled by the show. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I get it. You're just preserving your feelings. You, you don't want the show to break your heart later when after you've gotten invested. I just love to make <laughs> predictions that go against the storytelling of the show. And then <laughs> when you're right, it just feels so good. So I'm hoping mm, to get okay. that feeling once again. Fair. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, Gian's going to meet her friend to talk. Wow, so much happened in this episode. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. And we haven't even gotten to the spicy bit. I know. Yeah, she's basically talking about how she likes Mingyu and how that date was real good. And then she felt bad because he was like not talking to her. And now they talked about it and everything's good, basically. She does say to her friend like she was attracted to Hushin the day he joined. Uh, but then mm -hmm. by random chance went on a date with Mingyu because of the gifts. And she had tried to pick Hushin's Yeah, she really gift, made yeah. it seem like she tried to pick Hushin's gift. Now I wish she had. Maybe everything would be different now. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> and that, it, I mean, it's true. It's literally like, this is how love works. It's just like random Yeah, it's all and, random. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What is it? What do I always say? Like, the, the most attractive thing about anyone is their proximity to you. <laughs> like, I mean, that's fair. Pretty yeah. much, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, the song that made her heart flutter or mm -hmm. gave her butterflies. It was like more intense yes. than just fluttering. With Mingyu when they were in the uh, records place. Uh, yeah, the record bar, yeah. The name of the song, she says, is for lovers who hesitate. What an appropriate title for <laughs> their situation. Yeah. That's incredible. Exactly, is that, yeah. Is that for reals? <laughs> yeah. I guess. I mean, that's no, what it's I, I looked it up. It's a real song. So Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. And then they flashback to Mingyu. And Ji Young on their date at the the wine, like when they're having wine. Yeah, the and third location, yeah. Mingyu does say to her that he was hoping she would pick his gift. Well, she asked if there was somebody he really wanted to see that day. So it's it's a little different 
just the nuance instead of him yeah. going, I really had wished it was you. She like put him on the spot a little bit yeah. to be like, who did you hope to see today? And like, how are you going to say g <laughs> in this moment, right? Like that, that would be, that would be an interesting experience. I don't know. Like, so I don't know how, I don't put a lot of stock in the fact that he actually said g Young here, you know? Yeah. I, and it's also still possible that he's like saying g Young. Like in that moment on that day, he was hoping Gian would pick his thing. Right. But then we also got that stuff where like they made it seem like he was giving a hint to Jimin. Yeah, Remember? yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. He. So I, 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 this I, is a lie. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> like, you just think it's a lie? Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's it is a that's lie fair. to not to avoid f- having an awkward conversation right now. Are you in me? Are you with me on this Jimin? This Jimin theory? What that he's that's he's that gonna... he that he's. Like the person he's still talking about is Jimin in this show, this whole episode, right? Um, I think there's room for him to waver, but I don't think it's like I think in the end he's still going to come back to her to Jimin. You know, like he hasn't let go of Jimin fully, and maybe he wants to, but like just hasn't gotten there emotionally yet. But in this episode, he's going to say like, "Oh, I'm ready to decide." Oh, that part, I, I, I don't. Who is he talking know. about? You don't. Like, know. I don't. I don't like. I don't believe him when he says that oh uh, okay well why the thing is like why would you uh, well hmm, may, is it maybe it is better to have to say that than to not say that i i don't know i mean okay like i i guess when he says that i do believe that it's it's Jimin because of the everything right but none of that makes sense with the shit he does in this episode <laughs> you know like and i don't i don't it doesn't make any sense Make it make sense. Hmm. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll talk about it when we get there. I, I don't, I think I can explain it in a way that makes sense to me. But okay, we'll, we'll get there. I look <laughs> forward to that. All right. Um, her oh, Jian's friend suggests getting to know other guys besides Mingyu. And then I felt like Jian just like coughed and was like, "That not very interested in that <laughs> idea at all." <laughs> she does say that her style is when she gets fixated, she just keeps moving forward, and her feelings grow even more. Jian's in like an uncommon position though, where like she actually kind of has already gotten to know the other guys. Like they all tried to date her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she's like, "Yeah, I did date them, and I'm good." <laughs> actually, <laughs> she does say something about Jiwon though that she's like, she thought while they were on the date, like, "Oh, he's a man, not a child," even though he's younger than <laughs> her. So like, I mean, yeah, that's a very low level compliment, but. But maybe there's a little room for her. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't but think so. She said something nice about Jiwon. How about that? <laughs> I have an interpretation of uh, something that happens in the drinking game that <laughs> Okay. That Jiang does. I'll translate it for you. Okay. When she chooses okay. to drink and not answer. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, Jiang is aware that Mingyu is popular. And she's also yes. aware that she is popular. <laughs> she, gets, she knows what's up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, she does. I mean having the same date a couple times in a row we'll do that to you. now she's saying she knows she's popular but then she's like also asking the guys like to confirm like hey like am i actually <laughs> like she's gonna do this a couple times right like you said she did it with mm. Gyalray, and then she's gonna do it in the drinking game a little bit too yeah where yeah, like yeah. it feels like she knows the answer and but she's still asking the question it feels like she thinks she's popular with three of them like i don't think she thinks that hushin likes her oh yeah still. hushin's the one she yeah, might not know. Yeah, but she's asking the two guys she thinks she should know, right? Right. Maybe yeah. she just likes to hear that they like her, even though she's not. Interested. I mean, who doesn't like to hear that you're likes? <laughs> that makes sense. And it's an awkward game to play. She so, likes when other people you know, hear it too. <laughs> it's true. Although at a certain point, it had to have been like a little awkward to be like, "Oh no, everyone has just said they're into me. This is this is weird." <laughs> now we'll all sit awkwardly in this room together. It also seems that Jian thinks Jumi has like greater feelings for Gyalre than Mingyu, which I think we know is not. Yeah, true. which is yeah the wrong read. There. Jiang yeah. is off on that po- that part. Um, and then she describes Yisu a certain ra- a way. Did you write this down? Uh, I don't think I did, but she says like she's very different from the rest of the girls. It was something about how she talks, like where like she doesn't like her conversation doesn't flow. Yeah, like, she's more reserved. Yeah, and... ba- but, like, the way she described it just made, like, oh, so, like, Yisu is, like, Mingyu. That's what you're saying. Uh, That's what it made me okay. kind of think. Okay, yeah. Well, if they got together, they would just never say anything. Well, they did get together and we watched <laughs> it. Like, but how long were the pauses between all these yeah, things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. 
But basically, though, Gian really likes Mingyu. Is how I look. Yep. Like if we yep, didn't yep. know, we know now. <laughs> then lock it in. Where <laughs> nothing's can, changing can we, here. <laughs> can we have a Mingyu friends date again, so that way we can actually get an updated actual feeling of what's going on in that man's head? That's that's what I want. I bet you there was one, and we are not allowed to see it. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yep. 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 That's why they used the one from earlier in the season. <laughs> they showed that mm. one. <laughs> They're like, "Cause we're not showing you anymore the rest of the way. <laughs> this, this is our main man reveal at the end of the season. We, <laughs> we can't show his true feelings at any time." This is the time where I'm like, I I wish we had some bullshit confessionals in the show or something. I need something to realign me on what this silent man thinks. <laughs> I like the tension of not knowing, <laughs> but I think I know. Mm, okay. And then I'll just be upset. I'll be upset later when I'm wrong, <laughs> or I'll be really happy when I'm right. I like to feel comfortable and know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. This is I. I. This is what romance shows are about. That's the tension. <laughs> this, is, I, this is what I'm here for. Okay. Okay. All right. Mingyu's driving Jima to school again. Let's go, Sarah. Yes. I. If they sh- if they showed every single time Minkyu drove Jim into school, I I I would be happy. I think no matter how poorly okay. or well it goes, I'm just into it. <laughs> Something seems to always happen. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So they get in the car, and then he like he's loading up the GPS or whatever on his phone, and then he must have had the location of from the, last the, his last the trip the or date. something. The, no, I I yeah. assumed it was the location of the date with Yisu. No, but she drove. Oh, but she drove. Unless they used his phone or something. Hmm. But Jimin yeah. like sees the the last address on when he's like opening up his GPS and he's like, Oh, mm-hmm. so that's where you went. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> she might still think it is the, the Yisu date, even yeah, though. Yeah, even like, if it wasn't. Yeah. I I didn't like bother to confirm. She says the location. I'm not I don't actually know if that's where they went. Yeah. But we're gonna find out that like, oh, she was thinking about Mingyu going mm-hmm. on this date with Yisu. And she, uh, as soon as they got in the car, she's like, I want to check out this GPS. Where, where'd they go? <laughs> yeah. And then it seems like Jimin like, is anticipating, like, oh, maybe there might be a part of the show where, like, the girls have to pick gifts, right? She's been, like, thinking right, about Right, because the guys had to, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, like, she also feels like she should get Mingyu a gift in general, just for giving him because all Because he's been rides. driving her around, yeah. 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 Exactly. And Mingyu... Has already mentioned to her, or is this the first time that he needs shoes? Yeah, there is a flashback to them talking about buying shoes, but it's like in the group. But it's it's also in the context of Jimin talking about buying shoes as a gift for like the show mechanic. Yeah, so she's like, "But what size would I get them in?" Like, because you don't know who's gonna pick yeah. it. And so then, and then there's something about you can get a ticket to change the size or whatever. I don't know. So she references that in this like banter about. Oh, she'll get him shoes for driving her all over the place. But, like, am I interpreting this right? Like, it really seems like not only does she want to get a gift from Mingyu, but she wants it to be, like, a gift that he will be able to identify if they have to pick gifts. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of, yeah, the vibe. So, like, she wants to go on another, like, an an actual date, I guess, with him? Or, like, (laughs) is she just saying this because it's the charming, cute, fun thing to say? I guess. honestly, I don't really believe her most of the time you just don't believe when her. she's saying mm-hmm. the cute things she's saying the thing that you would say if you were going to be cute and charming in this circumstance like he asks her so who do you want to go on a date with and she goes you because that's the thing you'd say like i don't know that i believe anything she says yeah they make it say you with a question mark in the yeah in the, yeah so um yeah and so, like, even when she does bring up the Yisu stuff, it is after he talks about we should be other people. And I'm like, is it, like, did she care? Or is she saying that now because he's talking about seeing other people? I don't know. To me, like, there's no way if I'm Mingyu here, like, I'm interpreting this as, like, the only the only way I would interpret this is, like, oh, there's still a chance. Like, yeah, she of course, seems interested, but, yeah. I they I, I the idea with Minky was like he didn't get a text on the last text, right? And that's why he's feeling this way, right? Yeah. I think he felt like that date that they had was really good and like that should have been the turning point where she was ready to pick him and she still didn't. Yeah. And so it feels like that's why this whole conversation happens where he's like, 
let's see other people or whatever. I mean, you read it a little differently than I do, but I feel like she just says the things to keep that hope alive. Hmm. Just so she has the option, not necessarily because she likes him that much. She might like him, but she's still not the top of his list, her list. He's still not the, whichever I switch the pronouns, but he's not the top of her list, you know? Yeah. What's what's weird about Jimin, though, is like, like, does she even have a list? Like, yeah, like. Yeah, it like, went Jiwon, Hushin, and then theoretically Mingyu. I don't think Yaori is on the list anywhere, but. Now she she did go on a date with Hushin, and she has picked I don't know. him. See, I, she picked him last time. Like that's who she texted last time, and he is also her number one pick in the instinctual who's hot pick. Yeah, but the, so like we like we go back and forth with like how to interpret everybody's text, right? So mm-hmm. like when like when Gao Rei doesn't text Ji Young after expressing the feelings, right? Yes. And Ji Young didn't text Gao Rei, right? Mm-hmm. We we like we'll talk about like oh they didn't want to like be too intense and then like also text them, like that's kind of the sentiment we say sometimes, right? Yeah, but I mean in that circumstance, I think it's specifically because Gao Rei said I don't want to burden you, let you know like just I just wanted to tell you like so I see that from him his perspective as a choice to not burden her. Mm. I don't think there is anything that would make jimin feel like mingyu would be burdened by her say like sending him a text this man has said like made it clear i think many times that he would be fucking stoked to get a text from her jimin at one point didn't she describe herself as somebody that like likes to get to know people over time and i don't know maybe she was I- i'm just saying it's possible like she thought oh texting him after that date would be too intense like she she wouldn't be properly um, but like expressing in, her true feelings by doing that i don't know except like the whole time she's been texting jiwan she's been like oh doesn't he know that i feel so strongly about him yeah and but that's his when frustration they had the, like, yeah, yeah yeah but like she was texting him because she had strong feelings and then in the ladies summit she never said anything about i don't want to text Mingyu because it'll lock in those feelings and i can't date her like there's none of that attitude around there it's just like I just wish the other guys would say the cute shit that Mingyu said. Like I don't, I don't think she likes him that much. Mm, she's having okay. fun going on dates, but I don't think she's really like into him. That might change, but like at this point, I don't think so. And maybe like now that he's starting to pull away, maybe she is gonna flip. But I, I, I just don't believe her when she says this cute shit to him. So to me, like this is a lot to say if you really have no interest in somebody. I don't think it's no interest. It's just he's not the top of the list. And so she's mm. going to keep it alive okay. in case the other shit doesn't work out. Okay. Well, if, if that's the case, like as long as he's on the list, I can easily see him going to the top of the list after like <laughs> she realizes like <laughs> after she gets as much experience as Ji Young has and then says, you know what? <laughs> These other guys. No, thanks. <laughs> but, like something like it easily could happen that it, he she gets back around. Yeah. Like even though she was texting g1 the whole time like it's like obviously like okay g1 was the top of her list right but that doesn't even mm-hmm. really illustrate the like intensity of it because it just was it was only texting like they didn't do anything so like it couldn't be that intense right but like whenever like he he just wasn't around a lot you know so nothing could happen you know it's literally just the same thing jumi's going through where it's like fomo of like uh-huh. i had this great yeah. date with gyal Ray. But, you know, my instincts tell me that Mingyu is better, so I don't want to miss out. But it's like reverse, yeah. where she's gone, like, Jimin's gone with Mingyu, but her instincts are telling you these other guys might be better. So she's like, yeah, that, yeah. That's, where, that's where it is. <laughs> yeah. Which. Okay. Yeah. Can't feel good from the guy's perspective. I guess so. Oh, well, yeah, it definitely doesn't feel good. Like, you want your, <laughs> whatever intensity you have, you want it to be matched, of course. But <laughs> Okay, so. So you're leaving the door open for Jimin a little bit or no? Oh, yeah. I think she'll come around when she finally goes out on a date with Jiwon and realizes that she built him up in her head or whatever. Or Hushin doubles down on trying to get Ji Young or something. Or she feels she suddenly realizes once Mingyu starts to pull away that, oh, maybe she like there's a lot of reasons she might turn around. So if if the girls are just straight up picking dates next time. Right. Yeah. Mm hmm. 
so you, you're going to say she's not going to pick Mingyu. She's going to pick mean, somebody else. She might pick Mingyu because because he's pulling away now. Mm, you know the tension. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I'm so uncomfortable now. But like. <laughs> I don't know. Do you think she's over the Jiwon situation because she started texting Hushin instead? Like, um, I mean, how is, I'm like, over Jiwon, so I'm not the right person to. <laughs> like, I'm really. But I mean, over like, on this show. beginning of the season, Jimin, could you ever imagine her not picking Jiwon for the first time she got to pick a date? Right? Like, do you think that's changed? Um, there's no indication that it should have changed, other than that she switched texting. Um, yeah, which but... maybe means nothing. Which could mean nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who Jimin picks, if she gets to pick who she wants for a date, it's, it, it's actually super interesting who she's going to pick. Yeah. Mingyu says, who do you want to go on a date with? And I wrote, let's go, Mingyu. <laughs> <laughs> Just like when Jian got went forward. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Jimin says, you question mark. <laughs> I don't know how to interpret that. <laughs> Mingyu laughs though, as if like it might've been a joke. I don't know. Yeah. Or she says it kind of cutely in that, that way yeah. that she says things. Cute. But then she says the stuff we talked about before. I think it would feel different being on a date. It would be different from us spending time together. Even though she's been calling it a date the whole time. But okay. Mindy says, I do think we need some tension. I started to feel comfortable with you at some point. I thought it was a shame. I think we've been spending too much time together instead of going on a date. <laughs> okay. They they both agree. Just you know, been we, on have, date. we haven't gone on a date. <laughs> what okay <laughs> we've been spending too much time together so we need to spend time together but only in a very specific circumstance like this okay. is so weird to me that like the only way i can interpret this from Mingyu's perspective that makes sense to me is like he's doing mental gymnastics to leave it to like be like i get it jimin we didn't go on a real date you know it's not we're getting too comfortable with each other i i understand how you ha- haven't developed think, feelings for me yet like I'll yeah i think what time. he's feeling <laughs> is that she sees him more as a friend than as a like romantic partner you know yeah yeah that's what he's but it's like he's i think he's doing it like you're saying like oh he's breaking up with her but i think he's doing it from a like i don't want this to be over perspective because like i want to give you this window to like let's shake it up a little bit like you're saying and maybe things will happen <laughs> we'll come back okay. around <laughs> yeah yeah but then here we go. Jimin says this. Feeling comfortable doesn't mean there's no attraction. You know, she's like, hey, Mingyu, like, I never said I wasn't attracted to you. She also <laughs> never said she was. Yeah, no. just, you know, this is another one of those things she says that's cute. Yeah, maybe maybe he just maybe it could just be like she's really worried that, like, he feels really bad about himself and <laughs> he, she's like mm-hmm. trying to lower it down. But I feel like she's like being too nice if this isn't what she's doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then. Mingyu says, it's hard to know how you feel when you're in the house. I I originally took this mean, as you yeah. meaning her, but I think he means like you as in like... As a person, anybody in the house. Universal, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. But then he says, I thought it was time for us to focus on our feelings more. Us meaning like universal, I think again. At first, I wanted to focus on one person, but now I think I should talk to many different people. And this is the line that you are taking as like a breakup line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Jimin says, I thought I felt really comfortable with you too, but knowing you went out with Yisu yesterday made me unhappy. Seriously. I was waiting, thinking, when is he coming back? Why is he taking so long? This is so unnecessary to say, Sarah. <laughs> if This is yeah. like, I don't think you can say this and not have some feelings. Like, like not be considering him at least a little bit. The timing of it, though, feels like... Like, she says it the moment he starts to maybe pull away and, like, put some space between them. Yeah, but... You know? Like, it, okay, if I was Jimin, and I, I'm i not... I'm just... I just, like... Mingyu's just my friend. I just want to be friends with him. And he basically, like, gives her the excuse, like, be like, yeah, we're comfortable and it's not going to work out. And, like, we should see other people. Why would she say this? Like, she's getting exactly what she wanted, right? Like, no, because I think what she wants is this to be an option still. Oh, okay. That's what, I, okay, I, that's what I'm saying. Okay. But not like, I don't think it's super significant that she says this. I don't think it means that he's her person. <laughs> yeah. I mean, ultimately, like, Mingyu and Jimin, like, could pick each other at the end of the show because, you know, Jimin didn't get anywhere with anybody else. And then she ends up picking him. And then yeah. it doesn't actually mean anything in terms of, like, a significant relationship. Right. Past yeah. the show. It meant she wanted to not lose the, on the show. I'm just trying to read the edit here, and I, I don't think 
we can say Jimin is not picking Mingyu in the end. I, I think that's too short yeah, of yeah. a statement. Okay. I think, like, if it ended right now, I don't think she's picking him. Although maybe she hmm. is because she hasn't gotten anywhere with anybody else, but she still yeah. thinks she could get somewhere with someone else. Who knows what the text It's hard mean. to say. Who You're knows right, what the yeah. text mean now? Uh, Mingyu <laughs> says, uh, in response to her saying this, because I think Mingyu is a little caught off guard by this. this yeah. He says, what kind of feeling is that? <laughs> and Jimin she says, says, I don't, I don't know. know. It's okay. You know, but Jimin, if Jimin is confused, she's having feelings, she doesn't know how to interpret them, that's fine too. I'm okay with it. Okay, sure. I mean, uh, Mingyu will wait as long as it takes, you know, and as long as, as, long as it doesn't take longer than two more weeks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Super interesting. Every time these yeah. two go on and do anything, I'm I'm here. <laughs> I'm here for it. <laughs> now it's time for drinking games, Sarah. Oh my With gosh. Everyone. Yes. Everyone's at, everyone. Everyone's Even actually home. G1. <laughs> G1 is there. Unfortunately, yes. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so what G1 does do is like I feel like he's so bold and one track minded right now that he like really amps up the intensity of the questioning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he definitely <laughs> does. So I don't know if he would have gotten as good of a scene if G1 wasn't there. <laughs> All right, Sarah, explain this game. What's happening? Okay, they start off with Son Bun Ho, which is basically Never Have I Ever, right? Except, uh, I don't know, I the rules so. make it sound like you say something you have done, and then everybody puts down fingers if they have also done it. Whereas yeah, it's basically Never Have I Ever is the opposite. You say something you haven't done, and people put their fingers down if they have done it. I don't know. Yeah. Some variation on, I'm going to say a thing, and then you have to reveal if you've done it or not, basically. It's not really a thing that you've done either, though. It's like, it's just like a statement, and is this, uh, does this apply to you or not? It's like, yeah, yeah, pretty much. It doesn't have to be a thing you've actually done. It could be That's a right, feeling yeah. that you've had or whatever. Yeah. Or how you're feeling right now, or yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. We start out with some silly ones here. Ready? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. We find out that Gyalray has dated less than four people in his life. In his life? Is that what, is that what we're supposed to believe? I think in? so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hushin is all about, like, trying to call people out if they don't put a finger down. <laughs> or, like, yeah. he's really monitoring the fingers. So he calls. He's like, <laughs> I think Jimin or something said, like, I've dated less than three. You've dated more than three, three people. Is Yeah. You have to put so, a yeah, yeah. Down. So Gyalray doesn't put a finger down. Hushin calls him out <laughs> in front of everybody. Yes. And then they all laugh at him. <laughs> this is kind yeah, of Yeah, yeah. They're saying he was like born single, which born I think is a single. term for like just somebody who's perpetually single. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what that means. <laughs> that's mean. I've yeah, only dated yeah. I've only dated two people, Sarah. How many <laughs> would you be uh, um, raising a finger or putting it down? I yeah, I, I mean I've only like seriously dated two people. Okay. <laughs> well, there we go. All right, we would equally be embarrassed. <laughs> Yes. I yeah. mean, I wouldn't be embarrassed, but <laughs> well, I might get called situation out. Situation <laughs> would be like trying to make you feel embarrassed. Probably. Even if you weren't embarrassed, I would feel a certain way that like everybody was willing to laugh about it. <laughs> you know? mm, yeah. yeah. And then G1 asks whether or not I forget what's the exact phrasing he uses for his question. It's like I've already chosen in general. No, if I like... still, I thought it was if I still haven't chosen the one yet. So I still you have to haven't. Put, your, okay. put your finger down if you haven't decided who your person for the season is. Yeah. And the only highlight we get out of this is that Mingyu does not put a finger down. We do see Jimin put a finger down. So she has not Jimin. picked a finger. Well, that, uh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I think those are the only two we see. And I, I, I just assume that everybody puts one down except for Mingyu because that's the only person who Shin calls out. That's what I assume too. But it seems kind of crazy to me that, like, is G1 putting a finger down? I guess it's his question. Like, does he have to put a finger down? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Like, because out of everybody, like, you would think, oh, G1's already decided. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe the one thing holding G1 up is that, like, he actually can't figure out if Gian actually even likes younger guys. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's still figuring that aspect out. Yeah, okay. exactly. They they make it seem like Mingyu's the only one that yeah. doesn't at put a finger down. At least that's the only person that like Hushin calls out as like yeah. he's specifically like, oh, you didn't put a finger we down. We don't know for sure that everybody else put one down, but okay. Um, so yeah, Mingyu Mingyu is willing to publicly say he's already chosen. Yes. Okay. And then I think somebody has already put all their fingers down and I, has to drink or something. I think and <laughs> And then Ji Young's just like, let's just do truth or drink instead. 
Yes. Or truth or I don't know if she says truth or dare, but they do essentially play, play truth or drink. Truth or drink, yeah. I wouldn't mind answering questions for this game, but man, I would feel so awkward asking questions for this game. Yeah. <laughs> you have to like single somebody out. <laughs> yeah. And then it's a lot more intense. Yeah. Than the other one. I don't mind answering, but man, I would not want to ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> Unless there was like really something I needed to know, but I I would feel bad singling somebody out. Mm-hmm. All right, I wrote them all down. I'm sure you did too. You read? Uh, yeah, Are yeah, you I did. To, I ready to play? Sorry, I got distracted. I realized I dated a third person and forgot about them. Sorry. <laughs> I think it was it was more than three, so you'd still have. Your I finger just up. felt bad about forgetting about them. Anyway, oh, uh, <laughs> do you want to name names? So that no, can of course not. Specifically, no. know that you didn't remember them. <laughs> Hundred percent, I do not. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> so we start with Hushin asks Yisu if she has someone she likes, and she says yes, she does. Okay. Not a lot of information. And she texts Mingyu. <laughs> yeah. Dance, so okay. For the most part, it seems like if you got asked a question, you get the answer, or you get that. If you got asked a question, then you get to ask the next question. Yeah. They break it a couple times, but it could have been editing. I'm not sure. So Yisu asks Gyalray. Is there a person who you're most concerned about? And then Galray says, I don't think I have anyone in particular. I don't even know what this means, Sarah. Yeah, I was going to say, is this, is this any different than like, is there somebody you like? Like, I feel like it's the same question. And also his answer is a lie, right? Because he still likes Gio. I have no idea. Like, I, when I first heard the question, I was like, oh, is, is it like, like a guy he's concerned about? Like that's into the same girl as him like i really have no idea what this means yeah i don't know so i'm not investing anything like i i i don't know somebody has to tell me what what was meant by the question and then did gal ray interpret the question properly did he lie i'm assuming nobody lied so i i'm inclined to think he did okay. not lie okay if it's really awkward you just drink that's true but like this question and answer or whatever but then like hushin's like oh, isn't Kyore so awkward in general or something? And I'm just like, that's kind of a dick move. Why are you, like, picking on Kyore today? Lucian's got a little, uh, a little something this episode for me. Yeah. For me. Yeah. Okay. Started strong, ended not so good, but yeah. So then Kyore asked Jimin, when you had to send a text to number one and number two, who did you choose as number one? And this is a great question that basically takes over a lot of the rest of the questions for this whole game. Well, I'm guessing what happens here is, and maybe this is intentionally why the show added this rule with the, or added Mm -hmm. this one, number one, number two thing. Like there is some sentiment on this show that like, you're not supposed to tell anybody directly like who you like and who you don't like. Mm -hmm. Right. So you have these two to sort of pick between who knows which actually is more meaningful. Exactly. Like, did the show want to invent a way for them to, like, give an answer, but not it be guaranteed because there was, like, actually two options when they did this? I I don't know. But it it seemed like somebody decided to ask a question like this, and then maybe, like, the producers were like, you know what? Go for it. Do it. And then everybody was like, all right, we're allowed to do this. Where every, <laughs> every question from now on is going to be, who did you text for number one and number two? At a certain point, I'm just like, okay, get out a whiteboard. Everybody make <laughs> yeah, a chart and exactly. write who everybody picked for everything. Might as so well, we'll just, just all know. <laughs> might as well just fill out a questionnaire. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Yisun doesn't know anything about this because she wasn't there. So Jumi explains that number one is who you're most attracted to. Previously, we had been calling it who you're instinctually attracted to i don't know if there's a difference there or not um and number two is who you're most compatible with as a couple and so this is jimin who just got asked this question and she chose g1 and she just says it and he has like no reaction yep. like his face does not change at all <laughs> yep and it's for number one too which we're gonna find out we think it seems like the guys the guys value the number one pick except for mingyu i even mingyu might be number one i i he like leaves it open because he's talking to Jumi at the time that like, oh, maybe number two was important also. Oh, it sounded to me like when he was talking to her, he was saying that he thought number two was more important. Okay, we'll but talk about he, it. You happens. know, who knows? Yeah. But then like when all the women spoke to each other, they decided that number two was the more important pick. For Gian and Jumi, at least. 
that we don't get Jimin's perspective. Oh no, Jimin. Oh, is, Jimin, Jimin is number one. She says that in the car at one point earlier when they went. Oh, to the that's hall. right. Yeah. Right. Okay. It's just Jian and Jumi that say number two is more important. Um. Okay. So what is so for this whole game though? You have the option not to answer, and then you just drink instead. Yes. It's probably different for each person, but like, how do you interpret the willingness to answer the question versus drinking? Um. What's your like instinct to in, to interpret? What I mean is like. By drinking, does that mean the answer was more meaningful? Whatever the answer was to the question was more meaningful, and that's why they didn't want to say it. Or is by answering mean they want that information to be out there, or they're just like, it's not that important information to them, so they don't care giving it away? I think it depends on the question and the person who is answering the question. Well, a lot of these questions are just going to be, hey, who did you pick for yeah, this yeah, number? Yeah. So what in that, in that case specifically, like, I don't know. But I think in this case with... Demon, it's yeah she wants him to know that she picked him you know that's what I, that's what i would assume for this one yeah but i don't know that that's true for everybody who answers yeah okay so let's we'll we'll try to break that down as we go then yeah on each one all right then Jimin asked ji young is there someone you want to match with for the next date and she says i have someone and then she clarifies i think jumi makes her clar- clarify or something that she she means one person it's like not, exactly it's not, one person it's not yeah. like i have someone and like she has multiple someone's it's just one person and yeah. we know this is men you for sure they're not fooling us on this one right yeah okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. and i think like some of these questions are silly because they are an obvious yes answer like who wouldn't have a person who they want to match with on their next date but the exactly one is at least some useful information yes yeah yeah, you, you really softball somebody if you give them a yes or no question versus a answer with a person question. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. But there's like, there's some strategy where like, you might know like, uh, this person will probably drink if I ask them too directly. So I'll like, I want mm. some information out of them. So I'll give them the ability to make it vague. Right. All right. Who's next? So Ji Young asks Hu Shin who he wants to have a date with next, but he thinks she's going to ask. If he has someone he wants to have a date with next. And so before she really finishes, he answers, I have someone. Yeah. And then when he realizes his mistake, he takes a drink instead of answering. (laughs) Yeah, instantly takes a drink. I think that's silly. He should have just said who he wanted to have a date with. Is he So is he drinking because he doesn't want any of the girls to feel like he's chosen somebody? Or is he drinking because his feelings are really strong and he's like, doesn't want them out there in a group setting um that might be true i think whatever day he went on his coffee walk with with ji young she still made it pretty clear that she didn't think he was into her and was not maybe not reciprocating those feelings so he might feel awkward about saying that it's her to her yeah but you would think it would be a great time to clear everything up yeah like assuming like if it's possible that like oh he hasn't told her because he's not allowed like it's right. a thing on the show you can't just be like you're the one I'm talking about when I say these things. You mm-hmm. have to like strategically work around it in a little bit. But the show basically gives him the opportunity to just tell her straight up, "Yeah, you are the one I want to date next. And he doesn't take it. Yeah. That seems odd. It does seem odd. And then he texts Jimin. Yes. Okay. I'm super confused on Hushin. I'm, <laughs> I, I really am don't know. as well. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. And then uh, Hushin is going to ask Mingyu. Is it possible you might have a change of heart, referencing the fact that he didn't put his finger down yes. when when he said when, he picked when, someone? When basically. he said he was basically decided, he says, "I think it's possible," which is yes. just like an answer that I would give. Like, why would <laughs> unless unless the person? I don't know. I don't know what the right answer is here. <laughs> it, like, if he was really decided and knew what he was doing, he might want to just say like. No, but like the honest answer is, I think it's possible because, like, I mean, if you're just anything, just, if you're just realistic yeah, yeah. about it, it's like, yeah, mm-hmm. of course it's possible. Like, I find it hard to think that being realistic, I would have had a strong enough feeling to say that, oh yeah, I've definitely picked earlier. Even like just saying you've picked feels too strong for anybody at this point, you know? Like, because there's so yeah. much room to change. Yeah, it, and and it could just be like, yeah, he he is. He's telling the truth. It's I think it's possible that I could switch, but the way he interpreted G One's question was like, "Yeah, I'm ready to pick if I have to." But like, not everybody could have interpreted G One's mm. question earlier in the That's same true. way. 
Okay, so but in this moment though, like in this whole drinking thing, like who is the person he would pick? What's your official? What are you saying? What? What's your um, guess? first time through watching it, felt like that drive was a breakup drive. I thought it was gonna be Ji Young. But you thought this? You thought he's talking about Ji Young in this? In this? Whole... Well, actually, the moment he became very certain that he had picked someone, I was like, oh well, like it's probably not. Like he can't be that certain about her already. That's but how I feel too. I thought it was going in a direction with Ji Young. So given that he's so certain, and then the everything else of nonsense, it, it's probably still Jimin. Okay. I think it's Jimin. My wife thinks it's Ji Young, and like the show maybe hasn't built it up yet, but like maybe mm. some things have already happened that we haven't seen, I think is maybe yeah. what she's thinking. But no. Nah. <laughs> Jimin's got to really <laughs> draw a line for him to give up, I think. So I think he's talking about Jimin. Also in this scene, this I think he's like Mingyu has actually worn this attire a few times, Sarah. Oh, yeah, okay. But I've I've been hesitant to point out another reason that Mingyu is my doppelganger. <laughs> but okay, okay. This man's like literally wearing my sweatshirt. Like, <laughs> really? <laughs> you know, like the sweatshirt I wear all the time. That's like because I don't have like I don't have like a winter coat. I just have like a a pretty good sweatshirt. <laughs> I swear this man is wearing this. I honestly can't picture any clothes you own. I don't know. Okay. Well, <laughs> my wife and I know that I have this one sweatshirt. And I, like, paused the screen on Mingyu and was like, do you notice anything about this screenshot? And she was like, yeah, I was thinking that, you, that <laughs> like, he looks exactly like, like, this is, like, exactly what you would be wearing in this moment on the show. <laughs> Basically. Okay. okay. Well, weird. Yeah. If this If this man was vegan and didn't drink he would actually be my doppelganger yeah <laughs> like legit <laughs> yep yep we're running out of things to check if you have in common <laughs> yeah hold on they have a flashback here okay. we, we might have already talked about this actually oh yeah this is where they flash back and Ju- jumi this is before mingyu asks his question they flash mm-hmm. back and they show jumi telling mingyu that her and ji young didn't put much thought into number one and they thought number two was more important. Yes. They wanted to let us know that before Mingyu's about to ask this question. Yes. He turns to Ji Young and says, who did you text as number two? And she's like, I sent it to you. Oh, snap. Now, <laughs> you could definitely read into this as like, oh, he wants to know because he likes her. But also it's just like, well, I had extra information from Jumi, so I might as well try to like... <laughs> <laughs> Und- like I, I can know the turn full- that into I real know- information. I yeah. know Gian's full information if I get what her number two is. Like I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like he might wa- legitimately just want to want to know for all the guys who Gian's number Gian's number two is. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> At this point, we know Gian is on Mingyu hard, and Mingyu's yes. He might not have known fully known before, but he's got to be putting it together now, right? Yeah, he okay. should have. He should understand now. He understood before. I mean, he had to have at least on some that she was at least a little interested in. But knowing him. this number two thing is like very yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And I think in this moment he is open at least to the idea of Ji Young. You know, he's not done with his Jimin feelings, but I think he's open to maybe paying a little attention to her. I think he is open to it if he is rejected by Jimin, which he has not been. Yeah, yet. yeah. That's how I feel. But I do think he is getting closer to feeling rejected by her. You know, like the Ooh, I don't the see not it. getting the texts feels like he maybe feels a bit rejected by that. Yes, but I don't. I don't see how he leaves that the car conversation with Jimin and feel not more optimistic than he did previously. You know. I think his optimistic gets, optimism should have gone up since not getting a text. Mm. If that was me, I would have been more frustrated. Hmm. Okay. But I don't know. I am clearly not him. So, you know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I would say the text thing was definitely disappointing, but not full, not rejecting enough to move on. That's what, that's how I feel. Okay. But okay. Uh, all right. Then I we guess we skip some people here because Yisu is going to ask Mingyu now. Who is your number one? But not who was your number one. Who is your number one now? Currently number one. Including me. Including me. And (laughs) then Mingyu drinks. (laughs) Yes, he does. You know what he's doing, Sarah? He's creating that tension. You know, he didn't want to. (laughs) 
<laughs> he didn't want. You're right. He didn't want to show how comfortable he was saying G-Men out loud. So he's he's like, mm -hmm. mm, I'm going to create that tension <laughs> by true. drinking. Yep. All right. Or or it's like they were in the car and he <laughs> noticed that like she responded well to being jealous. Yep. So, so he's just trying to keep it up. Which is yeah, I mean, tension's not a great word. dynamic. <laughs> tension's another word for jealous, right? Basically, it's no, like you could have you could have sexual tension between people without it being about being jealous about somebody else. It could just be like, oh Are my you, gosh, this person is so new and exciting. You think they're talking about? I don't know what's going to happen next. When they're talking about tension, you think they're referring to sexual tension? Well, sexual tension, romantic tension. I don't oh. think they're talking about jealous tension. I I took it as like. Because later they're going to have this talks about like comfortable versus uncomfortable. And I, I associated mm -hmm. like, oh, tension means uncomfortable. Yeah. Like the, the, this is somebody new. I'm so excited. I don't know what's going to happen. I feel like sexual you know, tension isn't uncomfortable. There's an exciting vibe, but not a, you know, you don't know if it's going to go the way you think it's going to mm. go, but you're vibing it's under an umbrella of new okay. shiny feelings that go with meeting somebody new that, yeah, they're important at the beginning, but are not the thing that make for a lasting relationship necessarily. Yeah. So. We never get any talks about <laughs> sexual feelings on these shows, so I really have no well, idea. <laughs> when they say each other, people are like attractive or whatever, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same potato, potato. It's the same thing. You think it's the same thing? Okay. All right. I guess it's as close as anything they can, they are willing to say. Yeah, so. exactly. Like the cultural differences are not going to promote them saying things like oh the sexual tension in here is off the charts but like that doesn't mean they're not feeling it yeah i know they're feeling it i just i've never been able to like associate directly like oh when they say this this is what this is what that means i don't know <laughs> i've always associated it with those new shiny nervous vibes that come with like meeting a new person mm, okay. that you're like starting to feel romantic feelings about but you're still like worried about how exactly you're presenting yourself and you're not like fully just comfortable seeing them okay okay so the, these like instinctive attractions are kind yeah. of okay 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 i got it sorry i threw you off with my word choice <laughs> all right who's next galray asked jumi when you texted number one or number two did you pick different people for each or the same and she says different and i think like everybody Pick yeah, different, and this, we weren't this, sure if anybody knew they could yeah, pick this, the same person. This definitely even. implies they could have picked the same person. That's crazy. Or at least Gaure feels like he could have picked the same person. Yeah, like, they might have all interpreted it differently. But like, if this was like a tool that production was like giving them to use later, it feels like production would want them to put different people for one and two. Yeah, yeah. And to me, it's crazy that seven people did this activity. And had the op knew they had the option to put the same person as one and two, and did nobody mm -hmm. and nobody did it. That seems very unlikely to me. Or are they all like using it as an opportunity to like text more people? But they, you know? this information wasn't shared with anybody, right? So maybe they thought it might get shared. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if they actually sent a text or not, and I don't know if this is the translation. But like, I feel like they say. When you sent the text to number one, who was it? And it might just be when you sent the text to say who was number one. I'm not sure. Oh, that's again, see, that's what I thought it was. I thought it was just like when you texted production, you're number one and number two. It's just been so long mm. since they've actually given us real texts. I don't know when or not they're actually texting Yeah, people, that's true. You know? Did number one and number two get texts? So, like, if they had an opportunity so. to send a text to their number one and their number two, I think it's a viable strategy to be like, I'm just going to try to text hmm. more people. Hmm. I, I assume that's not what happened, but I guess that's possible. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. All right. And then G1 asked Jumi, what's your favorite place that you've been to while you've been here? And then Jumi decides to drink. But is this, is this question like basically, it's basically asking like, hey, what was the best date you went on? Right? Like, that's, yeah. Okay. And she didn't want to answer that question, probably because she hasn't gone on a date with Mingyu. Right? I thought it was like, if she took the question very literally and like the coolest place she went to on a date might have been one of the places she went to with Jiwon. But she doesn't want to say that. She doesn't want that implication of that being the best date necessarily yeah you know? i think this was a good decision to, to drink here like i i think the the way that answering this question might be interpreted could just be all over the place and yeah, yeah i think drinking was the correct move 
bit of a weird question from Jiwon. Maybe Jiwon <laughs> didn't want to ask yeah. Ji Young all his only ask Ji Young questions. <laughs> okay. Well, now it's Ji Young's turn, and everyone is hardcore avoiding eye contact. Like Jimin puts her hair over her face to try to be like, "I'm hiding. You can't see me. Don't ask." Why are they questions. scared? Why are they scared of Gia? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Or it might just be at this point, like everybody's like, "Please don't ask me any questions." You know? <laughs> okay. She asks Jimin, "If you have to choose tomorrow, is there someone you want to choose?" And she says, "Yes," without any hesitation. Yes, I do. Who do you think that is? <laughs> Because I don't know. Yeah, I mean, like, it, it doesn't really mean that much. Like, if I had to choose tomorrow, I would have to choose tomorrow. So I would choose somebody, right? Like, unless she's, unless she's like, giving her the option as if, like, hey, if you had to choose somebody or you could not choose somebody, would you choose somebody? Like, I, I, I don't know. I didn't really or know how to interpret like, this. Or just, like, I don't know. Like, would it be hard to pick somebody? Or do you have somebody in yeah, mind? Yeah, like, that's not how the translation of the question was, though. So. Yeah. I wish the question was, would it be hard to choose somebody tomorrow? Yeah. Or, like, would it be easy for you to choose if you had to choose tomorrow? That would be way more meaningful. I think the question. sentiment is, like, are you ready to choose? Like, if it ended now, would you be ready to choose? Yeah, I guess. But if I was asked this question, I would just be like, yeah, but it wouldn't mean anything to me. So, like, it, I, <laughs> I wouldn't feel like I lied or said anything meaningful. So, I don't know. I'm not looking too much into this question, but I, I, I just, I don't know who she, she would be. Who here. would she choose? Um, yeah. Probably Hushin. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Like, yeah. I, I, it does, if the show ended the day and you, she picked somebody, like, it wouldn't really matter. It's like, it's not going to be a real thing. It matters in terms of understanding where her head's at right now. Yeah. But that's just why it's not a meaningful question. It's like, she just said yes. But yeah, I, maybe she would pick Minkyu because, like, I mean, maybe things haven't progressed with Hushin enough. And if she had to. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm, I I I I don't know. I don't think it would particularly matter who she chose if they had to choose right now. I don't think okay. she's definitely in a confused state, at least, right? At least to some degree. She does not seem to be expressing that though. Like she just seems like she's having a good time, right? By by the way she answered this question, or just like throughout what we've seen. Generally, today. just mm -hmm. all the time. I don't. I mean, at the summit, she was like, "I like Jiwon, but he's ignoring me." But and then Mingyu says really nice things, and then Hushin's also whatever. Uh, she's thinking about it. Yeah, but I don't but know. She's... That feels like so long ago. I don't oh, know. Okay, I don't know. I don't know where she's at right now. I oh yeah, I definitely don't. I don't know what she would actually do if she had to pick today. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, Jimin asks Mingyu, "Who's your number two? And he says, "Ji Young doesn't drink this time." Yeah. Later, Mingyu is going to say, Can "We just let's just do this flashback now." Basically, yeah, it's the same conversation where Jumi was telling Mingyu about. Hey, Jumi and Ji Young and I, meaning Ji Young and Jumi, thought that the number two was like more meaningful. Right. I think it's like directly the same conversation. And mm -hmm. then Mingyu tells Jumi that the guys talked about it and they thought number one was more important. But then he says, but he doesn't necessarily think so. <laughs> but he's yeah. also like saying this to a person who just said they thought number two was more important. So I don't know how Mingyu yeah. actually feels about number one versus number two. Now, and also, like, maybe you don't like, do you want to say that you think the hot person pick is the important one? Like, it might be more important to you, but I don't know that you want people to know that the hot person pick is more yeah. important to I you. I mean, Jimin didn't struggle to say that. That's when true. Mingyu was in the car. And maybe the guys were more willing to say that to each other, but not. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Or Ming maybe Mingyu legitimately just like, I just answered honestly for both questions and I didn't think about <laughs> <laughs> which one i didn't think about which one was more important i was just answering the question <laughs> but okay so he he didn't want to say his number one but he was willing to say his number two though how do how do we interpret this also jimin <laughs> they show jimin saying i can't breathe after <laughs> yes he says this which it i don't know traumatic. i don't know if this happened right <laughs> after or I, I don't know I, I, I don't know the timing of this yeah it is unclear i think the difference between this and the number one pick is that uh, he'd have to make a decision when he would talk about the number one pick because it's not who he picked, it's who would you pick now. And that's too much stress for him, you know? Like, making a decision about that in this moment when everybody's looking at him, I don't think he's prepared to handle that. Oh, yeah, the context of that question was different. Mm, yeah. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. 
That's a good point. I was wondering if like maybe the number one was more important to him. So he drank for that one. And then maybe mm. he didn't care so much about saying his number two because it didn't it wasn't as like of a, a secret that he was trying to <laughs> keep. <laughs> I don't know. Or also this just creates more tension with G Men. Maybe that's what he's doing. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Oh, I like this angle where he's just actively <laughs> But, like, I don't understand anybody who doesn't think number two is significant. It's literally, like, who do you think you would be best in a relationship with? Like, in theory, is that not what we're here for? We're trying to, like, couple off and find a relationship. If I'm not being cynical about this dating show, that's what you're here for. If we put in the context of kind of what you were saying earlier, like, number one is, like, maybe more, like, sexual tension kind of attraction. And then number two is, like, wow, we would be a good team like kind of thing and like obviously you want you want like an overlap of both so it's not really fair to be like this person is all this kind of and i kind of attraction and this person's all this kind of attraction like it's ideally you would have both these things but yeah and 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 so in that kind of way like i think compatible in a relationship with includes the like attraction i would think oh yeah so you can interpret it that way too and that's why it like Ultimately, they could all be answering the question the same way, but like they interpret number two to be what, like, what be what you're saying, and then like, <laughs> I don't know, like, I don't know. It just seems like everyone should think number two is more important. And right now, we've had two people who have said that they are each other's number two. Wrap it up. We did it. Good job. Let's go home. We fi- we finished the show. You you made a couple. You uh, know? But you know, yeah, it's I I don't think it's like that because. It's it's all comes down to how you interpret the prompt and like yeah even if everybody did think number two was most important you're still just saying out of these three women <laughs> which <laughs> yeah, one is yeah. the most number two so yeah it doesn't have to ultimately mean anything that's true like at the time if he was having big feelings for Jimin maybe thought Jimin fit more in the number one bucket and then he just had to put a name for number two. Like now, number yeah. like the fact that he's revealing G on number two like might not even mean anything to him. That's true. So I don't know. Like this, this seems super spicy that they're revealing these things, but I don't but know. Literally, how, nothing means like, anything. If, if I was on the show, <laughs> how invested would I be, or how intensely serious would I take everybody's answers to these questions? Honestly, when I was watching this, like when they chose not to drink, was when I thought it was most interesting. When they chose not to drink. Oh, sorry. When they chose, chose when to. they chose to drink is what I thought it was most mm. interesting. Like, okay, this okay. is some information I don't want to get out. <laughs> okay. I like this angle that he's just uh, doing. Any- he's like super calculated, and everything he does is just to create tension with G-Men for the rest of the season. <laughs> okay, that's gross, and I hate it. But okay. <laughs> I mean, this not like <laughs> it feels manipulative and weird, and I don't <laughs> approve. I don't think that's what's happening. But if that turns out to be what's happening, gross. I don't get this whole, like, comfortable versus uncomfortable thing at all. But if that is a thing, then it's like, okay, well, this is what <laughs> this is what needs to be done, I guess, to really find out true feelings. Like, I can't be too nice and friendly and get comfortable. We have to... I don't know. I don't get it. I don't get it at all. Who wants to live like that? Oh. Well, okay. I don't know. Maybe they do. I don't know. Okay. All right. Who's next? So then... Mingyu asks Gyore who his number one is. And and, th- and this is where I'm like, at this point, let's just get out the whiteboard, have everybody fill out the chart, and we'll know who picked who. Okay. Oh, and then hold on. Some intense rock music starts playing when he asks this question. <laughs> and then they just go to like a montage of like Mingyu and Gyore having like a, it's like a bromance montage. Yeah. And it's like, oh, it's about to be destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> but then he says, Ji Young is the. Uh, no, he doesn't. His number one is. Wait, doesn't he? Oh, well, he like he looks says, at her and says you or something. Or this one says, over there. He says the translation. I hope this wasn't the actual translation, but it, the translation is this one. And then he points to G. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is kind of awkward. <laughs> Wait, well, we've established he's an awkward guy in general. That's true. But we weren't going to make fun of it because we're not mean. I mean... <laughs> yeah i mean this is his own doing here like he said this one <laughs> in a room with all the girls in it with them mm. looking intently at him he says this one and then points to Gia. yeah weird yeah. Vi- weird vibe 
to do that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. And then I, okay, I had this thought in my notes. This is more towards the, okay, maybe Mingyu is into Ji Young angle. Because is it possible that, like, Mingyu was just thinking Gao Rei was into Ji Young and he, he was doing, like, the older brother, he's my older brother, like, <laughs> waited out move. And that's why he was being awkward. Is that, is that possible? Wait, say that again. When is he being awkward? So we had this conversation earlier in the season where Jiwon and Mingyu were talking about how they're they're right, really they, curious. They were worried when, about his feelings because yeah. he's the older guy. They want to defer to him or whatever. And yeah. maybe Mingyu thought that Galray was into Ji Young, mm -hmm. and that's why he was weird with Ji Young because he's like, "I like you too," but weird with her when when she was trying to ask him to spend time with her. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. That's I. I'm just trying to like. If that's true, that's so dumb, and it I is, hate it. It is very yeah. It's definitely <laughs> dumb. But, like, I don't know if that's a thing. And then Mingyu's asking this question under the, like, he knows the guy said that, like, number one was more important to them. So now he's, right. like, officially asking Gyal Rei, like, hey, who's your number one? Mm -hmm. And now, I don't know. I can't tell if, like, this was actually a thing that was affecting him or is the show showing us all this in an attempt to make us think that this was a thing that was affecting him? Like, the, his relationship with Gyal Rei was interfering with the G. I don't know. I don't think. I don't think that's what was happening. No. I mean, I, I wouldn't think I that's what's happening. It. I don't think that's what was happening. But I feel like there's an element of the show is trying to say that a little bit. I don't know. I think that might be an awkward thing going forward, but I don't think it's responsible for the awkwardness of the past. Ooh. Okay. All right. Next, Hushin is going to ask Ji Yun, "Who do you feel the most comfortable with?" And she says, "Hushin Opa," which is what I thought she was going to say. And he is. So disappointed about this. But again, like, this is a bad thing? Apparently. Okay. Maybe someone could explain this to us, but, like, I feel like it's, like, some sort of, like, slang term that doesn't fully translate, so they just, like, use the words comfortable and uncomfortable, or, like... Maybe? <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me at all. Because it is important to be comfortable with the person <laughs> yeah. you're going to be in a relationship with. Like, the most comfortable with them. Like, it just... why isn't this... Okay. Like, if the word was, like friendly mm, yeah or like plutonic who are your besties with in the house plutonically yeah, like... friendly with like i don't know i wish there was like a better translation for to mean what we think it might mean i don't know if the like opa thing wasn't a thing like who is the most big brotherly to you in the house you know like something that like but the opa thing transcends hmm. actual relations so it, you can't use that hmm. but so yeah. Yeah, something that's just like that's a nice guy who I would never want to sleep with. Is <laughs> what yeah. I think he's trying to get at here. Yeah, so she says Hushin Opa, but like and then Hushin gives this kind of reacts in a way where he he's kind of like doesn't he say like you you know you could have just drank, right? Like something like that. <laughs> like she he's almost yeah. saying like, "Well, I wish you didn't answer the question now that you said <laughs> now that you said it, I'd wish you didn't answer." It. Yeah. Which, uh, I don't know, like... Don't ask questions you don't want the answers to. <laughs> this this question can't directly translate to, like, Hey, Ji Young, which guy do you like the least? Like, that that can't be the direct translation of it, right? Right. And, like, the way she answers is so, like, cheerful. It's not like she's like, oh, I have to tell this guy I don't like him at all. Right? She's yeah. just like, you're fun to spend time with. Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know how to deal with this comfortable versus uncomfortable thing. It's I'm assuming that this was a bad answer for Hushin, but I, yeah, he I seems don't, disappointed. I don't fully understand why. Next, Ji Young asks Ji Won, "Who do you want to see on your next date?" And he, maintaining eye contact, says, "Nuna, just dead yeah. straight in the eyes." And then Ji Young has like a huge, like embarrassed reaction to this, but like yeah. she seems kind of happy about it. And, like, I'm wondering, like, did she expect him to say that? Like, why? I don't know. Mm. It's a weird choice for him, for her to ask him this, right? At least from our perspective, we're like, we know, we know. <laughs> we know how Jiwon <laughs> feels. Maybe she doesn't, and she just, like, feels, maybe she's genuinely curious, like. Maybe she's like, nobody's asked him a question in a while. Duh, you. You know, I don't know. It's. Maybe she's just genuinely curious, like, hey, well, Jiwon's not going to want to go on a date with me anymore because I'm not that interested in him. Who's he going to date next? And then she says, sure. <laughs> and then, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's unclear. Bit of a weird choice for her to ask, try, ask Jiwon this, though. But uh, Jiwon didn't hesitate. 
not at all. This guy, this is like definitely a statement of like, I feel because I feel like other people would drink to this question. Like, is it, did anybody else answer the who you want to date next question? I think they either said yes, like mm. I have somebody or they drank. Yeah, nobody said who specifically. Right? Yeah. yeah. So G-, G wants the only one that just set, flat out says who he wants, which is like, mm-hmm. I guess if it's a strategy, it's a strategy, but it's like kind of not that good. Because like if you're every other girl in the house at this point should just be like, wow, he said that out loud. Like, there's no way he's interested in anybody else. But but you want which you know is fine if he's not interested in anybody else you know like yeah but like he still doesn't seem to know if she's in, even interested in younger guys and like is he just prepared to not date anybody the rest of the show if she well, like, isn't into younger guys i don't know in that date we had of that with them last episode like didn't she already shut this all down she was like i normally like guys like you but here are the reasons why you're not it like that's what i she was pretty clear (laughs) maybe i don't know maybe she wasn't clear enough i'm not sure i think he's just taking this attitude of like well there's no one else i want to date so i'm just gonna keep at it and may she'll turn around at some point or not you know like yeah it's it's weird to me it's just weird to me because it's like why not see what's going on with jimin why not see what's (laughs) going on with yisu like i don't know i guess he he just Hey, you were born a second younger than me, you know? I'm out. (laughs) I think with Jimin, like, the fact that she's still in school and, like, kind of young could be off-putting for him. You know, like, he's at this stage of life where he's, like, busy and doing all the career shit. And he just wants to be with someone who has all their shit settled and knows what they're doing, maybe. Like, that might be it. And that's why he's just not giving her the time of day. Yeah. But he should at least try dating the new girl. (laughs) <laughs> like there's no reason not to date the new girl yeah i mean she's pretty young too i don't know but she's at least out of school like there's there's i don't know i think there might be a mental barrier there of just like at least she's done with school like she's an adult in that sense you know yeah i'm not a fan of g1 on the show but like i'm not trying to like shame him for however he feels about the situation but mm-hmm. like i mean like i get it like Gian seems super cool <laughs> you know maybe he's yeah, yeah, yeah maybe he's having like crazy feelings but I just don't see it. I just don't see it happening. <laughs> yeah. Not interested in him as a character on the show anymore. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Jiwon says to Ji Young, do you like younger men? And then Ji Young drinks. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like and... everybody also gets all hot and bothered about either the question or just the way he said it. They're all they just were like, like flustered. Yeah. Cause they're taking it as like, hey, do you like me? Yeah. But like yeah. he's using, he's like, you know, finding a hack in the show by saying younger men is like kind of how everybody turns mm-hmm. it. Yeah. People are like, I think Yahweh is like, hold on a second. I can't <laughs> like, what does he say? <laughs> He's like, they're all just like, Oh, I can't oh, don't answer yet. I, I have, to, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't processed what was just said yet. <laughs> Do you want to hear my translation of the G on drinking here? Uh huh. He, he asks her, Do you like younger men? And she drinks, which means yes, but not you. <laughs> <laughs> that's what, uh, yeah that's what i think it means <laughs> i thought it meant i thought i already told you this shit i don't want to go over this again yeah because like if the answer was no you would just say no but if that's a lie and you don't want to lead him on you just have to drink <laughs> but because if you say yes he's gonna take it the wrong way <laughs> you know yeah, so, yeah 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 so yeah i I'm, i don't mind younger men but like i not not you <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm not sure how he interpreted that drinking though yeah i don't think he's gonna stop he had an unwavering face of confidence so i i couldn't <laughs> read <laughs> one way or the other yeah also hard to tell how drunk everybody is at this stage of also the, true yeah. yeah all right who's next well i have two more left i think mingyu asked hushin if you get only one date who are you gonna choose and he says ji young so at this point all of the men have expressed interest in her and it is like yeah. if you're any of the other women on the show you you're just like can i go home now we done like do i do i need to be here for this <laughs> that, like... that, that's not totally true but <laughs> <laughs> all right so wait what was what was hushin what did he drink to last time who he hoped to go on a date with next and he drank for that one i think it just got to the point where he's like oh everybody is saying that they want her yeah. i better say something now or else it's never happening yeah so he literally just decided to answer this time and didn't last time yeah mm-hmm. hmm. 
Yeah, and I think it has everything to do with the fact that all the other guys have now said her for one thing or another. And so he's like, well, got to say it now. And then why does he text Jimin? <laughs> we still don't know. I don't know. I have no evidence to support him why he texted Jimin. <laughs> like everything in this episode points to Ji Young and then he texts Jimin. It doesn't. What is the other half of the show that they've all edited out? I don't. I don't know what's going on. I don't on. know. Or maybe they haven't. And it's just, he's just, I don't know. Hushin, I'm probably, I might be more confused about Hushin than I am G-Man at this point, honestly. <laughs> I'm confused about everyone except for ji Young And ji Wan. And Jumi. You're, you're confused about ji Wan at this point. Oh, well, yeah. I'm just confused about why he thought it'd be a good idea to come on this show. He has no time. But yeah. anyway. Okay. All right. Well, ji Young asks one last question to Mingyu. Who do you find most difficult to be around? He says you, meaning ji Young, of course. Is this supposed is to this be a good thing? A good thing. Yeah, exactly. I think it <laughs> is, but... Given that no one wants to be comfortable with anyone, this is good? I feel like she asks it like, hey, who do you have sexual tension with? I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know. But I don't know if like Mingyu is answering the question like that. He might just be like, you ask me questions I don't want to answer. That makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, so it's yeah. difficult to be around you. Yeah, like, but like literally, literally, he looks like he's been most uncomfortable around Chi Young. Like, <laughs> but so like, I don't not know in a it, good, sexy way. I don't know if it means like, anything. Bad way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like I would have said Jumi. <laughs> but mm. it doesn't mean I had feelings for Jumi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know. I, I do not understand. Yeah. yeah. I need somebody to like break down like these are the words they're using and like this is what it actually means. Like this word really yeah. means when properly translated in like a longer way. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Someone help us, please. <laughs> okay. And then the men. They all they all divide for the night. And then the men uh hold a meeting in their bedroom. <laughs> all the men. And Gao Rei is bothered that Ji Young is so popular. I didn't yes. realize all of you liked her. God, God. <laughs> I thought I had dibs. What are you guys doing? <laughs> I am your senior. <laughs> Back off. He did not. It was not that intense. I'm just. Except he's just like I'm surprised. Yeah, he's, he's legitimately surprised. Like he thought like he understands that she's like, you know, super cool and attractive. And why wouldn't everybody be into her? But he didn't realize like, oh everybody like, literally like, everyone <laughs> it's fair for him to come away from that game being like wow like everybody jiang is like everybody's number one where i don't think that's actually the necessarily the correct interpretation for everybody's answer or right it's like definitely for jiwan maybe maybe probably for hushin and mm -hmm. just uh maybe but i think probably not for mingyu and then mingyu makes the point to point out like oh did everybody chose her for number one right yeah, and then they do that flashback again to him and Jumi talking about it. And I thought for sure he was going to be like, well, I picked her for number two and that's more meaningful dibs. But he, he didn't because that's actually say not that. Mingyu. Yeah, yeah he, he didn't say that. He doesn't, not, he doesn't say know, anything about it. We don't know which was more important for Mingyu, which I think we're never going to find out because that's like the big choice at the end of the season, right? <laughs> but he doesn't say to the guys, like, I picked Ji Young as number two, right? Like, he kind of makes it seem like he also picked ji for number one. Well, no, like, in the oh, wait, oh, he, he already specifically said it. got asked number Okay, two, yeah, he yeah. already did say it, yeah. But I guess he could be making it seem like he picked ji for number one and number two. Because, like, he didn't drink for mm. number one. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the guys think about how Mingyu handled that. Because they, I think also somebody has the sentiment that, like, huh, like, I wonder how... Ji Young was your number two, but then also became the most difficult to be around. <laughs> like they're thinking, like, yeah. oh, difficult to be around should be number one. And then they, yeah, they, they literally might think that he put Ji Young for number one and number two after kind of mm. how he acted. I think Mingyu's having a little fun here. Watch, like, I don't know, the way Mingyu was posturing, like, he was like having fun watching them all, like, <laughs> Oh, really? Kind of like fight over G a little I bit. I don't know. Felt like they all looked kind of shook by this whole situation. You think he looked shook? You know? Okay, maybe I was just a maybe, little bit. Like, I might be. Like, I might be projecting my own prediction on the situation. <laughs> <laughs> I think had this night not happened, maybe his text would have been different. You know, everybody picking her, I think, overwhelmed him, and that's why he he switched. Oh, you think that's why? Yeah. Maybe we didn't say that about 
Jimin when she switched to Hushin and not Mingyu. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of similar. Like, could she, like, she could have also been overwhelmed knowing that all the women were into her, into Mingyu. Except she's never actually picked Mingyu, so. But is, but Mingyu only ever picked Jian on the day they dated, right? He did pick her for his number two. Whereas Jimin didn't even put Mingyu in his one or two. In her one or two slot, like oh, he's I see. never been on the board. Yeah, I mean the board's bigger than two slots, but yeah, I got you. I understand what you're saying. Okay, <laughs> and just okay. like this entire episode, I feel was engineered to make us think he was gonna pick Ji Young, right? Like they're pointing us in this direction. They're showing yeah. them resolving their conflict, being cute together. He's in this car ride with Jimin. Will says like, I think we should at least talk to other people. Like it seems like it's moving in that direction. Is that so what the host guessed? That's all a lie. Yeah, they guess. They guess that. Um, oh, actually, I didn't write down what they guess. I wrote down what I guess, which was literally every man picks Ji Young because they kind of just did, but that's not what happened. And all the women except for Jumi pick Mingyu is what I thought. And I thought she picked Yorei, but I don't remember what the host picked. Oh, okay. If anybody predicted that Mingyu was going to pick Yisu for like this that, text, that. like. I think one or two of the hosts tried to float that because of the driving backwards scene or something. <laughs> but okay. they were overruled. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. So they have to text each other now. I have texts and quotes because there's texting produ- production. Yes. I don't know what the prompt is for what they're texting to production. We, right. don't, we don't get to know that. Um, so, yeah, I have. What does this even mean? <laughs> Excellent question. I, I finally, I just skipped the end of the segment, I, the end of the show segment. I don't watch it. It, <laughs> it felt really good not to watch it. I felt better. Okay, okay. Maybe <laughs> my head doesn't hurt okay. as much now not having watched it. Okay, good, 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 good for you. Yeah, I'm not invested. <laughs> I'm not mm-hmm. invested in these love lines that they want to talk about at the end of the show. So you're down to like, these texts are meaningless is where you're at with it. Almost, almost. I'm okay. willing to look at the results and think about it a little bit. But if there's just, like, shit that I can't make any sense of, I'm just like, well, I can't trust Hushin's text the rest of the season. They mean nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Until they tell us why he's been texting Jimin, I don't understand it. Yeah, 100%. And then I'm so confused. Mingyu, I, you could just explain Mingyu's as, like, if the prompt was just, like, who made you feel whatever the most in the last X amount of days. Like, mm-hmm. he went on a date with Yisu. We're assuming this is Friday. Like he went on a, a a date with Yisu 24 hours ago. Yeah, yeah. Right. So he might feel he's being honest with answering the question by saying Yisu, but like it doesn't. It's not an indication of who he would pick if it was the end of the show. Yeah. yeah. the The prompt might even be like, "Who do you want to go on a date with next?" No, because who nah, should wouldn't, wouldn't pick Jimin, right? Like that doesn't make any sense. If the if the prompt is this, who you want to go on a date with next, and he put Yisu and not Ji Young. Or Jimin, that's like pretty significant, right? Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? But we don't know what the prompt is. It's so confusing. Yeah. And I don't understand his pick of Yisu at all. Yeah. These things, even before this this not being real text and we don't know the prompt, is like, mm-hmm. it's still like, it's just a snapshot of a specific moment in time that might be out of sync with what we just watched also. So like, <laughs> that's why I'm like, even okay. the more I think about it, the more I'm like, eh, these things like... I'm not that invested in these. Okay. These okay. Because is this, yeah, is sh- what what should the prompt be, Sarah? Should it be, who would you pick if the show ended today? I, I I don't think that's a good prompt. I don't think that would be. Who are you most interested in right now? Yeah. Even that's almost like the same sentiment, though. Mm. I think it's kind of like hearts, uh, kind of like transit love, where it's, the question is always like, who made your heart flutter the most today? Is mm. kind of like the, yeah, this, what we get from that. And like, it's, I don't think these results make sense with that prompt either, though. Yeah, it wouldn't necessarily be today, but it might be, like, in the last... Yeah, I don't know. We're not seeing some shit. We have to not be seeing something if, like, Hushin's yeah. texting g Yeah, that entire relationship that is developing off-screen somewhere, we're not seeing. Yeah. Also, do you, do you think... I wrote down, do you think there's any chance the participants get to find out that they got picked, but, like, they just don't get, like a, a, like, a, a message? Do you find out who picked you or just somebody you got picked two times? But then what information like that gives you no information that yeah. like you at least need the text to be like maybe they'll say something significant. I think they're getting nothing. 
Yeah, I, I think they're also getting nothing. Yeah. Which should mean that you get the purest form of these like texts, right? It should be what they actually feel, not like they're trying to manage other people's feelings or whatever. Yeah, it should be what they actually feel based on whatever the prompt was that we don't know what it is. So it's like, yeah, it's it's it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, do you want to run through them for completeness sake? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Gyore and G1 picked Jiyoung. Hushin picked Jimin. Mingyu picked Yisu. Isu picked Mingyu, Jumi picked Gyore, Ji Young picked Mingyu, Jimin picked Hushin. Yeah. So we have like Jimin and Hushin are picking each other, Mingyu and Yisu are picking each other. And that's it. That's it, right? Okay. Yep. But like those two, I'm not, like, I don't think that's a thing <laughs> necessarily that's like going to happen. I mean, this is the second time that Hushin and Jimin have picked each other. Yeah. I don't know. The show has to show, show me why they're picking each other or I'm not, I'm not <laughs> yeah. invested in it, you know? It's very confusing. Okay, well. That's it for super, this episode, I guess. Super great episode. Yeah, this, that was good. <laughs> it was spicy. I'm so confused, but it was a good time. All right, we're back, and we're talking about episode eight now, Sarah. Let's Ooh, go. <laughs> dates on dates on dates. Yeah, it's Let's Go on Some Dates weekend. <laughs> Isn't the second weekend and then the second dates or is this like the third weekend i think this is technically the third weekend but yeah it is only the second official date and it's like dang we've had a lot of not official dates in this okay, show yeah <laughs> okay because like the first official i guess they didn't count them but like was when they just like paired up to get like supplies yeah mm -hmm. that, that was organized by the show okay but <laughs> that wasn't official. still not okay. official dates just official yeah. chores i wrote uh like Unfortunately, I wish, like, they didn't wait to express their feelings to each other until official dates. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, I, mm -hmm. I feel like some of these dates are kind of, like, wasted opportunities, potentially. Oh, 100%. Like, yes. I don't know. It, it, there is, like, some meaningfulness to be like, okay, this is the person I like, and I want them to know that I'm choosing them for an official date so that they can, like, tell how I feel about them. Mm -hmm. But then the date... Like, the date just turns into, like, you expressing your feelings, kind of knowing that they might not reciprocate. And then, at least as a viewer, I feel like it might have been more fun just to watch two people that, like, are actually interested in each other. <laughs> just, like, like, flirt and stuff. But also, like, even if, they, like, you have the same pairings, just, like, just go on a date and enjoy a date. You don't have to make it, like, I am telling you all of my feelings now, and this is the whole date. Like, just, like, get to know each other and shit. And then at the end, you can be like, I really like you. Like, that's all, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's a little bit of editing. Like, the edit is, like, showing us the, the main part of the date that's important. Yeah. And I don't, I don't blame these people at this point in the show. Like, if, if you feel like you need to say what you need to say, like, yeah, you got to say it. You got to say it now. <laughs> I do yeah. think it's like, yeah. you better to say it earlier than later in a lot of cases on these shows. Which is why good texts are important. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very uh, don't want to be identified in text this season. Weird. We've talked about it before, but like they're really articulating that they're doing it intentionally. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I do not want to be identified by my text. And I don't know if that's them being scared of like breaking the rules or if everybody's just that dang shy. Yeah. Yeah, that is hard. It's hard to tell. Okay, so the, the women are picking the dates here, right? Yes. They just get to invite whoever they want and they get to go wherever they want within reason do you want to do a little bit of like hindsight maybe or maybe you can even say like who you wanted to see the girls pick but I, mine's a little um, bit of hindsight like who i wish they would have picked mm. well i think like i kind of expected we were gonna get everybody picks mingyu except for jimin except for jimin yeah okay. yeah yeah <laughs> um i did want jimin to pick g1 because i feel like she needs to get this out of her system so she can move on and I kind of wanted Ji Young to pick who should because th that seems like a cute avenue. I'm into that. Mm, okay. Yeah, you're you really all about that. I I've started editing episode seven that uh -huh. we recorded earlier, and uh, yeah. yeah, you were. I didn't really recall how much you liked that matchup. <laughs> it just I don't know. It seemed like he was really into her, and he's kind of funny, and they have a really good time together. And I don't know. And Mingyu can't figure out what the fuck he's doing, so time to move on. Hmm, okay, that seems hasty yeah, that's... for me, but <laughs> yeah, they only get four weeks. So it's, you know, I really feel like Ji Young has a like 
fairly significantly dated everybody in the house and has made their choice. Like, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I kind of wish like Jumi had gone another way with Gyalre, just because I feel like maybe he's more swayable. Mm, okay. Although, like, may- maybe Gyalre was never really serious about her either. Like, I-, I don't know. Even though she made him cry. Yeah, I mean, Jumi just makes- <laughs> is able to make people cry somehow. Yeah, yeah, she's got that skill. Yeah, I, I just felt like. Jumi kind of went on this date knowing that it was just like a last desperate attempt, and like maybe mm-hmm. it would maybe it would have been like cuter to see Jumi and Galray together or as just like a viewer. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. Do you think Jumi is drawing dead at this point? Like, what it, what can Jumi do now? Uh, the best we can get is that Ji Young rejects Galray enough that he goes, "Okay, Jumi was fun too." <laughs> Like, that's the best chance we got here, I think. I guess that's possible. Or yeah. a wild Hushin appears out of nowhere, and somehow that works out. I, I, but I don't see that happening either. They have a... Jumi and Hushin have a moment in the show where, like, oh, like, they really seem comfortable with each other in the, mm-hmm. like, non-romantic sense. <laughs> but... Yeah, yeah. They, they, they do a lot of showing the being comfortable in the bad way. <laughs> yeah. At <laughs> least know? Jumi is, like, really comfortable with Hushin. I don't know if it was as much the other way yeah. around, but... I think he's just like, damn it, why do all these women feel they can confide in me about other men? How am I supposed to date anyone? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I kind of just wish Yisu had dated Mingyu again, just to, uh, to see more of them. <laughs> just because I feel like, I mean, Yisu's in a terrible spot where yeah, absolutely she doesn't have many options. And I, I feel like at that point, you just have to go all in on whoever you like the most and just hope it works out. And you don't really have time to go back and forth. Yeah, yeah. And then I I guess we needed to see Jimin and Jiwon. I just yeah. <laughs> wasn't very entertained by that. <laughs> I'm not really entertained by the Jiwon dates in general. <laughs> I would have wanted to see Jimin and Hushin, actually, I think, more. Yeah, show us some of the reason why these people keep texting yeah, about each other. Yeah, like, what's going on? <laughs> okay, all right. Well, let's get into it. <laughs> okay. All right. So... I believe we start and it's like still the Friday night, the same yeah, night it's from like last episode. After they were playing their drinking game and all the girls are in their room talking together. Yeah, Jian and Jumi express that like they think Hushin is easy to talk to because he's cute. <laughs> That's why they are most comfortable <laughs> with him. This is the analysis I, I, we got. I, I guess. Very, I, I need to know if there's a better translation for this word they're using if it really is comfy or not because i don't know it it feels like and it's playing out this way where when they say comfy they mean like he's a friend person yes like no longer romantic feelings but the idea of you only want to be like it doesn't make sense to me (laughs) like but a guy can be cute and still dateable right like yeah yeah like like cute's not negative (laughs) okay hmm all right maybe it's because he when he first came into the house like his look is that of someone you'd be intimidated by and a bunch of them were but then when they got to know him he was soft and squishy and cute and so that like Mm. dichotomy there has made them go oh no he's a safe boy we can just talk to him like you know it's fine Hmm. okay (laughs) all right and then uh do i'm kind of confused what happens here like do the girls initiate one-on-ones again and then we don't really see much of them we just hear about a couple of things that happen yeah i don't know that they make it even as formal as that i think people are just like that was an intense game we need to talk afterwards and like pull people away to talk but yeah we only see it in bits and pieces and flashbacks yeah so and they only mention jumi is going to talk to gal ray Mm -hmm. same night friday night and then ji young is going to talk to mingyu the same night friday night but Mm -hmm. ji young and mingyu are like talking in mingyu's room and it seems weird to me that like gal ray wouldn't be going to bed as if like oh well he's talking to jumi okay yeah so it might there be like it might be the two of those women conspired together to be like i want to talk to this one will you talk to that one so that way we can and they are roommates get okay. them out of the room <laughs> that could be what it was okay maybe the the other four people weren't doing one on one. all right and then they get a text but it's just the women right yes and the text is, the women will go on a f- an official date this weekend. Please text an invitation to the man you want. Yay, they get to choose. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> now, this is different than um, Heart Signal 2. 
Mm-hmm. In Heart Signal 2, the women actually had to like go to the guy and ask him out, which I I kind of wish we got to see that. Oh yeah, yeah. Whereas like they're just texting production and then production's like telling the guys like, hey, go hang out on this corner somewhere, and then a girl's gonna show up and you're gonna have a date. <laughs> like that's Yeah, yeah. So the the guys have no idea what's going on this weekend. Like as far as they know, like yeah. they they're off for the weekend, except for whatever production is like telling them mm-hmm. to show up at like they're, they're yep. not staying at the house yeah okay well we got four dates in this episode no all right date number one g-min is walking and <laughs> she chose g1 surprise said no one i think this date <laughs> i think one of these dates is going to be on saturday and the rest are going to be on sunday i believe this one's a sunday date even though we are seeing it first mm. just based on the yeah, timing, yeah. timings of how people arrive yes back at the house sunday night I wrote down here that I feel like Jiwon was looking a lot like Yao Rei when he was waiting for Jimin to arrive. <laughs> and then I was okay. like, maybe I've never seen him in the sunlight before. Like, <laughs> he's just like never on the show. I don't think I've seen him. There you go. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> Have we seen him outside in the sun? I don't think so. He's only had nighttime dates. Yeah, because I was like, there's no way Jimin picked Yao Rei. Like, that can't be. That Yao would Rei. be the <laughs> weirdest, the weirdest combo. And we get a little bit of flashback here of that more of that conversation that Jimin was having with Jumi in the playroom, where Jumi's like encouraging her to like express her feelings clearly to Jiwon. Yes. So that yes. like she can know for sure. So they're giving like Jumi a little bit of credit here for getting Jimin to follow through with her feelings about Jiwon, even though yeah, yeah. it hasn't gone anywhere at all. Yeah. <laughs> she she says, rip the band-aid off. Yep. I guess that's solid advice. Yeah. Although I do think she meant earlier than now. Yeah. You like, know? how long, how long ago was this conversation? <laughs> I think we've been flashing backs to it for a while now. But this is literally her first chance to do it on an official date, which is probably what she was waiting for. Yeah. Which is silly. Although yeah. she does say during this that she's like, had been telling herself, oh, yeah, tomorrow I'm going to tell him. And then he'd just be at work and was never around. So maybe if he was around more, she would have gotten to yeah. it earlier. I feel like there had to have been some. I mean, like, Jiwon has gone on dates, but I guess he initiated them, yeah. maybe, like with Ji Young. So if she was really bold, I think she could have pulled it off. But yeah, yeah. she was, yeah. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is Jiwon disappointed when he sees Jimin? Um, probably, but he, he has a face that's good at hiding it, you know? I, I think he tries to play it cool, but I, I don't think he was expecting her. You don't think he was expecting her? You, you think he didn't know at all about. How she felt about him? I think he was optimistic that it was Ji Young. <laughs> I, I, oh I yeah, yeah, that's, that's fair. I think if you had to, if he had to guess who it was, he would have gone with Ji Young. Just overconfidence about that. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> um, okay, we're gonna start at a brunch cafe. Yeah, and you said this a bunch of times before, where like we've seen Jimin on dates with Bingyu and Jimin on a date with Hushin, and they seemed very different. Like. Mm-hmm. She's very big and bubbly and open with Mingyu, but with Hushin, she was like very shy and whatever. And we were trying to figure out which is the authentic Jimin when she's with someone she likes. And it's the shy one because she is so like really shy at the beginning of this date. Yeah. Like, so I, I think that just that is enough evidence now that I'm tripling down on my she does not really have any feelings about Mingyu that are serious oh. at all. Do you want to lock in she's not picking Mingyu in the end? Um, are you that? Are you bold enough to go there? You know, I don't even I mean, know that's that, might, that's not that bold, but <laughs> I, she like she might pick him just to like win the show, right? To like leave with someone, mm, maybe. But I don't, I don't know. Give me a couple more episodes, and then maybe I'll be that <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm not giving up. <laughs> okay, okay. The difference here, though, is like knowing what Jimin has like come to this date planning to say. Like, Mm -hmm. literally anybody would be nervous. Like, there's a real reason for her to be acting super nervous on this date, because she's like, like, this is my time, I have to say something. Whereas with Hushin, she was kind of more reserved, but there wasn't really any pressure on that date, other than it was, like, an official one. And yet, she still is texting him rather than Mingyu. Like, so I think the the, the shy attitude is telling, at least Hmm. when you compare Hushin and Mingyu. Okay. Well, with Jimin and 
and you haven't even gone on an official date yet, so who yeah, knows but how they've she gone on like <laughs> seventy normal dates. So well, that, like that, whatever. That's what I would think, but I don't know. Maybe Jimin <laughs> would be really different on an official date with okay, me. Okay. <laughs> sure, you you can live in that fantasy for now. <laughs> I, I would not believe that except for how much they talk about the difference between official dates <laughs> and <laughs> quote unquote just hanging out. Okay, okay. Yeah, Jimin even says like my heart is pounding. Like she's she's not even she's just not even hiding that she's nervous at all. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's, it starts out like a lot of just like basic awkward first date situation stuff. Mm-hmm. I feel like like ordering yeah. food and who's gonna pay and blah 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 blah. But I actually wrote in my notes like I think she's way different here than even with Hushin, though like it's it's a different level of nervousness yeah because this is the the guy she actually actually likes you know yeah I, I i would be super nervous if i was like like just determined to about to say a bunch of emotional yeah things. that is fair yeah. yeah yeah she even like somehow she like flings some food like across the room by accident <laughs> <laughs> like she does like a like a spoon catapult or something like uh-huh. that. yeah, yeah that yeah. was pretty funny <laughs> and her reaction is like so adorable it's like even though she is super nervous she still is like ridiculously charming because she's just a charming person uh jimin says i wanted to talk a lot with you today so i chose a place where we can talk a lot where was she talking about there's like a weird part on this date where like they go for a drive as if like they were going to a second location and then they never go to that second location Unless the drive, yeah, was the I think the drive was the second location. But I feel like it wasn't, was like maybe like, if we keep driving, we'll get to Jeju Island. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I feel like she put the thing in the GPS, and then G1 was like, "Oh, I've been there a million times." And then they were like, "Let's just go driving around instead." <laughs> like she thought, yeah, because he used I to like, they, live there or something. I don't they, know. They drove to his old school or something, and then like did yeah. like a. A little tour drive by of that I don't or they know. just edited out the second location entirely <laughs> maybe but i don't know where specifically she thought like oh this would be a great place to talk i mean they do talk through the whole like she talks about her feelings through the entirety of the date basically so like it, it works out i just really thought that wherever she wanted to talk was the like the second location yeah so i, I don't know what happened G1 claims he knew it was going to be her. And then they show this flashback where he gets... Okay, this is super confusing. Mm-hmm. He, it says he gets a text last night. Maybe this is mistranslated because this doesn't add up to me. Okay. It said he got a text last night. And then he's reading what the text message was. Mm-hmm. Which says, I definitely want to talk to you this time. Yes. Which somehow he claims when he read that, he knew it was Jeevan. Which yeah, I don't know how. But also, aren't we at the point in the show where we're not receiving texts? Am I am I wrong about something here? You are not wrong, but this text that the women got did say send a text to invite your the dude you want to. Oh, so you think so, they got like a, a a text to go with? I thought they were just texting production and name. No, I think they're texting like an invitation to the guy. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. If the the, the guys know the text is a like an invitation to a date. Well, the guys just might have gotten a text and then later production went, yeah, that's you're going on a date hmm. <laughs> or okay. something. Maybe, maybe that does make sense. Like it, it, it wouldn't have made sense if he got a text that said, I definitely want to talk to you this time. And then it was G1 or uh, sorry, G Young. So maybe he did know. Okay. Okay. I don't know. Something screwy with, <laughs> <laughs> are they getting texts? Are they not getting texts? I don't know. G- Jimin believes him though, so I don't know who might who might did question <laughs> what, what's legitimate here. Okay, yeah. Jimin admits that she was the one always texting him. Yes, I I think Jiwon didn't really know that, but he tries to pretend like like oh I thought sometimes I thought it was you. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, but like I guess they just I just don't know what he's done on this show honestly because he's never around. So it's like either he was just being really hopeful that it was Ji Young the whole time, or I don't know, none of his, like, like he had no significant interactions with Jimin at all for him to think that she was texting him. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I, I wish we had something to base how he feels about Jimin in general. Like, he's only gotten texts from her, and it seems like maybe he should have known that, but yeah, maybe it was just pure optimism where he was like, oh, it must be Ji Young. Like, I'm, I'm so amazing. Of course, Ji Young's texting me. <laughs> like, yeah. he's only getting one text ever. Right? Maybe like Jumi texted him after their date 
and that was about it. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty much it. Yeah. And, like, by now, it's like she kind of spews out all of her feelings with the expectation that he does not return them because by now he's already locked in with Ji Young. Yeah. And so it's like, what is point of date? I don't know. <laughs> if well, it's, it's like, it's he's G-Man still gonna, if he's, I don't know. Like, yeah, yeah, I get it. But, like, like, what you were saying earlier, like, people should have been talking about feelings before we got to this point. Yeah. The only thing I think is fair is just the idea that, like, okay, I really want to show somebody I'm into them. I'm going to wait until I use an official date on them, and then they'll, like, really know. If my if my words can't properly express, like, using an official date must express how I feel, right? I guess. I guess. And if you're really into somebody over other people, or, like, you really would regret not doing everything you could, then, yeah, I guess I guess that makes sense. Well, but that's the thing. Day. If you've gotten to this point and you haven't, they, they have no indication of how you feel, you haven't done everything you could. If in the moment where you have to choose a date, you feel you feel like you'll regret not choosing them, then yeah. choose them. It's, and it's okay, I guess. But it just generally, I feel like this date is kind of a bummer because, like, we all expect, and, like, the expectation within the date seems to be that, like, He's not going to turn around and like her after this, right? Like, he's already, he's focused in on Ji Young. And, like, maybe if they had had time to interact before this, he would have not had the same tunnel vision. And maybe they could just be having a fun date now instead of, here are all my feelings. Let's drive around in your car. I don't know. Yeah. I, I agree with that. I, if this was like the first Korean reality dating show that I've watched, I'd be like, oh, there's two weeks left. Like, she's planting a seed. Maybe he'll realize. Ji Young's not into him, and then who mm-hmm. knows? But I feel like that never happens on these shows. For the <laughs> never <most part>. happens. <laughs> so like people just kind of they get to the point where they like somebody the most, and then and then that's they it. just go for it, and that's 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 fine if that's what you, you really to gotta it, but... nail that first impression. Yeah. Otherwise, oof. yeah. One of the texts he references is like, "Why aren't you coming home?" Was the text he got, and somehow he says he knew that was Jimin, which is like any of the girls could have texted that, right? Well, maybe it's like, maybe it's a little more playful than you would expect from Jumi or Ji Young, you know? There's got to be some like hidden, like something I'm not putting together with what they've maybe said yeah, to probably, each other. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but then Jimin says she should have tried harder to hide her identity. <laughs> it's like, no, the opposite. The opposite is what you should do. <laughs> yeah, she's just, like embarrassed. I guess. The only time I was like, ever like, I don't know if I'd want to identify myself was for the first impression text. Yeah, that's fair. That's like a weird text. I don't know if I want to communicate heavy feelings. <laughs> you're you're literally quickly. texting someone like, you're, you're the hottest, I guess. Like, yeah. that's an awkward thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jimin admits that she was scared to ask him out on a date today because he's been so focused on Ji Young during the truth game, specifically. Mm-hmm. That's yep. fair. That's fair. Very fair. <laughs> Ooh, she tells him that her ideal type has always been his type, basically. Yeah, she says, someone, like... someone who's never around. <laughs> someone who doesn't realize i like them those are her mm-hmm. two yep, yep, biggest yep, definitely <laughs> but she does talk a lot, a lot about like admiring him and wanting to be more like him and how he like works real hard and goes after what he wants and stuff she says that he has a gentle impression she admires people that aren't like her and then wants to be like them i i, I understand that she's attracted to people who possess qualities she doesn't yeah i, yeah. I think i think that, that makes sense yeah, that does. She wants to be more like Jiwon, though. What what does that mean? Really direct, maybe? Yeah, you like know, just, just like... like saying bold things sometimes. Yeah. That's, that's uh-huh. what she wants to do that. I feel like she's she's not the least bold person. I guess she wants to be even more bold. I don't know. Well, I mean, we see her be like pretty bold with people who I think she doesn't actually have strong feelings for. <laughs> oh, she wants to be like hella aggressive towards people she likes. She wants to, well, like, like up and like she was trying to hide her identity and all her texts and she is so shy coming into this i think she would like to be able to be more direct with the people she actually likes she mm. can fake it with mingyu but she wants to be able to do it proper with somebody like jiwon do we know how it like obvious jiwon's texts have been to <laughs> ji young <laughs> we don't right i have no idea. Uh, we haven't gotten texts actual texts in so long i don't know okay <laughs> Jimin says, my feelings are my own, but they could be overwhelming for you. And then Jiwon says, it takes a long time for me to recognize my feelings and act upon them, except when it doesn't, right, Sarah? <laughs> well, he had a lot of time at work to think about his feelings. I guess so, yeah. He's just like, <laughs> I've met these women, 
and I recognize I've, that they're older than me, and I'm into it. <laughs> yeah, much it. like I guess he t- took a long time without actually spending time with them. Mm-hmm. So it's not a matter of spending more time with the person. It's just like I need to meet you and then spend a long time before <laughs> I have feelings. I guess we don't have to like meet again. <laughs> But yeah, when he started saying this, like it sounded like a way of him being like, I don't know, maybe I'll have feelings for you later. But he definitely flowed right into him talking about Ji Young. And it's like, oh, oh, okay, you are drawing the line here. You're definitely into Ji Young. This did seem like a little bit of a excuse or whatever. Although I am thinking about it now, and I feel like Jimin on her first date with Mingyu might have said something in the same sentiment mm. as this. It's not quite the same situation though, because it was like a. It was like their plant. It was like the plant date. It wasn't even an official. Yeah, date. yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it didn't feel like. A, I don't think Jimin Excuse. was like dodging. It was Jimin yeah, wasn't yeah. like dodging his emotions in that date. But this kind of feels like Jiwon is doing that. Yeah, but yeah. He starts to talk about like he seems to want to talk about the two times that Ji Young really stood out and made him like her or whatever. But like Jimin kind of interrupts him to be like, "Oh yeah, that day at the mall when you were alone in the car with her, I was so upset. I wanted to be alone in the car with you." Yeah. And then she just starts talking about how jealous she's been. And, like, I appreciate her being directed here, but it's such a bummer that this date is just her talking about her feelings and then, like, he doesn't really say much and they just don't have a norm. Like, I don't know. Just get to know each other, you know? I was saying, let's go, G-Man. Just do it. <laughs> let's get to the bottom of this. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, G-Man kind of said the same thing to Mingyu in the <laughs> car in the last episode. Nah, she said a cute, teasy thing in a different <laughs> way. This is a, I really like you so much, and I was so sad when you okay. went out with that other girl, and oh my god. Oh, like, okay, you're taking it It's down. a different <laughs> level, you... I think. Uh, Sarah, how do you feel about g One's responsiveness to G-Man's uh, feelings on this date? How do you... <laughs> um, Yeah, he doesn't say a lot, but she does fill up a lot of the space with stuff, so I don't know. I don't. He, for somebody who's so direct, you'd think he'd jump in and say some more things. But but not so much. I'm not really sure like what he's supposed to say if he's That's not true. feeling it. Like yeah, I mean he went as far as like talk about Ji Young. It's it's definitely a tough spot for him. So like I'm not gonna. That's know, fair. I'm not gonna call him out too much. Especially when she's already going basically like yeah, I know you don't like me or whatever, but I have feelings for you. you know like she's not looking for a response so much. She's just like I yeah. have to tell you how I'm feeling. She's doing this in a very like mature, gentle way. I feel like. She's like, I have to do this, but I understand the situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I feel like Ji Young did well with this, though, when Ji Won did this to her, to Ji, to Ji Young on their date. Like, Ji Young made that date seem so natural, <laughs> even though. Yes. Even though it was but... like, pretty much the same situation. <laughs> That's true. But we came out of that date, and I felt like Ji Young had been trying to be like, I understand that you like me, but you're not doing it for me. So let's shut it down. And he came out of it going, so you're saying there's a chance. Let me just keep going. <laughs> I guess. I feel like that's more of a G1 issue, though, than a, oh, yeah, a yeah, G yeah. Young wasn't clear issue. No, I think she was clear. That's what yeah, I'm saying. You're I, right. I, I think it was, it's more of G One's just a confident guy who's going to, they kind of express this. Like, he's just like, he just does whatever he wants in his life. <laughs> it yep, doesn't really yep. worry about what other people <laughs> think at all. All right. <laughs> Jiwon does let her know, though, that he will be really busy for the next week. But the week after that, he is free, which is the last week of the show. Yes, that is a long time from now. So maybe he will recognize some new feelings. He says he planned his schedule to be free for the final week. Is that the best strategy, Sarah? I, I, no, I think no. You... The best strategy is to not be really fucking busy during the entirety of the <laughs> well, show. Say, you know, he, he's, if he wants to be on the show and do his job and maybe he had a little flexibility. Let's say he got to pick one week where he, he was free. I feel like you want to be free for the first week. Yeah, yeah. You definitely want to be free for the first week. Maybe it's more of a production choice. Like, they were like, we're going to do a lot of stuff in the last week. Like, you have to mm. be free for that week. But in terms of, like, actually getting people to have feelings for you and being able to, like, reciprocate them, I feel like yeah, the first the week earlier, is the, most, the better. The earlier, the better on these shows. Otherwise, they're going to get locked in and you got no chance. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes with these shows, I feel like we could watch the first like five episodes and then skip right to the end, and we we wouldn't it'd be pretty clear what happened, you know? Yeah, I'm. I think I felt that way after episode six this season. Mm-hmm. We'll see. We'll see if it works out, but 
with the exception of like there's some people i just have no read on but in terms of the main yeah. characters i feel like i i feel like i know but i don't know maybe they'll surprise us we haven't released uh, these two episodes we're doing are gonna release at the same time so mm-hmm. listeners will have a lot to uh <laughs> <laughs> to, to tell us how wrong they think we are yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's fair all right then they're gonna get in the car and then Jimin puts the next location, the GPS, and then G1 is like, I've already been to that place a bunch of times. <laughs> and I we never see them go to this place. Unless you put in the GPS, like, we're going to your school. I think they talk about it being near his old school, and then they go, Hey, should we just go look at it? Is it your old school? And they're like, Okay. And- yeah. All right. I don't know if they made it to a second location. <laughs> There is a nice montage of this drive, though. It seems like she is less nervous and loosens up a bit and is just having a fun time. So that's nice. A little bit. Yeah. That's how the the, the hosts were describing it. She looked a little stiff to me. Stiffer okay, than okay. usual. But like she, know, she knows the atmosphere she's created and she's yeah, trying to yeah. like lighten it up. So, yeah. yeah. It's a little bit better than the first part of the date. She's not totally like... How she acts on a date with with Mingyu, but you know, there's nothing to fling across the room in, in this car <laughs> by accident. There, uh, but eventually they make it to a wine bar, but it's like nighttime now. Yes, so who knows where they went, what they did? Anything different at the wine bar? Is it more of the same? She ordered ahead of time, and she ordered tteokbokki, even though she doesn't need it because she knew he liked it. So, oh, I didn't at some point, that. at some point, she learned something about him ahead of time. In their minimal interaction, and she did a cute thing about it. So there's that. Oh, okay. I didn't even notice that. Okay. I have a G1 G1 says, uh, I usually like cheery and perky personalities. That's G Min, right? Yeah, 100%. But I was thinking, like, maybe he hasn't even seen, like, the maximum cheery and perky G Min yet. Like, that's how little time he spent with her. (laughs) I guess. I feel like she's pretty cheery and perky around the house, though. Like, yeah. I don't know. It's like it seems like he literally described G Man. <laughs> like <laughs> who's the most cheery and perky person on the season? Yeah, it's a hundred percent G Man. G Man, yeah, that's what yeah. that's what I th- would think. I mean, I guess G Young's like pretty close, but I don't know. <laughs> and then oh, this was kind of interesting. I, I never realized this before, but they, they keep showing these shots of their like feet getting closer to each other. <laughs> yes. Is there just a camera? for looking under the table on like all these dates like (laughs) i didn't think about that that's hilarious every single location is like all right foot camera (laughs) or there's just like one cameraman who is all about the feet and is just like (laughs) supposed to be covering a different angle but went no under the table get this foot action (laughs) yeah i never thought about that we're gonna get another under the table action later But they ha- they must just have a camera ready to go just in case they need yeah, it. Yeah, gotta look for those <laughs> feet-based heart signals, you yeah. know? <laughs> Overall, though, Jimin pours her feelings out for Jiwon. And it makes no difference, yeah. D- does Jimin have a chance? <laughs> I nope. I just think Jiwon is, like, too confident about his chances with Jiang and probably won't switch. Yeah, I agree. Barring some, like, crazy, like, things that never happen on these show where people are just like, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away from me forever. Like no one's gonna go that yeah, far. Yeah. But I, I would think that if G1 had met G Min like outside of the show, mm-hmm. that he would be into her based on what he's saying. But it depends on how strongly he feels about this wanting to be with an older woman. Unless he's like you know? super strict about only dating newness. <laughs> like that that's crazy to me if if he really is like yeah. that. I feel like when I've been joking about that, it's like almost tongue in cheek because like it's one thing he said in a car one time. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. He's like, I kind of like older women actually, and we've just been like <laughs> running with that as if like yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, he only likes Nunes. <laughs> I mean, according to his behavior on the show, <laughs> he has only tried to date Nunes. It's like the only explanation we have as to like why he hasn't pursued Jimin. So I don't know. I, I I can't tell how serious he is about that. I mean, it could just be like she might be cheery and perky and whatever, but that doesn't mean that she's still somebody he feels compatible with. You know, like yeah. anytime anybody lists their ideal type, it's just such a minuscule part of what makes a person a person that yeah. can't like just because you check those boxes doesn't mean anything. You know. Maybe he only likes his Nunas to be cheery and perky, and then there's like a yeah. different kind of <laughs> type mm-hmm. if it's for younger. I don't know. All right. Do we want to compare Jimin's attempt with Jiwon to Jiwon's attempt with Ji Young? 
because they're kind of Meaning. similar. They're pretty similar, right? Okay. I think a difference is like Jiwon believes he can win over Ji Young mm. more than Jimin thinks she can win over Jiwon. Yeah, yeah. She does have a pretty defeatist attitude coming into this. And then I feel like Jiwon again would like actually date Jimin if they had met outside the show, but like I'm not sure mm-hmm. if Ji Young would actually date Jiwon outside of the show. <laughs> I'm not convinced by that. Yeah, yeah. The way she like put him down in that that date where she's like, Normally I like people like you, but here is why, not you. <laughs> like she had reasons. Also, like this one of the weird vibes about G1 is like to me is like it seems like he really doesn't care who likes him. It's like only about who he likes, you know. Which like to me, I definitely think someone is more attracted when they are, are into <laughs> me. Like they're they're attracting to spikes if they're into me, you know. Okay, okay. Maybe he's just so used to people liking him that it doesn't I affect guess. him anymore or something, you know? <laughs> All right. Well, I'm done with that date. Do you good? <laughs> yep. Yep. That's fine. All righty. Next, Jumi is waiting for her day to arrive. And yes. it's Mingyu. Mingyu. Again, not surprised. <laughs> this could be a Saturday. <laughs> yes. This is what we expected for, for Jumi, yeah. Mm-hmm. But here, here's the thing. Okay. I, I want to point this out. Min, Mingyu yes. approaches her like from behind, so he gets like uh-huh. pretty close to her. And then this is there's a part in the preview for this episode where they show Mingyu with a girl, and you and I talked about it a little bit. Where like her hair seemed like Jimin's hair or something. Yeah. yeah. And I I was able to get that this was Jumi, but like there was it did seem different. And then like has Jumi made her hair intentionally wavy for this date and is she like trying uh-huh. to trying to look like Jimin <laughs> or she's just <laughs> you know doing her hair in the like I don't know popular style okay and and then cuz then Mingyu gets like pretty close to her and then he's like Jumi <laughs> like he, like <laughs> this girl is not recognizable from the back <laughs> just like we were <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he might have got like it took him till getting like ten feet from her to be like, "Wait, that's not Jimin." <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure he was very disappointed. <laughs> so sad. I don't actually know if that's true, but I like this. Jumi is trying to look like Jimin Angle <laughs> because this might come up again later. I <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah, she turns around though, and they laugh, and uh, well, we're going to a cafe, of course. Yep. Yep. Uh, we find out that the truth or drink game lasted until 4 a.m. last night. Ooh. And, and then they did one-on-ones. Yeah, yeah. And this is actually Saturday, so they're, they're still feeling it, I think, on this day. <laughs> <'Cause this>, they <laughs> yeah, have a pretty 100%. low-key date. <laughs> this date ends up being pretty chill. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, Mingyu talked to Ji Young afterwards, and Jumi talked to Gyalri afterwards. Mm-hmm. Jumi mentions that Mingyu is the most popular guy in the house. And he's like, I'm not that popular. Is that what he <laughs> says? Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, he says like, I think it's more confusing or something. Like he, yeah, he thinks the the game was distorted. I think is what my subtitle said. Where he's like, I don't think everyone told the truth. And she's just like, if you didn't want to share anything, you would just drink. That's the game. Like, what are you talking about? You don't need to lie in this game. Yeah, Jimmy's very like, of course everybody told the truth. Why would you lie? <laughs> But yeah, this shows like she understands the situation she's going into on this date. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They talk a lot about like the game being like super intense. I think he says that both he his hands and Jiwon's hands were shaking during the game. Yeah. And then she she kind of like like shares what she interprets everybody's saying to be. Like she thinks that people answering the questions were like a way to express their feelings. Yeah for whatever reason Mm -hmm. yeah whereas like i I think i said something in the last episode about like it's also possible like you're more willing to answer a question because they're like you're not as emotionally attached to it yeah i think it could go either way i think jumi's kind of taking everybody at face value to what they said but i feel like it's got to be some combination of both these things like not everybody meant like a super significant thing by answering Mm -hmm. a question i think but by her saying this, she's saying that that's what she meant. Like, oh, that's true. She, that's true. You know, yeah. if she said it, she was telling the truth and was serious Did about Jimmy it. Did Jumi have a question that made the edit? I don't know. Uh, yeah, she. And somebody asked her about her pick, right? Because didn't because everybody picked. I'm looking right now. Here Mingyu, we go. right? At some point, do you want to ask Jumi what's your favorite place that you've been while you were you've been here? And she drank, 
and that's it. So we never got Jumi oh, okay. answering anything. I know I'm sure she did answer questions, but we don't know what she's like admitting to Mingyu here that she was telling the truth with. It was probably something related to him that we already knew, which is she wanted to go on a date with him. Yeah. Or this just is not a main storyline of the show, but <laughs> it's a date that happens. <laughs> Mingyu does bring up, though, like, Jumi not looking at him again. Like, he, Oh, yeah. <laughs> this happened on, like, the first day. He felt like Jumi wasn't looking at him. And then now it, for the truth game. Not just not looking at him, but her whole body is, like, faced away from him. Yeah. But in both those situations, like, the majority of the other people in the group are on the other side Facing of the the room. other way, yeah. So exactly. I don't think there's much in this. Although there's, like, something maybe you could read into, like, oh, Mingyu is, like, aware of what Jumi's doing with That's respect true. to him. Yeah. I wrote, there, there's no way this turns into a Mingyu plus Jumi ending, does it? Like, <laughs> there's no way. No, no. I don't think so. He does text her, though, <laughs> at the end of this. I don't know That's what that true. means. That's true. I think he's just very confused and feeling a lot of feelings. I guess I you see Mingyu being like, ha, these th- things don't matter anymore. <laughs> okay, yeah. Like, he's just trolling, maybe? I don't know. But then Mingyu also says that he feels comfortable with Jumi. Oh, no, that can't be good. I don't know if he meant that in a good or bad way, but <laughs> <laughs> so far it means like it's, it's, it's bad romantically more often than not. <laughs> All right. Then they get in the car. Mingyu guesses they're going to a movie theater? This is a terrible guess, right? Yes, that would be terrible for a date like this and also terrible for TV, you know? like Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, <laughs> no way production is going to be like, yeah, you can go see a movie. They're like, no, no, go for a drive instead. <laughs> is this hopeful thinking? Like, he's like, I just need to lie down. Like, let's, get, <laughs> let's go to a theater with reclining seats and somewhere just dark. Take a nap. And, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, yeah. I just need to chill out and not focus any energy on anyone else. What they're about to go do is, like, pretty close to that, so. Yeah, not a terrible guess. It's, like, like, audio without the video. <laughs> yeah, and it, it still gives them a chance to talk and connect, and it is a better version of that. Yeah, A little bit, yeah. I mean, it's definitely not the ideal place to talk. Like, there's some amount of, like, you're not trying to be too loud. It's almost like a library. Yeah. That, they go to a building that's, like, just for listening to music. Yeah, they've got, like, a huge library of records and record players and then they just have big big speakers and they whoever's in charge just put something on and people just sit around and listen to the music and it's the weirdest coolest thing (laughs) i don't know it's like a movie theater but without video yeah i guess (laughs) but also like it is i I think it's significantly like outside of the city because there's like big windows and you get this nice view of like a scenic landscape and it is a very theoretically relaxing place yeah it's on like the top of like a mountain or like a hill or something like it's it, something like it look, that yeah it's like somewhere you would think like an observatory would be yeah yeah so they, they can talk but it seems like they definitely can't talk loudly and they do go up to like the second or third floor or whatever where they're more away from people and it is more acceptable to talk this does seem like a placement you would like though it's pretty good. yeah it's a pretty good choice yeah. Yeah, she she did a good job picking a date for this guy and also continues to be the cool lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> so they yeah, they sit down in like one of the upper levels and they look out the window and then they just zone out. <laughs> mhm. <laughs> and he just starts crying at some point just like little little tea tears coming down. Eventually, yeah. Yeah. Hard to tell what that's about, but I was like is this is he actually crying but then he does say like oh, I was thinking about something and got choked up like he, he like doesn't yeah. respond to something mm-hmm. i have a couple of other things that like uh, jimmy says do i seem cold at the house <laughs> <laughs> and then thank you says a little compared to jimin and ji <laughs> but then she's like yeah jimin she's she's so bubbly and she's like a baby and ji young's so loving yeah. and energetic and just you know there's no room for me to be that because you know that puts me in the background a little bit yeah, Jimmy basically describes how great Jimin and Ji Young are. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, I feel like I'm always in the background behind those two. Yeah. Mingyu never mentions Yisu, though, in this comparison. <laughs> it's true. Well, it's only been a couple days. and I don't think he's really thinking about her that much either. I don't think so either. Yeah. They both let their thoughts go. And Mingyu tears slash chokes up a little bit. Mm-hmm. What is he thinking about? 
how he's pretty sure he's not getting a date with Jimin because he knows that Ji Young picked him. And he's like, damn it, she's still not picking me. Wait, how does he know that Ji Young picked him? It's Saturday. Because of their conversation they had after the, the, because of the drinky game, because of the conversation they had after the drinky game, it is fair to assume that she's going to pick him. But how would he know he doesn't have like three, four dates? Because he would, because if he did, like production would have told him he had to be, like, I'm sure he knows his schedule for the next day already. Oh, you think so? Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I just thought he's probably not thinking about Jumi when he's crying. <laughs> That's He might be thinking about like, this woman actually gets me. Like she knew exactly what I would like and what I needed today, which was to just zone out and look at the sunset. Oh, maybe. Like that. That's legit. I guess that's like kind of what happened to Galray. Yeah. But I really don't really know what's going on with these Jumi <laughs> making people cry. She like gets people. How does she and, do it? You know, <laughs> she's just such a cool lawyer, man. I don't know what to tell you. She she gets just... people to cry, and it's like it's never like really about her. It's like what it's like what she's doing, but it's not like a uh, an appreciation on like a romantic level ever. They feel touched, but not necessarily in a way where they want to go out on another date. Maybe, yeah, I don't know. Was it, was there ever a window for Jumi with Gyalre that she might have missed by focusing on Mingyu, or she had the FOMO? She was worried about missing out on something better with Mingyu. Um. Maybe if she had followed up after their date, like, harder, you know, instead of being like, I don't want to double down on that just yet. If yeah. she had leaned into it, that was the time when Ji Young was, like, leaning away from Gao Rei, and maybe maybe that would have been the time, you know? Yeah. That, see, that's the kind of FOMO I would have if I was on this show. Like, I would worry that, oh, if I don't tell somebody how I feel sooner than later, like, they're going to think that I wasn't that into them and then mm-hmm. they're going to like move on, think about somebody else and then become obsessed. And then I I'll, like, I'll never be able to recover from that. <laughs> like that. Yeah, yeah. I'd be much more worried about that than the other way around where it's just like, I've gotten to somebody to like me so much that I'll never know <laughs> what I would have had <laughs> with somebody else. Like, I don't know. That's like, it's, it's a little, it's almost a little uh, greedy to be thinking that way. right? Like, <laughs> I would hope that, these folks don't think that way in the real world because there are infinite other possibilities and you'd never actually date anyone. Yeah, in the real world, it's know? like, it's such a hassle <laughs> to go out on dates that, like, mm-hmm. you have a good date. You're like, yeah, let's 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 see how this, we can make this work. This, this is nice. Yeah. <laughs> but on this show, it's like you're already going through the process of being on the show. Like, <laughs> they're just offering you other options. Yeah. Might as well partake. The, sh- I guess. the show might be a hassle, but like as long as you're in it, you might as well <laughs> <laughs> do whatever. I don't. I don't even know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. All right, and then they're gonna have dinner. Uh, mostly yep. normal date stuff to start. It is a cool restaurant in the mountains. Mm-hmm. The aesthetic was nice. Looked like a nice, relaxing day. Jumi describes her feelings for Mingyu in a very self-reflective way. I thought. Uh, like she says, like are her feelings like more of a comfort for being in sync with him, or is it more of a romantic feeling? She's kind of like she's like saying I like you, but she's not saying like oh I I, I like you and I know why I like you. She's like <laughs> it's a little bit like she's giving herself an out, yeah, or yeah. giving him an out, or I I don't know exactly. And she's definitely saying a lot of stuff that's like, well, I don't want to ruin our friendship, sort of stuff. Yeah, where she's just like. Trying the water a little bit, but not too hard, so that way he goes, no, and they never speak again or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah, there's, like, a level of comfortableness that she has with him, and she doesn't want to, like, ruin that by trying Mm -hmm. to get uncomfortable, quote-unquote. But, (laughs) yeah, so she, like, doesn't want to ruin their existing relationship. It's a little bit of, like, her, like, drawing a line before he does, Mm, because, like, she knows he's going to, or wants to but might not do it i I don't know yeah but it is kind of still good though because like she is at least saying like hey i do have feelings for you if there's a chance that you're interested but they're not so serious that you know it's weird to just yeah (laughs) yeah if you're into it yeah sure let's try it my interpretation though is that she does really like midgu but it's just like the type of person that doesn't want to waste her time on something that isn't going to happen so she's like, yeah, that seems fair. The opposite of G1. <laughs> <laughs> this is another one where, like, I wish she could have just said 
this to him maybe without wasting an official date. Yeah. But again, it makes me feel like, oh, Mingyu is the one she like really, really likes. And she wanted to like show him that by using an official date. Yeah, yeah, I agree. There is some stuff later where she does make it seem like she really liked the date with Gyaure. Like that was her favorite date. Mm -hmm. Which she wasn't willing to answer during the truth game. Right. Which makes sense if she was trying to have this one last attempt with Mingyu and didn't want to tell the truth that her best date was with Gyaure, maybe. And that's yeah. why she that's why she drank. So that that like kind of makes sense. But I guess she never like went for Gyaure just because for some reason she got the impression, and maybe it's correct that Gyaure like never didn't really reciprocate the feelings that she had on the date. Mm -mm. It's not what we saw, but she might just be right about that. I don't know. It might be, yeah. Then Mingyu says some something here that I might need help with interpreting. Uh, Mingyu says, I'm worried about confusing the other person. Yeah. And Jumi says, by by giving them hope, question mark. And then Mingyu says, I'm thinking about how to do these to do that these days. What does, like, who does he not want to confuse? Um, Anybody but Jimin, honestly. And I think, like, I, it feels weird because, like, right before this, she asked him, like, oh, am I burdening you with, with my feelings or whatever? And he says no. And then he transitions into this. So for me, it felt very much like he's, like, being like, I'm not into you. I don't want to confuse you, but I have no idea how to let someone down gently because I've not established that skill set in my life. Hmm, okay. I felt like this was, like, edited in a way where I couldn't even tell if these conversations, like, flowed together or if they, like, cut to a whole new oh, that's fair. topic. But, like, uh, my instinct was to interpret this as, like, oh, he's opening up to her about, like, what he's going through right now. Also, I and think And he's, so. like, saying, like, maybe he doesn't want to confuse Ji Young. Yeah. Because he wants to choose Ji Min. Also, we're going to find out he probably does like Ji Young, but then there's, like, something weird about it, so. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like he's talking about Ji Young here. I he, that this man has so many ladies after him who are not Jimin <laughs> that um the the options are endless. I mean the options are <laughs> three of them, but I think it's it it could apply to a, any three of them. Hmm, okay, and then I wrote Jumi exposes her corroded artery. <laughs> <laughs> I mean we're established again that he looks like a vampire, so you know maybe that's the move. <laughs> I think it's just something that. <laughs> Jumi does. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah, yeah. Doctor right. Doctor Love Science Man. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't actually bring it up. I just know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. You good with that date? Moving on. Well, she does say, like, even though like to me that felt like he was kind of being like, I need to let all these people down. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> You're one of them. Hint hint. She's like well, you know, I'm not going to push things, but, you know, you should just give me a hint at some point about if you're feeling things or whatever. And I'm like, didn't he just do that? Didn't he just kind of? Okay. Yeah, I but actually we'll didn't know what Jumi meant by that. I, I wasn't sure if she meant, like, if you have a change of heart, give me a hint. Or, like, oh, maybe give me a is. hint regardless of how you feel. That seems a little weird because that's a little, like, she is a kind of ignoring what he's saying a little bit. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I'm not sure exactly. but I don't know. I didn't know what she meant by that. Yeah. I'm not expecting a hint to happen, <laughs> yeah. regardless of whether it's a good for Jimmy or bad. No hints at all. No hints. <laughs> that itself might be a hint, though. Yeah. The hardest to read hint, though. <laughs> all right. Third date. You ready? Yeah. This is not a date. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It's an official date, Sarah. It's an official date, but it's the <laughs> least date date you could have on this, you know? <laughs> yeah, so Yisu is waiting outside. Mm hmm And Gyaure shows up on a Sunday, I believe. Yes, which is not who I would have thought she would have picked. Yeah, I was thinking about that, like, there is some sense... It, it does make sense that, like, or maybe you don't just want to, like, choose one guy and then that's the whole like, show experience for you. But, like, of all the guys, was this the one you thought she'd pick? Here's the thing, though. Like, if if she, she she's already spent a day or at least a significant portion of a day with Hushin, based on what mm -hmm. Hushin said, like, it didn't seem like they vibed. Yeah. Even though it was, okay. like, he saved her phone or whatever. It still mm -hmm. didn't, like, didn't, no, no, it didn't seem like there was any vibing there. 
And then if she were to talk to the women, like the women would probably tell her, like, yeah, like Ji Won's just not around. Not around. <laughs> he might only like Ji Young. And mm. yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't waste your time with Ji Won. So it feels like Yao Rei is the best choice if she doesn't want to pick Mingyu again. So I kind of get it from that standpoint, but I it like we kind of know Yao Rei's probably already decided also. Not just that, but and this is not fair to Yao Rei, but in my brain he has grandpa energy you know okay. like i don't i don't and i don't see her vibing with a grandpa energy kind of guy you know what i mean oh i have no idea what who yisu would vibe with i mean she tells us she's into somebody like Mingyu, basically Is, yeah. does gary have grandpa vibes just because he's the oldest person ever on these shows that we've ever seen that and i <laughs> i i don't know hmm. he just he talks about coffee a lot He's just, I don't know, he doesn't have big expressions. It's his business. <laughs> He's just kind of there. He started I don't from know. the ground up. <laughs> I know. He, it's his yes, world. Very impressive. I, like I said, it's not fair to him at all, but my brain has decided he is grandpa energy. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just don't, she seems too cool and young and like she's a part-time model or whatever. Like, I don't know. Okay. Never a, a combination I would have fathom to put together well the kind of person she says she's going to be into is super weird so who it's knows so weird <laughs> you know it's so weird i don't know if the translation is right that's how weird it is it's absurd the the thing she puts together but yeah let's start this date <laughs> she says she picked gallery because she never had a chance to talk to him which is kind of like i feel like that like somebody that comes in late on the show like this is always the reason they get yeah for why which is fair for like thing. they haven't yeah. gotten to do a lot of stuff yet she also like very quickly like talks about how mingyu has like been her favorite so far yes she does and then she asks him very directly who he thought he would be meeting and he's just like yeah i thought it was gonna be ji young yeah he chooses not to like beat around the bush at all like yeah which i respect like which yeah, it, absolutely it kind of solidifies that he's chosen i think at this mm -hmm. point Ooh, this is great. She then asks him for his ideal type, but she gives him four options. Oh, this is Pure, so good. This is so good. Cute, sexy, or just pretty. I have a whole bit for this. <laughs> okay, yeah. Like, who out of this group is what, is what we need to talk about. Yeah, oh because... my god, we had the same idea. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks his type is pure, so theoretically that means Ji Young is the pure type. Which G I think I him, would agree to, with. To him. Yeah, to him. Oh, but okay. I think I would agree. I would give her the pure one. So yeah, this is how I did this, just to okay. be clear. I imagined that, okay, these are the most four official buckets buckets of, like, kinds of people you would date. Yep, this like, is these it. Are, and then, <laughs> this is it. This is, and then, let's imagine that the show only casted one, one of each. One of each for each. So you have, yes, to pick, yes. you have to pick one girl and one guy for each bucket. Oh, I didn't do the guys. You I did just the, did the girls. The okay. But we can, let's go. Let's do this the whole way. All right. So let's do, so Pure, you had Ji Young? Yeah. I went with Jumi for Pure. Okay. Okay. She's, you know, she's always being herself. I don't know what Pure okay. really means. Is that, is that what Pure means? I think Pure is supposed to be like, I don't know. I have a weird relationship to the word Pure because of like my religious upbringing, that like whole weird purity culture thing. So I think of it mm. as like young and innocent and like has never been with a man or you know like some bullshit like that oh okay which is That's... not what i think about g young but like mm. the the young innocent <laughs> sort of look i guess is what okay i associate with it all right well i put g young for cute that's what i put for g young okay i put i mean g Min's cute she's totally cute i put g Min for sexy oh i picked yisu for sexy Okay. And I said Yisu was just pretty. <laughs> said I, Jumi was just pretty. Because <laughs> I don't I, know what that means. Like, what is my just favorite, pretty? Like, yeah. uh, we're just like, we're also doing this based on a translation. So it's like. Yeah, that's when, it, when it's phrased as just pretty, it sounds like uh, the leftover bucket. I know. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> okay. I, I didn't actually write the guys down, but I'll do them right now. Ready? Okay. Okay. Wait. It's hard though. It's it's it's, 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 it's so hard. This is what the listeners need to send us. Yeah, definitely. And you better you got to do it right. Only one, one, one person, per bucket. one per bucket for you could do men and women. Girls and guys. You know? Yeah, go girls ahead. And guys. 
If, if if you if you say every girl is cute, that's cheating. Yes, absolutely. You can't do that. <laughs> you need one per one, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna say for pure. I'm gonna I'm gonna say Gyore. Is that, okay? One. I agree. I'm in on that. Okay. Cute. Oh, who is cute? Um. I I I have to go with Mingyu. <laughs> I think. Yeah, I think I was also gonna pick Mingyu. Sexy is Hushin. Okay, that that uh, I think that's right. And then G1 is just pretty. All right. We're all the same guys. We're on the same page for the guys. <laughs> Look at us. <laughs> we did not match at all for the girls, but the guys, all of them, we got it. Let's go. Now, if we match up, <laughs> if I feel like if I match up my... Oh, should your pure people be together? Your cute people be together? These are my matchups. Ready? It'd be Jumi and Gyalrei as pure. That's pretty good. Okay. Ji Young and Mingyu as cute. That's pretty okay. good. Okay. Jimin and Hushin as sexy. Okay. There we go. And then Yisu and Jiwon for just pretty. <laughs> Our leftover people. Yeah. That's some pretty good four matchups. I like so it. bad. <laughs> yeah. That's how love works, right? You date in the same <laughs> you stay in the same bucket as yourself. Yeah, these weird buckets that these are, are official and... these are official date buckets. <laughs> they happened on an official date. They're official. Yeah. That's great. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, so basically, this whole date becomes non-romantic from the start because they both oh, realize, yeah, yeah. like, like maybe Yisu was willing to see how it went, but even she kind of was like, "Yeah, I like Mingyu the most," <laughs> and then he was yeah. like, "Yeah, I would. I thought this was gonna be Ji Young. I'll be honest." <laughs> oh, she does describe what she likes in a man physically, though she does not use the four types. She says she likes somebody who's kind of manly, but not super muscular and she doesn't mind skinny boys and they need to have at least one attractive quality maybe their eyes which is a vague weird thing yeah seems like she's into a large variety of <laughs> men <laughs> yes <laughs> which is good not, not a nice cute little bucket she's gonna get into more specifics later at dinner which That's are incredible true, yes. Th those are the <laughs> more interesting ones yeah so the yeah they get in the car Yahweh yeah, really talks about how into Ji Young he is in the car. Yes, so much. They are not even trying. And he's like, she probably doesn't even know how I feel. I'm like, you sat her down and said, I feel things for you. Like, how does he think that she doesn't know that he likes her? Right? Am I yeah. crazy? Have I made this up? Um, They went on that date. I don't know if Ji Young is like so straightforward that like somebody who's, you know, they're looking for any opportunity. It's, it's the same thing as like Mingyu and Jimin, right? It's like, as she really 100% said, like, this isn't going to work out. And then this this moment for him is like, she he thought this was going to be Ji Young and it's not. And then he's like, oh, well, you know, maybe I didn't fully express my feelings. And that's why she didn't pick me for this date. Or like, you know, he's like, he's trying mm -hmm. to figure out how he can make it work. It's a sad boy explanation for the situation. Okay. Yeah. Because it does seem of. like he very much like sat down with her and was directly like, hey, I like you. So like he I just don't think that he should feel that he hasn't expressed how he feels about her, you know, because he very directly did. Yeah. Unless he sees his mistake of not texting her right after he said that. But <laughs> maybe. Yeah. I wrote in my notes, poor Jumi. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't seem like she has a lot of options at this point. <laughs> yeah. It's rough. Yeah. But honestly, I feel like very few people are lighting up right now on this show. It's all over the place. That's true. Like it, it, It's like, if Mingyu chooses someone that chooses him, like, is that the only match we're going to get on the by the end of the show? Yeah, unless the <laughs> there text might be one mean match. something, and then the Jimin and Hushin are going to hook up. Like, if the texts mean anything, that's oh, a potential. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because they've picked each other twice in text, but that's it. No, but it's, it's just a... It's not a weird romantic triangle. It's it's a many a many sided polyhedral nonsense chain of people who like people who don't like them. Yeah, I I just like what is the justification of the edit of the TV show if like Hushin and Jimin end up pick each other end and we saw it nothing. makes no sense. Yeah, we we like haven't seen it. I don't think it's worth like a surprise ending to not show us whatever they're going, what's ever happening. Mm -hmm. It's just so weird that we've seen none of it. And they keep texting each other. I have to believe, like, that maybe there's something, but it's not that big. And we're not seeing it because it's not important to the end game of the show. That's the only thing I can 
Yeah. I would understand right now. Probably, but it leaves the middle real confusing. Yeah, I mean, there's only so much the show can do. Like, <laughs> hey, these are the texts they sent us, but we're yep. we don't have time to justify this to you. <laughs> okay, so Yusu and Gallery, they're gonna go to the uh, the aquarium as their second place. Yes, the fish prison. I love a good fish prison. I know maybe like. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to talk too much Ethically, about Ethically, it's weird. But what what I will, like, nothing much happens there. But I will say that he has this look on his face the whole time. Like, he says he's never been to one. And he's just, like, amazed. He's like, oh, my God. Look at look at the fish. Like, he seems like he has a good time. They do get matching pearl keychains. Oh, which... that's right. I did not enjoy that part. If this was Transit Love too. This would be like, oh, this shit's going to come Ooh, up later and it's going to be true. spicy. People are going to find out that they have a couple's <laughs> matching gift and it's going to spark some feelings. But yep. it'll probably be nothing here on the show. Nothing here, yeah. yeah. Okay. We will never see those again. All right, time for dinner. This is where Yisu yes. is going to describe the men that she <laughs> likes. Can I give you, can I give these to you? <laughs> yes. She says, I like men who are serious and deliberate. Someone who rarely talks, even if you ask. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. Someone who doesn't talk easily. <laughs> Literally Mingyu, right? Like, Yeah. This is like a, a personal preference she has realized in the last couple of days. But then like she goes on to absolutely complain about how much he didn't talk on their date. So like, which is it? Maybe she wasn't complaining. She was just like, hey, this is what happened on our date. No, she said she was really frustrated. Oh, because really? he was okay. just like not saying more oh, so it's okay. like i don't believe you that this is your type because you got real frustrated but this is what she says she says i think people like that tend to treat their girlfriends better That's i feel like this is some, some very weird life experience ridiculous <laughs> yeah I, I i don't get it <laughs> why would she want somebody who wouldn't, wouldn't speak to you even if you're like hey how's it going I mean, we know how I feel about people not saying words, but like this is just the most <laughs> ridiculous. The best interpretation I can think of this is like she likes people who maybe like think before they speak, or mm. she isn't someone who wants to have like a like a high speed conversation necessarily. Mm. Like she does, she doesn't seem like somebody who who does have high speed conversations. Like, yeah, yeah. So maybe she likes these like low key, take your time to speak kind of conversations and that's why she likes guys yeah. that, do that, that, <laughs> appear, that are like that um there is a trope of a strong silent type for a reason that's fair oh, there but you go. just the way it gets translated makes it sound like you just can't get a fucking word out of him. <laughs> that just <laughs> seems so silly to me she said she likes how minkyu made eye contact where with her when she asked him out little does she know that he only makes eye contact with people he doesn't like <laughs> oh yeah did he actually say that at some point in the show a hundred percent he's like it's so much easier to make eye contact with people you don't give a shit about i actually forgot <laughs> about that oh my god yeah okay that makes sense and then gaoi tries to give her some advice about mingyu this is turned oh, into yeah. like an alliance date strategy date because mm-hmm. because if he keeps if he keeps mingyu busy then maybe he'll have some more young time and it'll be oh fun. that's true i mean i don't think he was thinking that far but yeah that's true I don't think he wasn't thinking about that. But... <laughs> All right. So how does he try to give advice? Um, He tells her that he and Mingyu have similar personalities, which I don't know how helpful that is, but he said it like takes them a while to open up. And so if she just puts the work in, like eventually he'll open up to her more. And I think like she's spending some time being like, you know, he didn't say so much on the date and, you know, he wasn't really opening up or whatever. And he's like, you know, maybe he's just uncomfortable with you because he likes you so much. <laughs> and I'm like, that that's wild. That's out of left field. <laughs> it could be a thing. It's not like what I would bet on. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And he did look her, make good eye contact with her. So it can't be that <laughs> uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. I wrote down, I can't imagine Kiao Rei would know how to seduce Mingyu. <laughs> <laughs> They're roommates. They know each other well, though. But I don't know. It does not seem like he provides much helpful content. I mean, if you're, if you're out here on this date with this guy that it's not really a date, yeah, you might as well talk about it, see what he has to say. But I don't know if I put mm-hmm. a lot of stock in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gowray's advice. 
Although I did like when Gyaure made a point that maybe Mingyu didn't elaborate to her about his ideal type, uh, talking about Yisu and Mingyu's date, because he mm -hmm. didn't want her to change based on what he said. Ah, uh, yeah. That's fair. I never really thought about it like that, but after he said it, I was like, that's pretty, that's like exactly why I don't like want to answer that question or feel uncomfortable mm. answering that question. It's like, yeah. it doesn't help me to answer that question. I don't think. <laughs> Unless, like, the other person is like, I'm just looking for anybody whose ideal type is me, <laughs> and they just want <laughs> you to describe them. Like, uh -huh. I don't know. It, does, it doesn't really help. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's a very awkward question, because if you answer truthfully and the person you're talking to does not meet these quote-unquote requirements, does that just mean date over? That's yeah, awkward. That's that's weird. <laughs> but, yeah, they, they support each other in their romantic endeavors yeah. out after this date. <laughs> Yep. Maybe maybe we'll get some more alliance strategy later, but I I don't know. Maybe uh, next time we see Gary and uh, Mingyu together, Gary will be like, you know who's nice, Isu. You should go talk to her <laughs> or something. You know, it's actually crazy to think about that this is only the halfway mark of the season. Absolutely. What are we gonna watch for the second half? Like, I don't how know. are they? How are they gonna convince me that? Anything's going to change? Anything's going to change. I don't know. We'll see what they do. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I'm too I I, maybe I'm uh I'm too convinced. Who knows. <laughs> but all right, you done with this one? Want to get yeah. You want to get to the Not main Not much to say about that. The main that event. Yes. Are you ready? Absolutely. Ji Young is walking along and there is Mingyu. Let's go. Again, not surprised. <laughs> Let's go. This is Mingyu's Sunday date. Mm -hmm. I wrote in my notes, poor Hushin. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't even know about it yet. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> that's rough. <laughs> and then I wrote my notes, is is Jiang trying to look like G-Men right here? Is it? <laughs> no. Is she not dressed like a schoolgirl? Am I? Am I? With... Like she's got like the the skirt yeah. going on, the white the white top. It, I mean, I don't know. Maybe she's <laughs> trying to be cute. I mean, of course. <laughs> I mean, she doesn't have to try too hard to do that. But like, I don't know. It, it's also weird because it's it seems like it's pretty cold out today, and this uh -huh. might not be the best choice of what to wear unless there's <laughs> like some strategy going on here with like I'm gonna wear short sleeves and then he'll have to mm -hmm. give me his coat strategy. Yep. But yep. I don't something. know. Yeah. Ji Young. I mean, Jumi and uh, Ji Young. Maybe trying to both <laughs> work a little G-Man action into their <laughs> appearance. I would argue that they're just adhering to like the beauty standard, you know, which happens to be what g -Man also tries to look like most of the time, you know, like the wavy hair and the schoolgirl type clothes are very popular. I would not say that those are uniquely g -Man things. Yeah, I guess so. It's just, you know, it's all happening at once. It doesn't seem too coincidental. <laughs> well, they're all having dates at once, you know? Has Jumi worn her hair that way previously I don't know. on the show? I'd have to go back and look. I don't know. Maybe this is the first time she was very excited about a date. You I know? thought it was funny to think about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, because then <laughs> Mingyu has, like, a jacket on. And then yeah. she's going to ask him if he's cold. <laughs> <laughs> Which seems like a crazy thing. Or maybe it's not actually that cold, and so she's poking a little fun at him that, like, he's wearing this big jacket, even though, you know, it's kind of warm. Maybe. It's probably but not But then true. it's going to be cold at, like, the first yeah, yeah, it's, place they go. It's 100% she's cold. Is this a move? Is this a move that girls do, Sarah? I don't know. I'm going to get his jacket. Watch this. I mean, I'm going to be so cold if he doesn't give me his jacket. I mean, he doesn't give her his jacket, which also seems weird. He does not give weird. her his jacket. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's probably a move some people do. I don't know. I have not pulled this move, personally. ji had nothing to offer him if he said, yeah, I'm cold. Like, what you got for me? <laughs> <laughs> like, <sh> <laughs> if we were talking about people who were much more straightforward, I mean, she could, like, give him a hug and keep him warm that way. But that's not what's going to happen okay, in the show. Okay. So. All right, so they go to a cafe brunch place. I, I wrote this down when I watched it, but I don't think I believe this as much. But are you ready for this foreshadowing I noticed? Okay. When they get to the cafe place and they're like choosing what they want to eat, Mingyu mm -hmm. just like immediately chooses like, oh, I want to eat that. 
<laughs> like <laughs> right from the yeah. line. And Ji mm -hmm. Young's like, "How did you choose so quickly?" <laughs> Almost like on the show, he's yeah. chosen so quickly. Is that, yeah. for, is that yeah. sneaky foreshadowing from the... I mean, <laughs> the, the production the would have gotten very, very lucky <laughs> that this happened. It's not like a necessary moment to put in the show. That That's why I thought like, oh, maybe this they were like, oh, look at this yeah, yeah. foreshadowing maybe. moment. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. He All knows right. what he wants right away and he picks it and that's it. <laughs> yeah. All right. And then they make an under the table transaction, if you know what I'm saying. Yes, he hands her a hand warmer he had in his coat pocket. But yeah, this is where that under the table camera comes into play again, <laughs> which is so weird. Yeah, why does he pass this hand warmer under the table, actually? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he thought it would be cute. Maybe it's the least amount of distance from his pocket. Yeah, it was, a, it was the it's least just, amount of distance. That's true. It's just an efficiency <laughs> action. I don't know. Who, who it was knows with this guy? Weird. <laughs> he didn't want to accidentally drop it in the food. Mm, didn't want anybody to know he had an illegal hand warmer or something. No, <laughs> it was weird. Yeah. But also funny. Uh, Mingyu admits he hung out with Jumi yesterday. <laughs> hung out. Yeah, he quotes. does not call it a date. Yeah. <laughs> he does not. <laughs> to him, probably wasn't a date. Or. He doesn't want to say that to Ji Young. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> yeah, is Ji Young surprised by this? Um, she seems a little surprised by it. She does, but do you think she actually is? I think so. I think she wasn't, especially because like we didn't see, um, Jumi answer anything specific to Mingyu in the drinker truth question. Yeah, game, and maybe she just assumed that. He was going to have a date with Jimin yesterday. With G oh, you think Jimin? I thought maybe she thought it would be Yisu also. Well, I mean, he's the popular boy, so she could have thought anybody. But like, Jiang has to know, like, she has to at least think there's a really good chance that Jimin is picking Jiwon. Because that's what Jumi thinks is going to happen. That's true. Yeah. Okay, so maybe you're right. Maybe she thought it was Yisu. Yeah. But I also get the sentiment that maybe other people in the house think that Jumi is really into Gyalre, which yeah. would make sense. I mean, like, if she described her date with Gyalre, maybe, like, the girl's interpreter is like, oh, wow, she had a really good date. Like, she definitely likes him. I don't know if the guys know anything about Jumi and Gyalre. I don't know. It might just be more she's surprised it's Jumi than anything else that she would be surprised about like she, mm. she maybe just she just thought jumi would have picked gyalre and that's it i don't know yeah maybe i mean at the ladies summit or whatever they had a while ago she did express interest in mingyu and tried to pass kyore off on the other girls that's true but that was a little while ago but she did do it in a like uh gyalre is actually really awesome kind of way yeah in a way that they might have been like oh like maybe they just took it as genuine like oh she really did like yeah right i don't know oh and she was really supportive of ji young when ji young was like what happened to mingyu he's he stopped paying attention to me so maybe that is also why oh. it surprised her because it's like she was a slight betrayal maybe yeah yeah, like... yeah she thought she thought her and jumi had an understanding yeah <laughs> and that was maybe yeah. okay also apparently jumi told mingyu that he has bad teeth yeah i don't know why did we what get to that see that? Means? <laughs> like, it came up after, like, she says that he's, like, a good eater or whatever. And then he says that somebody, like, people have been telling him he has bad teeth. And I didn't know if that was a phrase that meant something or if they're literally saying he has bad teeth. Oh. Hmm. But then it did, like, by the end of it, sound like they were literally saying he had bad teeth. I feel like even if the, even if, like, the words like the direct translation was bad teeth like i don't know sometimes the translators i think like use the appropriate like english analogy or whatever to replace yeah. it so yeah i just took it at face value like oh they, she just said oh you have bad teeth <laughs> <laughs> but it's a weird thing that she would have said i don't know that's a, that's yeah. a good point <laughs> especially on a day where she's like here let me give you a comfort date because you've been so overwhelmed <laughs> with all the women who love you. Yeah. Your teeth are bad. I don't like what is that? <laughs> okay. And then Jiang says to Mingyu, uh, you're kind of like a mole who went into a cave. <laughs> yes. So now he's been a vampire 
Mm-hmm. Now he's a mole in a cave. Oh, which one do you rather Both be? like dark Sarah? spaces. I mean, vampires are theoretically cooler. Yeah, I think I'd rather Moles be a vampire. Moles are rodents, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she says this because, like, they make it seem like she's saying this because Mingyu is always, like, hanging out in his bed at the house. Like, yeah, not just in his bed, but, like, with his hoodie up and he's in, like, a blanket burrito. Like, he is. Try, he he he's like burrowed into a little hole, basically. Everybody must do this at some point. Maybe he's doing it more than others, but like they had multiple shots of him. Doing it. A lot of these shows are like you know filling the times between dates, mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. And then Minju tries to guess what they're doing next, and um, this leads them into singing a song about making cookies <laughs> <laughs> like that he just made up. This was. A silly side of him I did not anticipate. Yeah. Do you have to do you have to be pretty comfortable with someone to be singing in front of them, right? I would think so. But is this a good but comfortable or a bad comfortable? I don't know. I <laughs> I would think it would be a good comfortable, but who knows with these people? Hmm, okay. <laughs> so uh, they get in the car. Mm-hmm. Ji Young teases Mingyu more about being like a mole that she has to drag out of the cave. <laughs> And then Mingyu <laughs> says uh, something like, he would be fine with just driving around all day and staying in the car. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, you know, I mean, Jimin had a successful day that was just driving around in the car all day. Maybe they are meant for each other. <laughs> yeah, if your date said they would want to just drive around and not get out of the car, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Um, That's a good thing. Mm, good, or it's okay. at least not a bad thing, because, like, driving around gives you an opportunity to just talk and hang out and just like keep each other company in a way that you need a certain level of what i would assume to be good comfort and yeah it's a great time to talk and get to know each other okay you wouldn't be like yeah i really don't want to like stop another location with you and have to deal with whatever that's gonna be <laughs> well yeah it, it definitely depends on the vibe you get we'll in the car so let's like let's just like not get out until we're home yeah, okay, that's a different vibe than a, I could just drive in the car with you all day. <laughs> I, I didn't think it was a bad thing. I'm just saying it. if you go on a date with somebody and say this, I wouldn't ex- necessarily expect them to interpret it possibly. <laughs> all right, and what they're actually doing is uh, they're going to they're gonna make a cake. It's time to make a cake. But specifically a rice cake because, again, she can't have flour. Oh, that's why it was. I did notice it was rice, but I didn't. I forgot about that. That's cool. This date, this part of the date is so cute. Yeah, this is like nonstop cuteness. She's like putting his apron on him and fixing it and he's fixing hers. They're like touching hands when they sift through the flour and mix things together. They're like taking cute pictures. It's just nonstop cuteness the whole time. Yeah. Ji Young is like really helping Mingyu get his apron adjusted. <laughs> and then yes. Mingyu like adjusts her apron for like a second. Like he saw like mm-hmm. a str- like a strap. It was- he didn't even like all- like adjust it. He just like saw a piece of strap that was like sticking out in a way that he didn't like. So he like tucked it <laughs> away. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Is this feelings or is he just feeling too comfortable with her? Oof. I don't know. I hope it's feelings. It's it's been a nice. It- it's so cute. I think for sure he has to have feelings for her, and then we'll get into at dinner yeah. like all this the complicatedness of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you basically just pointed out everything that was cute and fun to watch about this date. He like grabs his hand to help him like make some icing flowers. At one point, uh, Mingyu like miscounts her like pouring, like she's measuring a certain amount of like scoops of whatever <laughs> yeah, into yeah. the ingredient, and he's like three, four, six, and then she just like looks at him and he's like, "I wanted to make sure you were, if you, how, I wanted to see how focused you actually were." <laughs> this is totally cute. Yeah. Mingyu's, uh, they're making like icing flowers. Mm hmm. And Mingyu's like, Have you ever seen Avatar? I'm, I'm not depicting a flower from this world. <laughs> <laughs> Such a great thing to say. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And they even, they actually take like video of each other, not just like yeah. pictures. Yeah. Super cute. Killed me. They called that, that little camcorder like vintage. And I'm like, I had one of those. Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very couple like yes. in this this second location. 
She even like leans over onto his shoulder a bit when they're like looking at a video they took. Oh my gosh, so cute. Yes, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you can't fool me, TV show. I'm not. <laughs> you don't believe it? I mean, uh, even if this didn't work out, like you have to show this, right? Like this is. I mean, Absolutely. this is like this is the content I want to see on the show. So yeah. So that means any time that Jibin is spending with Hushin is not nearly this cute. Because if it was cute like this, you'd have to show it. Oh right? yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just want to know this what's is this going is on with them. <laughs> All right, and then the next spot is another music wine bar. Let's go. Yes. And he says it's a place he always wanted to come to, but he could never get a table. So it must be fancy or very popular. Yeah. He said he tried in like 2020, though, which was like also COVID times, right? Like, I don't know. Who knows? What Maybe the it was like was. February 2020 or yeah. something. <laughs> yeah. Mingyu says uh, he noticed that Jian looked sleepy when she got back from her date with Jiwon. I was actually thinking the exact same thing. They, like they showed this flashback early in the show. I was like, damn, they look, she looks tired after that. Date. Yeah. But I guess he is thinking about her. Right? Yeah. Like he's noticing her when she comes right. in with somebody else. So that's something. Yeah. And he's, he says like, oh, you're always so busy. You know, you went out with G1. You had a date with Yore, you know, he's paying attention. Yeah. He says, I, I think you're the popular one. <laughs> <laughs> and he asked her, uh, why, why did you ask me out again? And I was like, it's it's obvious, right? And you like <laughs> she literally dated everyone. You've seen it. Uh huh. Yeah. And she's chosen you. <laughs> okay. Uh, but she does admit that her heart fluttered on their first date, and that's she always says like for somebody as old as I am. <laughs> and she's like <laughs> younger than both of us. Mm hmm. It's hard to get that feeling, you know. Yeah. Although I think he's actually said something similar like to this at one point. So yeah, yeah, kind of did. on the same page at the, on that, yeah. But I do like during this, she's like, she's, she's like, yeah, I had a great time on the first date, and I thought you did too. Like, this should be obvious why I'd ask you out again. Yeah, and then here we go, Gian. Let's do it. She says, <laughs> "Did you avoid me, even though you liked me, or because you didn't like me?" Let's go, let's go, Gian. It's like they had that very. Um, direct conversation the other day and she went away and she went, fuck, I should have asked this follow-up question yeah. and she's been holding on to it. Yeah. Here's what Mingyu says. These are all the things. Mm -hmm. Mingyu says, I was happy during our date too. It was a nice day for both of us, but I found the situation difficult. If we spent a nice day outside the show, we certainly would have gotten closer, but there are many other people here. I think I suppressed the fond feelings from our date. It's even more difficult to suppress nowadays. Hmm. So does that mean that it his feelings for her are growing stronger and that's why it's difficult to suppress? Yeah, I think that's the only way to interpret that. Yeah. Um, Gian then says, in what way is it difficult? I think he says, there was someone I was curious about at the time. Since I suppressed myself... We certainly would have dot, dot, dot. I don't think he completed that thought. Yeah. And then he says, I thought I could suppress it again afterward, too. So I get, I'm getting a little lost in what he's yeah meaning by this. But yeah, he's basically like acknowledging like the situation of the show has definitely affected him by saying like, mm -hmm. there are other people here. Like if we, if we met outside the show... This would be totally different, but there are other people here. Yeah. And through random chance, really, of just doing things with Jimin in the beginning and like having feelings for her. Yeah. Yeah. He got to the point of wanting to choose her faster. Mm -hmm. And then on top of this, we're going to get into this like, I guess he says this later, but Ji Young reminds Mingyu of the girls he has dated in the past. Yeah, she's his usual type. Yeah, and because those relationships didn't end well, he can't like help but like compare that her to them or think that it's gonna end similarly. I'm gonna go down yeah. the same path that I've done before, um, and that's why he's suppressing his fondness for Ji Young. Mm -hmm. He'd like, but it is there, which is I yeah. think I think for sure he's saying that at this point. Like, yeah, there is attraction, but. And I think he says something like he really wanted to spend like these four weeks going for someone who's not his usual type. 
or at least not to lock in on someone who's his usual type so early on. And that's also like part of the reason he's like extra weird about it. Yeah. And Jen's really good in this conversation. Like when he says that part that you just said, she's like, oh, that's so funny. Like you wanted to avoid someone like me. And then here I was <laughs> day one, <laughs> like day one on the show. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how like specific of a type he's talking about that. Like, you know, you pick four women to be on a reality de- dating TV show. I feel like one of them's probably going to be a, his type, right? Well, there's Doesn't only four buckets. So yeah, there's only course. four buckets and they use all the buckets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But yeah, this really plays in to the thing that Kevin brought up about, I'm sure it's got to be a personality thing, but like also maybe the fact that they had the same career at one point. Oh yeah. Yeah. As, as his ex. Yeah. So it, it's weird. Um, yeah, Mingyu says about his previous girls that he dated, which he didn't want to open up to with Jimin, but I guess it's gotten to the point where he has to tell Jiyoung just to explain himself. Yeah. He says, there are a lot of nice things, but it always ended badly. It was always similar. And it just, whatever he's feeling, just must be that similar vibes. Mm. So he says, I'm not sure yet. Well, that's a, at least a change from he's already decided, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We're making progress here, maybe. <laughs> Putting a dent in yeah. it. <laughs> I don't believe it, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think he's still going to be obsessed with Jimin for a while, but sure. I will say, after this explanation, I am rooting for Ji Young to win over Mingyu by the end of the show. Mm, yeah, yeah. That, that's where I'm at. Like, before I was just like, oh, whoever Mingyu chooses, like, I kind of just want it to work out. And it, it seems like he's picking Jimin, so I'm like... I'm trying to like work my way to like, okay, how does Jimin actually end up <laughs> picking him? Yeah, but yeah. now I feel like I'm actually like way more invested into like Ji Young's side of the mm-hmm. story here. And I want her because it, it's th- this whole, this conversation is amazing. Like, this is so good to me. The yeah. intricacies of this. Um, like, it's a super tough situation for Ji Young because it's totally out of her control, right? Like, yeah. No matter how cute and charming she is, like, it might not even matter, even though yeah, yeah. Mingyu likes her. Like, it's like, mm-hmm. it's kind of messed up. And it's like really not fair for Mingyu to like make Ji Young into this person. Who's like, exactly... punish her for the mistakes of other people, basically. Yeah, punish you know? is, a tough, is a strong word. Well, what, it's like, what, I mean, how, like, she's being held responsible for like the way other people have acted in a way, you know? And it just has nothing to do with her. Yeah, even just to like think, like, oh, this person's exactly like this other person because i had these vibes similar Mm -hmm. vibes or whatever yeah but at the same time it's also good that mingyu is telling her so that she at least understands like what's going on finally yeah and i I think jianu is so cool and understanding through this like she has like she has a face like oh this is serious um but she doesn't they at least never show her complaining being like that's not really fair to me or whatever like she's just like yeah. yeah i mean this is how he's feeling like I don't know, it's not worth, like, fighting it, really. Yeah, she's not, like, invalidating his feelings yeah, or anything. Yeah, exactly, yeah. She's really, I think she's really good. And I would say, like, it's a tough situation for Mingyu, too. It's, like, it's not an experience that I've ever had, but, like, I can I can see how it would feel weird to, like, enter another relationship that's, like, starting out with the same feeling as, like, a mm-hmm. pre- previous, like, unsuccessful one. Yeah. And, like, I don't know, everybody compares, like, dates to their exes and their... Yeah, of course. They're all figuring themselves out, so it it's tough. Like, yeah. I get it, but I, I'm super sympathetic to Ji Young now, and I I think I really am rooting for her a lot after this episode. Yeah, I, I think I've found myself rooting for her for a little while. I wasn't. I don't know that I'm necessarily locked in on like Mingyu's the answer to rooting for her, but you know, she really likes him. Sure. Well, I think that's Mingyu's the only one. If she's that into Jian yeah. would choose like if Jiang chose somebody else in the end I wouldn't feel like she was really shooting for the best outcome for her we've got so many more episodes though who knows I what's guess happening. so I don't know I, f- <laughs> I guess so there has to be some twist along the way <laughs> but that's why I feel like the twist is like the twist is oh Mingyu is gonna end up picking Jimin even though like these dates with Jiang just seem so amazing yeah <laughs> you know it mm-hmm. seems like everything's there except this one weirdness in Mingyu's history. Yeah. Hope he gets over it. <laughs> do you do you think Ji Young 
will like Mingyu more or less now? Um, I mean, he's opening up and being a little vulnerable with her, and in now she can understand his actions a little bit better, so she's not going to be frustrated from that perspective. I think mm-hmm. she comes yeah. out of this, she's still going to like him. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I actually think he she might like him more because yeah. it shows a level of like thoughtfulness and seriousness that Mingyu is taking to this mm-hmm. whole TV show, basically, and. If he does end up picking her in the end, then this will like really make her feel like even better about his decision, right? Will it? That's what I, that's what I think. It's like, you know, if he's thought this much about it and is picking me in the end, like, oh, like he must really like me if he was willing to like, you know, okay. jump yeah. over the hurdles, his mental hurdles of whatever was blocking him and they still picked me in the end. Yeah, I, I could see that. The other way you could be is like, wow, this guy's weird and then just like somehow lose <laughs> all the attractiveness to him, but I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, I don't think so. And uh, my advice for ji at this point uh-huh. would, just be, would just be go for it. You know, if there's anything that, like about yourself you're still hiding, like show him so that he, <laughs> so that he can see you're different than those other girls. Like she mm-hmm. can't be the same person. <laughs> <laughs> She's so much more than just being cute or cheerful or whatever Mingyu sees her yeah, as. Yeah. Like, Exactly. And also, also, let's see that uh, movie date in the playgroup, playroom. I'm still waiting for that. Yeah, when are they going to sneak out after everybody's asleep? Come yeah. on, let's go. That would be great. <laughs> now that's a movie date that's watchable, you know? Oh, that's true. Instead yeah. of just going to the movies, yeah. I don't want to watch the whole thing, but show me the, oh, no. show me the cute moments and I'm in. <laughs> show them sneaking out. Show them getting a little nervous when they think somebody else is awake. Sneaking around is great, yeah. <laughs> Show them maybe sitting a little closer as the movie progresses, you know. <laughs> There's a story you could tell with that. Give us the foot camera. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, that was amazing. So good. One good date out of four. <laughs> yeah. Are right, you ready for the next date, Sarah? Yeah, it's Hushin and his snail. <laughs> Hushin and Hussock back at the house. <laughs> Let's go. Yep, yep. He's feeding his snail. He's eating alone. Sad face. Didn't even know other people were on dates. Like, production did not bother to tell him. That is, uh, that's messed up. Yeah. Like, you couldn't even let this guy mentally prepare for the fact that, <laughs> like... Everyone was going to be coming There was date. an opportunity to go on dates, and he was not selected. Like, he could have had two days to at least mentally prepare for this. But now, uh-huh. <laughs> Jumi comes home by herself around 8 o'clock. And she, like, spills the beans about the dates. <laughs> yes. And he's just like, was it random or did you did you pick? Yeah. And was it an official date? And she's like, oh, yeah, you yeah, know, I, I, I got to pick and it was an official date. And he goes, oh, so nobody picked me. <laughs> it's just so sad. Even more devastated when he finds out the women got mm-hmm. to pick whoever they wanted. Oh, my God. Yep. Uh, and then he wonders about who Jimin picked. Which is interesting. They show him wondering about Jimin before Ji Young. Yeah. At least show it in that order, yeah. <laughs> he's also like, did Ming Yu go on four dates then? Yeah, he's convinced. Because <laughs> he just assumes. <laughs> yeah. He oh, said, which is great. Who should thinks all the girls pick Ming Yu? And then he's like, <laughs> why do I hate Ming Yu so much? <laughs> he's still funny, even though this is like, definitely like super sad for him. <laughs> but he's Absolutely. still funny. Who should and Jumi actually make a side bet? For morning coffee. For who Jimin would pick, yeah. Yeah, who should thinks Jimin picked Minkyu? And Jumi's like, nah, she picked G1. <laughs> yeah, he has no clue. <laughs> what? How's that even possible? <laughs> Which, to be fair to who should, like, why would he think that was a thing? Exactly. Yeah, yeah there's no <laughs> reason for him totally to think that. Totally fair, yeah. And then uh, Yisu and Gyalre get home around 10 p.m. Mm-hmm. They say hi, and they go upstairs to change. And then... uh Jumi really opens up to Hushin about how she feels about Gyal Ray. Yeah. In a way that I'm like, I mean, is there no chance Gyal Ray can, can hear you right now, Jumi? <laughs> like, is she maybe like, I hope Gyal Ray hears me saying this. I don't, I don't know, maybe. I don't know. It's a little weird. I was more like, oh, poor Hushin. Hushin, she is yeah. so comfy with him right now. Like, obviously. Yeah, I guess she does really feel comfortable with him. <laughs> and then she's like, I went on two dates with men I'm interested in. But I really like my date with Gyalre Opa much more. But she thinks like Gyalre has never shown any firm interest in her, if you know yeah. what I'm saying. 
<laughs> which is accurate. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I feel like Hushin's reaction to this is like, why are you telling me this? I just, <laughs> I literally just had no dates. Like, yeah, back yeah. up to me. <laughs> they don't show him saying anything in response. Yeah. She gives him a little pep talk, though, when she realizes what she's done. She's just like, hey, you know, don't let this lose, make you lose your confidence, you know? Like, it's going to be okay. Yeah. Also might be talking to herself a little bit. That's true. It kind of like, I feel like he re- reciprocates <laughs> the message to her also. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Yisu and Gyarai come back down. And then uh, Jimin and Jiwon arrive at 1030. And who should can't believe it's G1. <laughs> he, he loses the bet. <laughs> and then I feel like at this point, he like announces to everyone like, yep, everyone went on dates except me. <laughs> yeah. He, he he does well in this spot. Like, can you imagine like Yao Ray in this spot? Like what he would be. Oh, he just wouldn't like? say anything. He would just be like so You're quiet. Just, yeah. Such a quiet grandpa. I was thinking maybe maybe Jumi and Hushin will go on like a coffee date because of this, because of this bet. What do you think? That'd be mm. cool. Oh, yeah. That'd be yeah. something. Yeah. Give these two folks who don't have any hope a little hope. <laughs> and then after seeing Hushin, Gyalre turns to Yisu and thanks her for saving him from almost not, <laughs> almost not going on any dates. Because yes. I think Gyalre doesn't know until this moment either that, like, oh, Ji Young didn't pick him. Yeah. Maybe. Unless unless he maybe maybe he found out Yisu picked him and then he was like, Oh, the girl's got to pick. I don't he could have found it out. But he he might have just thought, Oh, I went on a date with Yisu randomly. I just got unlucky. But now he's kind of figuring out like for sure, oh, Ji Young didn't pick me. Or yeah, he might have also thought like they had some sort of like rock, paper, scissors and they like they made sure that each person had a oh, date. Oh, that too. But yeah. they picked in a certain order, you know, like yeah, he could draft. have thought all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah, but now he knows, like, oh, I could not have gone on dates, <laughs> and yeah. Ji Young did not pick me, <laughs> so he's got to be feeling some way now as well. But uh, Jimin and Jumi both agree that they thought that Ji Young would have gone out with Hushin, which I don't know where they got that from. Yeah, and the way Jimin says this is a little strange, where she thought Ji Young would choose Hushin, and I don't, I don't know if she's bringing up this because like. She's saying this because, like, maybe she's a little jealous mm. that Jiang went with Mingyu, or does she just feel bad for Hushin, and so she's saying that for him? Or did she just like when she was picking her dates, she was like, "All right, I'll go with Jiwan. Jiang's probably gonna pick Hushin, and then maybe she knew Yisu was picking Gyalre and Jimin was gonna pick Mingyu, and she was like, "All right, that's perfect. Everybody will get a date." Maybe she had a coin flip between going with Hushin. And oh no way! G1. No, no, no. You don't 100% think so? She was always gonna pick G one. There is no way she wasn't gonna pick. You don't him. think there's a chance that she wishes she had picked Hushin? Maybe after the fact that she wishes she had picked Hushin, but yeah, when she in was this picking, moment. then a hundred percent it was G one. Hmm, but okay. now maybe there's some regret because you know obviously it didn't magically work out the way she hoped it would. Okay, all right, that's fair. So awkward for Hushin. Yeah, all, all of this. All right, uh, Ji Young and Min Gyu get back at 11 p.m. Yes, and it's pretty obvious that Ji Young's a little toasty, a little drunk here. That's and what everybody's you think? like she, commenting she, on yeah. it. I feel like everybody's commenting on it too. She's either just in a really good mood, or but this is the same move. I was actually thinking like so when like Jimin and Min Gyu got back from their like secret date mm-hmm. on Tuesday. They yeah. also like did the same thing. Like, are you guys are are you guys drunk? Or like, is it an actual read but of whether or not they're they drunk? also were right? Like, they came back from drinking. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not. I, I I can't really speak to whether or not they were drunk or not. But I I was speculating if whether or not is this a move that you do when like someone gets back from a date and you're like a little bit jealous. You're like, are you drunk? Is this like is that a thing you would say? I don't know. Because these two are like the most popular two guy and girl in the house (laughs) and they're coming back from this date and pretty much everybody is jealous on some level of this date (laughs) you know so everybody is like oh you guys you are so drunk right now like they don't know what else to talk about like i don't i don't know i'm I'm just speculating (laughs) no i i think she was a little at least you know and especially being the person who like doesn't drink so much maybe that's why it was so notable Hmm, okay okay (laughs) And they they show Jimin seeming upset. 
Yeah. After G Young and Mingyu get back. Is she upset that Jiwon is paying attention to Ji Young now that she's back? Or is she jealous after seeing Mingyu and Ji Young together? It can be all the things. Or is it, it just a camera be... manipulation? Okay. I don't know. It could be that too. It could be that she is seeing the person that who is the object of affection from the person she likes with her second, third, whatever choice, basically getting all the attention. And then like, even like Hushin's her second choice, right? He's also painted. Like, I think she knows that everybody likes her, right? And so it's the guy she likes is paying attention to her. The guy she goes on dates with just came home from a date with her. Like, there's a lot of reasons to be a little like miffed about Ji Young right now. Yeah. It's hard to say, yeah, which which is like the stronger mm-hmm. reason for being upset. But yeah, it totally makes sense that she would be upset in this situation. Yeah. Um, okay. It's time for some text. <laughs> yes. Texting that doesn't go through to people doesn't mean anything. I, I still yeah. don't know what these choices really mean. And uh, I didn't watch the segment again. <laughs> I watched the segment, but I took no notes on it. I did not make any predictions. I just wrote down who actually picked what. All right. And... <laughs> It's the exact same as last episode, correct? Except Mingyu switches to Jumi. Oh, is it the last last time? I copied and pasted. I, it. I, I think notice. it's the only thing I changed. So go go through who, what they are. Okay, it's Yisu picked Mingyu, Jimin picked Hushin, Jiyoung picked Mingyu, Jumi picked Gyore. Is that the same as last time? I believe that's the exact same okay. for the women. Yeah, yeah, that sounds right. Then Jiwon picked Jiyoung. Gyare picked Ji Young, Hushin picked Jimin, and Mingyu picked Jumi. Yeah, you're yeah. right. The only change is, yeah, last episode Mingyu picked Yisu. Mm-hmm. Now he switched to Jumi. What do any of Mingyu's choices mean? I'm confused. Is yeah. he just super grateful to Jumi for that relaxing day and understanding that he's going through the shit right now? I don't know. Okay. Also, I did pick up at the end of the segment after I fast forward through it. That the host managed to guess all these correctly, and no chance in hell the host, <laughs> no chance, no chance. I I didn't watch how they got to this, but literally no chance they guessed Mingyu was texting Jumi. There no, was a lot of talk no about way. him crying and getting all like emotional, and that's sort of why whatever, they went with it. Whatever, get out of here. I don't. <laughs> it's not. It's not real life. <laughs> these these picks aren't real. They couldn't okay. handle having three weeks in a row or whatever it would be where they didn't get a, <laughs> a thing. So the, they okay, just made it okay. seem no way. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I wish the end segment of the show felt more meaningful, but at this point, maybe, maybe we'll look back at these after more things develop in the second half of the show. And maybe we can make sense of them, but maybe I, I'm inclined to believe that the show is not showing me it. It's because it's not important to the end game of the show. So mm, yeah, it doesn't really matter why Hushin and Jimin are texting each other right now because whatever it is isn't going to be a big deal. Yeah, compared to whatever it is at the end. But they have to keep this segment in because it's like a core feature yeah. of this it's like show. They did this in season one, and they're like married to this concept. Yeah, that's how they fill the time slot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's whatever. Um. Okay, anything else you want to say before we get to the previews for episode nine? Oh, no, I'm excited for these previews. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to lead the way? I have a good uh, Yeah, actually. okay. Okay. So first we get, Yore takes Ji Young to work so they can talk about his feelings in the car. Yeah. He steals, uh, it's kind of stealing uh, Mingyu's move here. with like... <laughs> It's everybody's move at this point. <laughs> I guess so. Then it seems like all the guys go out drinking to talk about their feelings. And mm-hmm. when the guys come back, Gyore seems to be super drunk. Don't know what's up with that. Did not expect Grandpa to come home drunk. Also, is like they made it seem like Jumi's going to get jealous of Gyore driving Jiang to work. Yes, yes. Seem- there was okay. a bit of that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then my favorite part of the preview is that Hushin takes Jiang to see his paintings. And we see them standing in front of the wolf wolf fucking painting that I've been talking about (laughs) since we've seen his painting. And I cannot wait to hear either of them talk about it. I want, I just, I can't wait for it. I'm excited. Yeah. 
But um, then apparently he's like very directly telling her how he feels or whatever, which is also important, I guess. I'm just excited about them talking <laughs> about his painting. Well, the, the part I wrote down is like, she's going to say, I think she's talking about the date here. And she's mm-hmm. like, it's, it's fun. And then Hushin's like, more than when you were with Mingyu? Question mark. <laughs> and Ji Young says, when I'm with you, I'm more myself, Opa, which is a bad thing? Probably, <laughs> given the logic these folks give us half the time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what people mean when they say that. Like, it, I don't think G <laughs> Young has been that much different with Hushin versus Mingyu, other than, like, in the moment for her, like, she's having butterflies or whatever. Yeah. So she might feel like she's acting different but i don't know if she really is it's just like her own feeling on the inside is different <laughs> which yeah, i guess maybe... makes sense for why that her saying this would be like i'm not that like i'm comfortable which is a bad thing i, yeah. I guess i'm starting to get it but it's it's just like the the choice of the words of the translation aren't yeah what makes total sense to me yeah i don't know oh who shouldn't is going to uh when the guys get together is going to ask all about all the dates and whether <laughs> whether or not anything has changed probably mm. most likely asking mingyu about Jiang. oh right? yeah yeah probably but he'll ask everybody so that way it doesn't look so pointed <laughs> maybe you know the whole segment should just be like hushin catching up on what has been happening on the <laughs> show because production did not let him know yeah that that was such a dick move to not even tell him that people <laughs> were going on dates oh my god Oh, man. All right. Well, this show continues to deliver. (laughs) Absolutely. Even with like three dates that didn't seem that significant. Yeah. Still a lot of great stuff by the end of the episode. All righty. What are we talking about next time, Sarah? Um, Excellent question. Next time we're going back to Transit Love episode. I I don't remember. Transit Love 2. Yeah. Episode Episode 13. 13. There we go. It's been a few weeks since we... (laughs) <laughs> Went back to Trans Love 2. And then two weeks from now, we will talk about Heart Signal 4, episodes 9 and 10. Yes. Ooh, should it be good? Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Where can people contact us, Sarah? People can email us at keepwatchingpod at gmail.com, tweet at us at keepwatchingpod, Instagram at us at keepwatchingpod, or leave a comment under the video on YouTube also at keepwatchingpod. And if you have uh, some hard-hitting truth or drink questions you'd like to ask us, you can leave us a rating or review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. No, no, no. We need... <laughs> we yeah, need... that's true. We, we do need... absolutely give us your who lives in what bucket of cute, yeah. sexy, no. something, or just pretty. What was it again? <laughs> Pure, cute, sexy, or just pretty. You can do it for the guys or the girls or both but you can only pick one for each one from each gender in each slot. That's, that's yeah. what you got. Please do that for us. <laughs> if you, if you cheat so and happy. break the rules, you will not be included in this scientific. Poll. <laughs> we maybe may or may not publicly shame you for breaking the rules. I don't know. We'll see. How no, we no, feel no. Next time. <laughs> <laughs> I just won't be able to add you to the tally. Why right, we're going to see mm. who, okay. <laughs> who, uh, who, <laughs> who people think yeah i don't know i'm curious what people think on that actually it's yeah. super hard like <laughs> i first started doing it and i was like all right this person is this 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 and this and then this person is this and this and then i was like <laughs> this is dumb like wh- saying all the girls are cute doesn't mean anything so i was like i have to choose one mm-hmm. for yep. each <laughs> all right well <laughs> that was fun <laughs> that was fun what a fun episode fun two episodes yes yes all righty Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye. Bye.